Please bow our head and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear God, we offer everything to you during this seminar. May we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activities set for this undertaking be successful and effective. May we also retain the invaluable knowledge and learning experiences that we derive from this activity. We pray that you bless all the committee in charge that they fulfill tasks responsibly, that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your generous as blessing would meet success of this seminar. We know that without it we can do nothing. Maybe believing with the says of your genuine love through the implementation of the knowledge acquired through this activity. Grant us your divine wisdom as we about our daily tasks after this seminar. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, uh, good morning po sa inyong lahat. So, before po tayo mag-start is isa-shoutout ko lang po muna kung sino yung mga uh, nag-attendance na po dito sa ating uh, uh, two-day seminar in basic transfer pricing and documentation day one. So, ang mga nag, uh, nag-attendance na po is si Ma'am Abelia Leilani De Vera from Dasmariñas, Cavite. And shout out din po kay Ma'am Ado Jonella Jean Vo Vocal from uh, San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. And kay uh, Nicole Ray Vocal Ado from San Rafael. Uh, shout out din po kay Freda Tanas Amayag from Benguet. So, good morning po sa inyo, uh, Ma'am Charlene Jem Mamaklay Baktad from Tarlac City. Uh, good morning po sa inyo, uh, Ma'am Jonaliza Bayan Bagingaw. And good morning po sa inyo and shout out, Ma'am Kijame Hael Balena from uh, Santa Rosa, Laguna. And sino pa? Shoutout po sa inyo, Ma'am Feches Rafada Cabarubias from Butuan City. And good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am Angelica Grace Arroyo from Cadiz from Marikina City. Shoutout din po kay Ma'am Marilyn Seredon from Laguna. And kay... Good morning po, Ma'am Marilyn Sidro from Rosario, Cavite. Uh, shoutout din po sa inyo, Ma'am Jenny Renton Crais from Quezon City. And Ma'am Maria Mijisitenta de los Reyes from Caloocan. Uh, shoutout din po kay Ma'am Catherine Canja Despi from Butuan City. And good morning din po sa inyo, Sir Junjun Batad Doinog. Apo, good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am Raiza Torrenueva Domingo from San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. <clears throat> And kay Sir Alessandro Ray Formoso from Antipolo City. So, good morning sa inyo, Ma Sir Marco Macaraig Gutierrez from Marilao, Bulacan. Uh, good morning po, Sir Elfren Kerry Litiatko. And shoutout po kay Sir John Frederick Vocal Liantos from Sapong Palay, Bulacan. And good morning din po sa inyo, Ma'am Bernadette Keroila Lonon from Cagayan de Oro. 
And good morning po, Ma'am Maria Lizel Samson Lustre from San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. So yung mga binabanggin ko po is yung mga nag-attendance uh, na po dito sa ating uh, chat box. So good morning po, uh, Nicole June Vizcaino Pagdanganan from Marikina City. And good morning din po sa inyo, Ma'am Christine Reyo Casa Pagyo from Ginubatan Albay. So, good morning din po sa inyo, Ma'am Maria Visitacion Gosi Piñera from Isabela. Ilagan, Isabela. And good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am Julian Principe from Quezon City. And good morning din po, Maria Florenza Rada from Ginubatan Albay. And good morning din po kay Nemesis Tebiga Rubio from North Sagaray, Bulacan. Uh, Shoutout po sa inyo and good morning po Sir Jeffrey Gregorio Salceda from Albay. And good morning po Sir Michael Angelo Santos from San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. And Good morning din po, Maverick de La Paz, Santa Ana, from Cainta, Rizal. And good morning po din sa inyo, Sir uh, Chuchi Valjera Subarjaga, from Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, good morning din po, uh, Marita Martin C., from Quezon City. And good morning po, uh, shout out kay Sir Ma'am Jennifer Pahari Tejano, from... Uh, Quezon City So, yun pa lang po yung mga nag attend So, check po natin baka may mga humabol So, si kay Sir Minelio R. Malabid uh, Shout out po and good morning po So since uh, preparing pa po si yung si Ma'am Elsa kanyate po yung ating speaker is i siguro shout out ko na rin po yung mga uh, yung mga nag-register na wala pa dito sa ating hindi pa nag-attendance. So Sir Joan po from kay Jennifer Lumbre Asibuche from uh, Anto bill lang nakalagay sambay tower bill sante bulakan from paranyake uh, ito po yung mga binabasa ko naman yung mga nag-register pero hindi pa nag-attendance si Isaac Joshua P. Alfon from Camarines Uh, Jonelda Muiko Apelo from Quezon City uh, Queenie Flor Aratea from Sambales uh, Charity Factor Arizala from Paranaque City uh, Monica May Bedanya Balaong from Sambales Janeline Miliete Bedja from uh, Pembo uh, Lee Lee B. Benas from Caloocan, uh, Sheila Ariola Benedicto from Batangas, uh, Irene Bongka from General Trias Cavite, Jules Christian Bartolay from uh, Calbayog Street, Calbayog Street. Uh, yung iba pa pong nag-register na hindi pa po nag Uh, attendance is sila Jonathan Arvin Norman Dolina Sulayaw from Palo Leyte uh, Alejandro Basco Soriano from Valenzuela uh, Maverick de la Paz Santa Ana from Cainta Rizal and ah nandito na pala si Maverick de la Paz na may attendance na pala si Ephraim Dagdag Tenorio from Tanza Cavite.
So, eto po, shoutout ko po na yung mga humabol sa attendance kay si Ma'am Alexandra Sansan from Baguio City. Pati po kay Sir Rolando uh, Rolando Pati from Caloocan City. And pati po kay Ma'am Trisha uh, Dizon Camara from Malolos, Bulacan. So, shoutout po sa inyo, Ma'am. And good morning po. Pati po kay Ma'am Giselle Guantero. Good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am. And shoutout po. Pati po kay uh, Ibay Hulaysa. Uh, good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am. And shoutout po. Ibay Hulaysa. Good morning po sa inyo, Ma'am Fe Herrera. Shoutout po sa inyo, Ma'am Fe. Pati po kay Sir Michael Hizon from Makati. So, good morning po sa inyo, Sir. And shoutout po sa inyo. So, ang mga nag-attendance pa rin po ay si Sir... Arcel Alberto Castro from Tanzacabite. Uh, shout out din po sa inyo. Uh, good morning po, Ma'am Diana Ramirez. Uh, check ko lang yung attendance nyo po dito. So, mamaya pong tanghali, may attendance pa rin po ulit. Tapos, uh, kailangan po complete attendance para po uh, ma-issuean po kayo ng certificate. Today, attendance today, AM and PM, tsaka po tomorrow, uh, AM at, P at PM din po. So, yun po yung requirements natin para po makareceive ng e-certificate. So, isi-send po yun sa inyo via email. So, yun pa lang po yung mga nag-attendance, yung mga uh, nabanggit ko po. So, kung may hahabol pa po is mag-chat lang po dito sa ating uh, chat box. So, ilang po. At good morning po. transfer privacy and documentation. So, wherever you are, saan galing yung mga participants natin? Anong mga lugar? May Leyte, may Baguio. Leyte, Baguio, Cavite, Metro Manila. Meron din, Quezon City. Quezon City. Binget. Binget, saan pa? Tarla. Tarla, Sambales. Sa Mindanao. Mindanao. Wala pa ako nabaka sa Mindanao. Bulacan, meron. Bulacan. Karamihan, Bulacan na lang. Okay. Sige. Uh, good morning po and uh, uh, stay tuned, no? Dahil ito yung ating uh, basic transfer price in Philippines na uh, live via YouTube, no? This is a two-day free seminar in basic transfer pricing and documentation, no? So, ang daming nagko-comment sa akin. Bakit binibigay mo yan na free? No, don't give it free, sabi ng mga iba sa akin. That's a very expensive seminar. Part na to po na ating advocacy in order na maraming tao makakakilala ng transfer pricing. Why? Kasi sa tagal-tagal na po ng transfer pricing, 1920s pa siya sa US, no? United States of America, kumita na sila dito. Using this as a tool, auditol in taxation, tayo natutulog pa. At hanggang ngayon, nung I launched my book in 2013, ang dami pa rin ayaw bumili, ayaw tumanggap kasi hindi rin nila kailangan. Kasi uh, wala raw application dito yung transfer pricing sa Pilipinas. No? So until na pinatawag ng Congress yung ABCBN and also the BR on the transfer pricing issues, 
saka pa lang tayo medyo na gising no sa katotohanan and we are very very uh, behind no so ano yon yung transfer pricing natin dito sa Pilipinas sa halos sino lang ang nagpa-practice yung mga top uh, firms lang din no kasi bakit somewhere may gap kasi sabi nung maliliit na accounting firm ay, hindi namin yan kailangan kasi wala kaming ganyan na kliyente. And then here comes now, may mga konsulta sa kanila, hindi nila alam. So you miss the opportunities. No? Dapat open-minded tayo and we have to um, adapt what is new. No? Buti ngayon, uh, new normal na. So wala na tayong dadahilan. Kasi lahat ng uh, information, meron na tayo sa YouTube. No? Sa internet. Okay. So, our topics for today, for the day one, we have our related party transactions under uh, Philippine Accounting Standards 24 and the arms and principles. No? And then we have the comparability factors. What are these comparability factors? And also the comparability analysis and adjustment. How do we, um, after applying the comparability factors, how do we analyze and then adjust if we have some uh, transfer pricing issues discovered along the way. And then we have the uh, transfer pricing methods. No? Itong transfer pricing methods natin, meron na tayong mga updates dito, especially on the profit split, na meron siyang latest na updates ang OECD on June 2018. No? Dito sa uh, transfer pricing method, which is the profit split. And then we also have on the second day, we have the transfer pricing documentation for SU1 so to RR34-2020 and also the BAR form 1709. Although marami na tayong mga recorded videos on 1709, still we have to discuss and then relate it to our documentation. No? Uh, why, why, why did I uh, design this uh, free transfer pricing seminars? Kasi po, ang daming nangungunsulta, ang daming magtatanong, and they wanted outright answers to their questions. Hindi po ganun kandali. Pero, mama, ano pong gagawin namin? Mama, no? Eh, ang sagot ko dyan, that is a transfer pricing policy approved by your management. And then, outright, isang tanong, isang sagot lang, I will cure. Hindi po ganun. Hindi po ganun kandali. Kaya, yung mga nagtatanong ng yes or no na answer, you know, you must study transfer pricing first, no? Kasi, kasi walang yes or no po dito sa transfer pricing. Analysis po ito bago po natin, bago tayo makapagbigay ng akma na sagot. And, and I don't want to be quoted na, ay sabi ni Ma'am Elsa, ganito, ganito, eh mali naman. No? So, ingat lang po tayo. And hindi tayo basta-basta nagbibigay ng opinion. <laughs> Expert opinion po on transfer pricing, I tell you. And when you make your transfer pricing analysis, expect that it will reach the court. Pag nagkaroon ng transfer pricing issues, yung binigyan ninyo ng transfer pricing analysis. <laughs> no? And also, we have, uh, in the afternoon, we have, uh, sa day to, sa second day po, we have segmented financial statements and supply chain analysis. Uh? We will relate that. That though the importance of transfer pricing, especially in uh, transfer pricing audit. Excuse me, Hari. Patayin na to. Yun yung... Uh, on, no? And then in the afternoon, this is new, the common issues in transfer pricing. Actually, ginawan ko na ito ng uh, summary no? noon pa. Itong mga common issues in transfer pricing. And, uh, and nag-update ako dito. And also, uh, siguro, itas natin dito yung mga 2020 na transfer pricing case, cases and what are the issues. And for your information, the most common issues now in transfer pricing are about intangibles. So, kung meron kayong, uh, if you want to study more about transfer pricing, then you cannot do away with intangibles. no? Because intangibles are very, very important topics in transfer pricing. May, may mga comments sila na, na i-response natin sa, sa YouTube. Yung audio natin, yung ating uh, ano? reception. Okay. So, feedback po kayo, uh, mga participants po natin this morning. No? Uh, feedback po kayo kung may mga 
uh, hindi maganda or hindi maayos po yung ating presentation. Halimbawa sa slides, halimbawa sa uh, audio natin, sa video, no? Uh, feedback po kayo para ma-answer po natin agad. No? Uh, dito kayong dalawa. Ito po yung mga nag-a-assist sa akin ngayon. You say hi to them. No? Okay. Nakikita? Oh, sige. You say hi. Hi, good morning po. I miss Kathy. Mm, si si Ma'am Kathy po, siya po yung nag-a-assist uh, sa atin ngayon. And also si uh, Sir Harry. Good no? morning po sa inyo, ma'am. Viewers. <laughs> okay, so sila po yung mag-assist sa atin uh, during the day. Sila din yung nagpapadala sa inyo ng mga uh, soft copy natin on our presentation and hopefully nakarating na po sa inyo. no? And hopefully nabasa ninyo in advance kasi para along the way, yung hindi ako nag-iisa na uh, first time ninyo marinig or nakakapag-interact po kayo during the uh, Hindi naman interaction pala, no, kasi malalayo tayo. But at least nakaka-relate kayo during the discussion. And uh, yung gagawin pa rin natin today, just like yung mga ginawa natin sa mga previous na seminars din natin, uh, during the seminar, wala po tayong entertain na questions. But after the seminar, no, kung matapos tayo ng 4 o'clock or 4.30 mamaya, i-alat natin yung remaining time natin sa question and answers, no? So, may time tayo to answer your, your queries, no? So, hindi tayo mag-answer during the lecture proper because yung mga question mo, it might be na matakil siya during the lecture, no? So, ang gagawin natin, um, every afternoon yan, today and tomorrow, mag-aalat po tayo ng time to answer all your questions. So, ano po yung gagawin ninyo? Yung mga questions ninyo, isulat ninyo dyan sa comment portion po ng ating YouTube channel, para na monitor po yan ni Harry at saka ni Miss Cathy and uh, we will answer it in the afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So our first topic for today is understanding related party transactions. Why related party transactions? Because transfer pricing deals with related party transactions and without the related party transactions, there is no transfer pricing, no? So, yung kaya lang may transfer pricing because of the related parties, no? So, we will study also on this uh, topic, the meaning of control. Why? Because control is very important, especially in the context of transfer pricing. Why? Kasi, kaya nga, um, uh, may tinatawag sila na uh, arms length principle, no? The adoption of the arm, arms length principle as applied to the related party transactions because of the element of control between related parties. No? We will study kung ano yung control uh, later on. And then uh, also, the economic substance of related party transaction. Ano ba yung uh, economic substance na sinasabi natin? Because transfer pricing is economic taxation. So it deals most on the economic substance of the transactions and not the form. Because even if you designate a certain name, a certain transactions, pero iba naman pala yung substance, then the substance prevail. Not the form or not the name. Competitive firm as a price taker. This is all about economics. No? So non-arms length dealings of related parties and the Philippine accounting standards for related parties. And also, we will know the SEC rules for related parties. Kasi kahit na wala pang... RR yung BIR on related parties, yung Securities and Exchange Commission, matagal na sila na may requirements on the rules for related parties, especially on the disclosure in the notes to financial statements on related parties. Okay, so understanding related party transactions. Ilan na yung ating viewers, Harry? Ngayon? Okay. So... So, excuse me, ah, lahat ba sila napadalhan ng notification? Okay. Sige. So, our objective is to describe the economic substance of related party transactions. Also, to define accounting standards for related parties that is provided in uh, International Accounting Standards 24 and also adopted by the Philippine Accounting Standards 24. 
compare competitive firm to a controlled one. Iyan talaga po ang trabaho ng arms length principle. No? Ano yung arms length principle? Mamaya isa-isahin natin yan. And then ipakita ko sa inyo yung mga references natin. No? Ginader ko po yung lahat yun. Para may idea kayo. And if you want to study further ng transfer pricing, then you have the reference materials. Know how related parties deal in non-arms length transactions. No? Kasi ano yung hinahanap dito, especially in the transfer pricing audit, hinahanap dito yung non-arms length transaction. At yan ay na-adjust. And for all you know, yung adjustment ng non-arms length transaction na yan will cost you thousand millions of uh, peso or dollars, depending on your currency. No? So, um, related party, let's now go to the uh, study of the related party. No? So, why, why do we have to study related party? Because we have to understand about a related party in studying transfer pricing. As I told you, there is no transfer pricing if there is no related parties. No? Okay. So, ano tong uh, principle applied on related parties? This is the arms and principle. No? Which is the principle followed by transfer pricing analy analyst requires that the transaction of related party be comparable to that or similar to the transactions of unrelated parties. Sino ba yung related parties at sino yung unrelated parties? Pag related parties, may link kayo, may relationship. Samantalang yung unrelated parties, wala, no? And purely, yung, yung transactions is governed by economic forces in the market, no? Kasi in, the, in this uh, transfer pricing study, we are dealing with the financial and commercial transactions, no? Wala tayo dito pinag-usapan na uh, non-business, no? This is about business and how the related parties ask during their uh, transactions which are commercial and financial. Uh, knowledge on how the parties are related is necessary to understand the rationale or background of relationship that will help in making comparability analysis. During the study, ano yung dinidiscover natin? The relationship, no? the control. Kaya nga, nandyan pa yung mga key management personnel. Why? Because sino ba yung mga, mga nagpapatakbo ng isang kumpanya at sino yung nagkocontrol ng mga companies? The key management personnel. No? And then, uh, it is also important, although sa threshold ngayon ng 1709, hindi na kailangan i-disclose yung key compensation for the key management uh, personnel at saka yung transaction sa kanila. But all others remain na, kahit dyan sa past 24 natin, May disclosure pa din dyan ng key management uh, personnel. No? Uh, why? Why is it very important? Unang-una yung key management personnel, sila yung utak, sila yung brain ng organization or ng company. No? And sometimes, bakit tinitingnan yung kanilang uh, compensation? Because since they are, they are the uh, ones who command the organization or the entity, then sometimes favored yung kanilang compensation that's why tinitingnan no at saka sometimes ang dami pa nilang mga option uh, stock option no yung stock based compensation ang dami when in fact meron ako na audit na hindi naman kumikita yung company the company is losing for how many years and yet the the stock based compensation of the K1 is when personnel is so much no wala ng economic substance po yan in that uh, situation. Why? Kasi, kasi kailan ka ba magbibigay ng uh, stock-based compensation sa personnel mo? When, when the company is doing well, he losing na nga. Bakit ganun pa kalalaki yung binibigay na stock-based compensation? Ang ibig sabihin lang, if you are um, paying extras to their to this uh, personnel, kasi Incentive nila yun, kumikita yung company. E ba't ka magbibigay ng incentive? I-losing, hindi nga kumikita. Tapos yung binibigay mo, inutang mo pa. No? Wala siyang ano. Ang, ang tawag ngayon ng OECD, wala siyang commercial rationale. No? Wala siyang commercial or walang business reasons. There is no business reasons to grant uh, stock-based compensation to those personnel na losing naman yung company. Okay, so the true substance of related dealings can be understood that will help 
in discovering relevant transfer pricing issues. No? Okay. Ano itong IAS or PAS 24? Uh, ano itong sinasabi niya? This is accounting standards. Why? Because in our taxation law, we also follow, especially in the valuation of the transactions, we follow also the accounting standards. No? So, IAS or PAS 24 provides that the party is related to an entity if directly or indirectly through one or more intermediaries, the party is controlled, no? Uh, control is controlled by or is under common control with the entity, no? which include parents, subsidiary, subsidiaries, and fellow subsidiaries. Alam nyo, um, ang dami kong ginagawa transfer pricing analysis. No? And uh, sa paggawa kasi ngayon ng transfer pricing analysis, you will be guided by the transfer pricing audit, which is the RAMO 1-2019. No? No? Uh, halos yung uh, may eh, review sila eh, may na di na guide na guide sa Ramo 1 2019 kung ano yung mga acceptable na comparables no na independent parties alam niyo yung mga na um, kita ko in the same industry halos puro sila related parties so in that case saan ka makakita ng independent parties na comparables so it's hard to find especially if the industry is uh, monopolized by these related parties, especially if the industry is very, very peculiar. No? So, ang hirap, ang hirap po gumawa. No? So, gagawa ka ng analysis, talagang iikot yung utak mo because you will be the one recommending to the management. Na yung management na yan, they, they will um, submit your study to the BAR later on for uh, transfer pricing audit. No? At uh, pag hindi nagkasundo yung VAR and the uh, taxpayer on the transfer pricing issues, it, it will reach the court. And it will be the court uh, uh, resolving the issues. So, anong gagawin ng court? Eh? Ipatawag ka because ikaw yung gumawa ng transfer pricing analysis. No? Okay. So, gana, ganyan po, kahirap maghanap ng uh, comparables or ng companies that you compare to the related parties. Karamihan dyan, some uh, related parties, parents, subsidiaries, fellow subsidiaries. In that case, i-reject mo kasi yan as comparable. No? So, ganyan kahirap. And then we have the, uh, yung related party, the party has an interest in the entity that gives it significant influence over the entity. No? Kaya nga may relationship sila eh. Bakit? Because the, the other entity has a significant influence over the other entity. Ano yung significant influence? Influence in the crafting of its policy. Influence in the uh, management. Influ influence in the approval of its uh, contracts. No? So in its uh, pa uh, programs, uh, business activities. No? So, ga ganun ka. Uh, uh, sometimes yung degree ng control at saka yung degree ng influence uh, over the other entity. So, uh, related parties din yung mga parties na, that have joint control over the entity. Kasi sometimes, di ba yung uh, company owned siya by two other entities. No? So, yung two other entities that invested on the uh, entity, mayroon silang joint control over the entity. Why? Kasi pareho silang may investment. Okay. And uh, the party is associate as defined in IS-28, no? investment in associates of the entity. Pag associates ka, may relationship din kayo, no? related parties din kayo. The party is a joint venture in which the entity is a venture, venturer, so uh, related parties also. The party is a member of the K, management personnel of the entity or its parent. No? So yun yung um, uh, K management uh, personnel ka ng entity at saka ng parent company. So, related parties. More so, kasi kay management personal ka, ikaw ang nagpapatakbo ng company. No? Or, the party is a close member of the family of any individual referred to in uh, one or four. No? We are defining related parties pa po kasi ang sabi natin ka kanina, 
there is no transfer pricing kung walang related parties. That's why iniisa-isa natin yung related parties. Later on, we will um, go now to the uh, basic ng transfer pricing. Ano ba yung basic transfer pricing? At nihanda ko na sa inyo lahat dito kung ano yung mga references natin. So, so that you have also the idea. And if you want to study further, then um, you can uh, make use of these references na karamihan naman dyan available po sa internet. No? Kasi ngayon, wala na tayong kaproblem-problema. If you want to know more or something about a certain topic, i-Google mo. Ganun lang, kadali. No? At nandyan yan. Although, there are some specific information na wala dyan, pero saka yung information sometimes hindi siya very broad, no? Na kailangan uh, isummarize mo pa or himay-himayin mo pa. But, uh, nandyan lahat. Okay. Uh, ito pa, ang ibig sabihin ng related party. The party is an entity that is controlled, joint, jointly controlled, or significant voting power in such entity resides with directly or indirectly to any individual referred to in four or five. Pag sinabi mong significant voting power ka, laki ng influence mo over the company. No? And also, the party is a post-employment benefit plan for the benefit of employees of the entity or any entity that is a related party of the entity. No? Kasi ganun eh, sa related party structure ngayon ng organizational chart, pag titignan mo, ito yung associate. Meron siyang uh, other related parties within its level. Tapos above, related parties siya, under siya ng parent company. Ito parent company, may ultimate parent pa. And then, meron pa ta yung tinatawag ngayon na surrogate entity. No? Halimbawa, ikaw yung reporting entity. Hindi ka nag-report. Yung isa, nandun doon, nakabigay sa kanya yung ibang mga functions, siya yung surrogate entity mo na siya yung magbibigay ng report. No? Matatakil din natin yan sa documentation under the uh, new guidelines ng OECD uh, documentation uh, on the three-tier documentation, yun yung country-by-country country reporting, the master file, and the local files. No? Okay. So, a related transaction is a transfer of resources, services, or obligation between parties regardless of whether a price is charged. Ang... Sometimes kasi itong mga commercial or financial relations na to or transactions, sometimes binibigay lang, no? Walang charges, walang uh, monetary amount involved. So, sa transfer pricing, those are potential issues, no? Kasi ang sabi natin sa transfer pricing, you compare the related party transactions with that of the independent party transactions. And if the transactions are independent, papayag ba sila na magta-transfer sila ng resources, ng services, or ng obligations without any consideration? Of course not. No? So, anong ibig sabihin na kaagad yan? That is a potential transfer pricing issue because sa independent party, hindi yan ginagawa. Yun, yun lang, ganun lang po kasimple. Pag hindi ginagawa ng independent party, then hindi din siya dapat gawin na related party for tax purposes. Pwede nilang gawin in actual, but for uh, tax purposes, for the computation of tax, dapat meron niyang consideration. No? Okay, so the behavior of related parties in their commercial and financial dealings is an important consideration in the study of transfer pricing. Why behavior? Because there are some uh, dealings na nasa kontrata na, but hindi pala nasusunod yung kontrata because the contract is just a formality. No? yung actual dealing deviates from that of the contract. So, ano yun? Yung actual behavior ng related parties is manifested by the actual dealings and not by the contract. No? Kaya nga, walang substance yung kontrata because the actual dealings is different. No? So, it is very important in the study of transfer pricing. Kaya nga, sabi ko sa inyo, uh, yung transfer pricing, mas malalim siya na klase ng, trans, ng, ng uh, tool used in taxation. No? Kaya nga, ginamit dito, in-apply dito yung economic taxation. No? Okay. Care should be exercised in analyzing related party transactions. No? So it doesn't mean that a related party transaction is always non-arms length. There are times naman na yung related party transactions are arms length. Especially now, ha, 
especially now na the management of the companies are aware of this tra uh, transfer pricing audit. That's why they, in, they already uh, inculcate in their transfer pricing policies adherence to the arms length uh, principle. No? Kasi bakit? Kung hindi sila mag adhere doon sa arms length principle, sigurado sila matransfer pricing audit. Magkaroon ng adjustment. And when there is an adjustment, it will result to deficiency income tax. No? Kasi ang transfer pricing po, nangingi alam sa income tax lang. Hindi niya pakikialaman yung value-added tax, other percentage taxes, or any other kind of tax. No? Hindi niya pakikialaman yun. That's why anong ginagawa dito sa Pilipinas? Transfer pricing audit is incorporated with the regular audit. No? So ano yung regular audit dito sa Pilipinas? In a one-year period, nandudoon na nakalagay sa letter of authority mo na i-examine ka all taxes, no? all internal revenue taxes during the taxable year, kung ano yun. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? So, during the transfer pricing audit, pag meron silang findings ng income tax, hindi income tax lang yung madadali doon na uh, findings. Why? Because of their authority na all internal revenue taxes. So, of course, kung itong findings na to, it results to the deficiency income, pwede nilang uh, isama dun sa findings nila in other taxes. Kasi all taxes po yung audit. No? So, yun, yun yung pagka-sophisticated uh, naman ng uh, transfer pricing audit dito sa Pilipinas incorporated with the regular audit of all taxes. No? So, whatever findings in the... Uh, kahit na sinasabi natin na yung transfer pricing deals only with the income tax. Hey, may authority yung examiner to audit all internal revenue taxes. So, may finding siya dito. Pwede niya i-carry doon sa isa. No? On the basis na all taxes yung kanyang audit. Since transfer pricing law applies exclusively to related party transactions, it is important to examine the legal definitions of this kind of transaction. No? Kaya nga, ano ba ang related party transactions? No? Pag sinabi mong related, there are relationships. No? So, RR2-2013 does, does not define related party. Ano yung dinefine ng uh, RR2-2013? Does does Associated enterprises. No? Ano itong RR2-2013? Does dated January 2013. This is the, the transfer pricing guidelines in the Philippines. No? So, ano sabi niya dito? The two enterprises... Are associated if one participates directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of the other, or if the same persons, pag sinabi mong same persons, ito yung mga key management uh, personnel, karamihan, no? Participate directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of the enterprises, no? So, these are also uh, referred to as related parties, no? So, hindi niya dinefine uh, directly yung related parties, um, ang, ang sinabi niya, associated parties, pero ang associated parties daw are also related parties. Okay. So, next, na very important po na, that we have to consider is yung sinasabi natin na control. No? So, I, uh, the International Accounting Standards and the Philippine Accounting Standards 24 also define control. No? Anong ibig sabihin po ng control? The power to govern. No? Power to govern, pakikialaman niya, siya yung masusunod. The financial and operating policies of an entity. Kaya saan titingnan ngayon yung financial and operating policies, kasama siya sa uh, transfer pricing audit. No? Kasi yung, yung financial and operating policies, doon na na manggagaling yung mga transfer pricing issues. Because if that policy of the company is uh, non-arms length, then it carries with it na yung kadyang financial and commercial transaction is not arms length, then can be subjected to uh, transfer pricing adjustment. No? Uh, ano, ano yung uh, reason why there is a financial and operating policies of the entity and there is control to obtain benefits for its activities. No? So yung control, hindi yan ginagawa lang without any purpose. Ano po yung purpose ng control? To obtain benefits for its activities. Bakit mo i-control yung isang company? Ikaw yung parent. 
you have a subsidiary. In your subsidiary is a wholly owned subsidiary. 100% yan, ikaw yung nag-invest. No? Sa transfer pricing, sa audit, isang mukha lang kayo kasi is, ikaw din naman yung may-ari doon eh. But for tax purposes, you will be considered a separate entity for tax purposes. No? So sabi dito, ano yung reason why you govern the financial and operating policies of an entity to obtain benefits for its activity. And that's the economic reason. No? Kasi pag sinabi mo na, wala lang, pinapakialaman ko lang siya, ay wala po yan no? sa transfer pricing. Sa economics, ano yung purpose? To gain benefits. No? May economic reason. Kaya nga, dinidisallow yung isang transactions pagka sinasabi ng uh, examiner or na revenue officer doing the audit, pwede niya i-disallow yung transactions na walang economic reasons no? or has no um, commercial uh, substance or com commercial uh, or business reason. No? Pwede mo i-disallow yun. Why? Kasi it's against the sound economic principle of business. Ano ba yung business? To earn profit. Bakit ka nagbibusiness? Kaya nga ang hinahabol ng gobyerno, bakit gustong-gusto niya na mag-transfer pricing audit? Bakit gustong-gusto niya na i-define yung profits mo? Bakit? Nangingi alam ang gobyerno dyan dahil mayroon siyang share in the profits of the enterprise in the form of taxes. And how much is that? Dito sa Pilipinas, how much is the share of the government in your net income? In your net income subject to tax, 30% of that goes to the government. No? That's why very particular ang uh, tax authority na i-determine kung magkano yung profit ng isang company. Why? Because that is the taxable base. Diyan siya kukuha ng share niya. No? And then isisero mo siya dahil sabihin mo, ah, wala naman kaming... Um, Profit were operating at a loss. No? So that is uh, against a sound uh, economic principle. Hindi man niniwala yan dyan ang tax authority. Bakit kayo loss? Kasi charge ka ng charge ng capital expenses dun sa ordinary mo or sa regular business operations mo. So during audit, anong gagawin? Ipakapitalize sa iyo yung capital expenses mo. So lalabas ngayon, malaki pala yung taxable income mo. No? So ganun po ang purpose ng mga tax authorities. Kasi Kung titingnan mo, okay, no, no. So balikan po natin yung uh, RR2 das 2013. Ito yung yung transfer pricing guidelines ng Pilipinas naman. Ano yung sabi niya naman about control? Kasi kanina sinabi niya about associated enterprise, no? Uh, about control. Sabi niya naman niya, control is any kind of control. Kahit anong klaseng control yan, basta control, no? Pwedeng direct, pwedeng indirect, pwedeng legally enforceable or not, pwedeng in-exercise o pwede ring hindi, no? Basta control. Control shall be deemed present if income or deduction have been arbitrarily shifted. No? Nag-shift ka ng um, profits mo from one enterprise to the other. Ang assumption ka agad dyan, there is an element of control. Kasi bakit ka nag-shift? Sino nag-shift? No? Sino yung nag-order na i-shift mo yung uh, profit mo from one uh, enterprise to the other? It further defines control transaction as any transaction between two or more associated enterprises. No? So, in our study, we already uh, defined the control at saka yung uh, related parties. No? Kasi magkasama yan eh. Pag related parties yan, meron niyang control. No? So, yun ang hinahanap. Why? Kasi ang mga transfer pricing cases, pag nakarating na ng korte, eh, there are cases na i-define lang ng court or ng uh, prosecution that there is really an element of control. Panalo na yung tax authority. No? Why? Especially in a certain transactions na makikita mo na talaga na walang economic substance. Okay. So, control is defined by the IBFD, International Tax Glossary. Ano po itong IBFD? Ito yung International Bureau of Fiscal Documentation. No? Yung 2008 na uh, 
uh, I want to get out of the BAR na noon, no? Para magkaroon ng, uh, I want to, to uh, practice international taxation. No? Nag-research ako doon sa National Tax Research Center ng uh, Philippines. Dito ako napunta sa IBFT. This is, uh, is the biggest tax library in the world. No? Yung International Bureau of Fiscal Documentation, this is based in Amsterdam, Netherlands. No? So, dito ako nag-aral ng uh, international taxation. And ito na nga, during my study, dito ako nag-focus sa transfer pricing. No? Uh, although, marami pa, maraming mga areas na pwede niyong aralin dito sa IBFD. At nag-offer po sila ngayon mga online courses, marami. No? Yung about international taxation at saka mga European taxation all over the world. And they are also uh, consultants ng mga government agencies. So, malaki, malaki ang IBFD at saka uh, nakakatulong especially sa mga tax practitioners. No? So, if you want to study further, try nyo po yung mga uh, courses or um, offered ng IBFD. Mas mura na kasi pagka-online. No? Kasi yung time ko, alam nyo, I really invested in transfer pricing. Why? During my first uh, study in IBFD, yung four days, five days ko, it, it cost me 200,000. No? Ano pa lang yun, hindi pa kasama mga accommodations yan because saan ako kumuha, meron silang programs offered in Malaysia, no? in Kuala Lumpur. So doon ako nag-aral. Why? Kasi kung doon ako mag-aral sa Amsterdam, millions ang gagastusin. So, cannot afford. So, naghihintay ako ng mga programs nila dito sa Asia and yun nga doon sa Malaysia, sa Kuala Lumpur. But right now, meron na rin sila sa Singapore. No? And hindi lang yun. Because of the new normal natin, na digitized na yung world natin, nandyan na rin sila sa internet. No? May mga online courses sila, marami na. So, lahat yata ng face-to-face, -face, nasa online na rin. So, hindi na mahirap. No? Saka, because of the facilities also, madali na lang po mag-study. And then, uh, less. Pero yung sabi natin na less, mahal pa rin yung kanilang tuition fee kung i-compare natin sa atin. No? That's why sabi nga ng iba sa akin, why did you offer this uh, free seminar? This seminar is very expensive. Ano na lang po natin yan? Um, uh, mas, matatawa natin na advocacy. At, at saka, also, para yung transfer pricing mag- karoon ng kaalaman lahat, no? I understand na yung mga participants natin ngayon are also CPAs and are also mga uh, kung hindi man CPA, mga accountants at saka deals mostly in the uh, as an employee of the multinational corporations at saka na mga corporate, no? Corporate entities. So, very important po sa inyo but uh, if you really wanted to grow as a tax practitioner, then it is mandatory that you have to know more about transfer pricing. Why? Because this, this is the most important topic in international taxation, and transfer pricing po. So if you are a tax practitioner at hindi mo alam yung transfer pricing, kawawa ka. No? So ano yun? Para hindi ka kawawa, you study more. Uh, mamaya papakita ko sa inyo lahat ng mga materials where you can have it. At saka mag-invest ka talaga para matuto ka ba. No? Okay. So, balik po na, na, na tayo sa control. No? So, the purpose of control is to gain benefits from the activities of the control, controlled entity as defined by IS 24. And usually, no, during the transfer pricing, ano yung mga benefits gained from the imposition or from the uh, exercise of control over the entity? Yun yung benefits gained in the form of reduced taxes, no? Nag-minimize yung tax liability. <laughs> Yan yung karamihan, no? So, the element of control can be manifested from the dealings of the associated enterprises, the parent and subsidiary, especially in the pricing of goods or services transferred between subsidiaries. Alam mo, para sa akin, ha? Para sa akin, hindi na nga kailangan na you study kung there is an element of control or not. No? Para sa akin, ano na yan, eh? Uh, nandiyan na kaagad dyan eh, yung control. Why? Kasi natural lang yun. 
ako, I am the parent company, no? Kahit na nga lang sa totoong buhay, ikaw yung parent. Pwede bang wala kang control sa anak mo? Na kahit ano na lang gagawin ng anak mo, pabayaan mo lang? Of course, there is an element of control. Kaya nga, ikaw yung parent. And then, ito yung subsidiary mo. Inherent yan, eh. Kung, kung ang bansa, mayroon siyang tatlong inherent powers, no? Ano yung in inherent powers ng isang state over the uh, country or its inhabitants or its subject? Ito yung uh, taxation, no? The power of taxation is an inherent power of the state kasi ito yung uh, lifeblood niya, dito siya nabubuhay, ito yung support to the government, no? Ano pa? The police power, ito yung regulatory power ng government. Ano pa? Yung eminent domain, ito yung taking of uh, private property uh, by paying just compensation for public purpose. No? So yung tatlo na yan, inherent power. Para naman sa akin, when it comes to the entity, when it comes to uh, business, no? enterprise, control is also inherent. No? Ikaw yung parent company, pwede bang hindi mo control yung subsidiary mo? Kahit anong gagawin na lang, lustayin yung pera mo, pwede ba yun? Of course not, because you are going to protect your investment over your subsidiary. That's why there is really an element of control. But, sa transfer pricing, we study control in such a way that control is already used to minimize the payment of taxes. No? So, doon lang yun. Doon lang yun, no? may ikot. Ano lang ba yung pinapag-usapan dito sa transfer pricing? Taxes. No? So, wala nang iba. Control is also manifested through the power to govern financial and operating policies of an entity. Dito nga, may, may nagtanong sa akin about, Ma'am, ganito yung ginawa. Ma'am, ganito yung ginawa. Sabi ko, that is the prerogative of your management. It's a, a matter of management policy. Ma'am, anong gagawin namin? Kung pag-aralan mo yung policy. So, hindi, hindi, hindi pagka ganyan na mga sagot po, hindi ko yan sinasagot outright, no? Kasi you might be quoting me na, ito yung sinabi ni ma'am, ganun. Yung mga pag sinabi mo na na policy, paaralin mo talaga yan before ka makapag-comment, makapagsabi. Yun namang iba, hindi ka nagbibigay ng comment, hindi ka nagbibigay ng advice, akala nila maramot ka. Hindi po yan pagdalamot, nagiging ma ingat lang. Kasi ikaw din mapapahiya. Pero mo mag-comment ka about magbigay ka ng outright ng advice on the management policies, ano yun? Hindi mo nga alam mo anong policy na gano'n. <laughs> Ako, Diyos ko po, pasensya na lang ha. Kasi ang dami po nagtatanong. Uh, sometimes yung oras ko maubos na lang sa kasasagot sa Facebook, sa YouTube channel natin, no, sa comment portion, especially sa mga, mga videos natin. No, kasi kailangan sagutin mo yan lahat. Bakit? Nire-record yun ang YouTube. Yung mga unanswered questions mo, nire-record nila yun. No? Sama yun sa pag-re-rate doon sa channel mo. So, you really have to uh, answer right away. Kaya nga, meron na kami live streaming o the question and answers lang. No? Sinasagot na namin yung mga Uh, questions ng uh, live at saka yung doon sa comment portion natin. Pero dito naman sa transfer pricing, although gusto natin, but this is a different um, avenue no, ng tax services. Hindi po tayo pwede yung question and answer na lang. Why? Kasi mas sophisticated po ang transfer pricing at saka factual, no? based on the facts and circumstances of the case. Hindi ka nga pwedeng gumamit dito na president kasi ito yung ginawa niya. Iba yung circumstances niya. Iba naman ito. Kaya you really have to uh, study its case. no? Case to case basis po talaga ang transfer pricing. Hindi tayo pwede mo basta-basta na lang nagbibigay ng kahit anong opinion dyan. No? That's why ito gumagawa ko ng transfer pricing analysis. Ilan na yan? Eleven. No? Sa sobrang sakit sa ulo. Why? Super hirap gawin ang transfer pricing analysis compared to the financial statements. No? Yung financial statements mo, naka-template naka na lang yan. No? Nandiyan na, saan mo yan kukunin? Hindi ka naman pwede mag-invent dyan. Saan mo yan kukunin? Doon sa balances at saka doon sa yung uh, previous uh, years niya na mga records. No? And then yung trial balance niya, doon mo lahat dyan kukunin. After that, yung... Apat na financial statements, unahin mo yung income statement. 
sunod mo na yung balance sheet, sunod na yung cha- statement of changes in equity, and then cash flow, and then yung last mo, yung notes of financial statements. Tapos na. But in transfer pricing analysis, no way. Doon pa lang sa paghanap ng comparables and then the information about the comparables, that's why transfer pricing analysis is very, very expensive. Why? Because of the information no? na, na kailangan i-gather mo lahat yan bago ka makapagbigay uh, ng opinion. No? So, mas malawak po ang trabaho sa transfer pricing compared sa yung paggawa lang ng financial statements. Hindi naman sinasabi na lang pero ang sabi ko lang na lang because uh, mas mahaba yung oras na ibibigay mo sa transfer pricing study. Okay. Economic substance of related party transactions. Ano po yung ibig sabihin ng economic substance ng related party transactions? Okay. I-apply natin yung economic principles no sa sa related party transactions at ano yung transaction na pinag-uusapan natin sa related parties the commercial and financial transactions ibig sabihin sa business no so economic deals with the law of supply and demand no so knowledge of the working of the supply and demand and how they affect price and output in a competitive market is essential in the study of transfer pricing alam niyo sa study ng transfer pricing may may portion dyan na yung economic conditions, no? Bawa, industry yan. Ano yung economic condition of the industry? That's why tinitingnan ko yung uh, study ko ng uh, during the pandemic, no? Kasi, di ba, ang dami nag-stop, ang dami, ano. But, dito sa mga industries na, na under study ko ngayon, wala pa ako nakita na very adverse yung effect ng pandemic sa kanila. Why? Because there there are uh, industries na mas kumita pa nga sila ng malaki during the pandemic. Sino to? Yung mga pharmaceutical. No? Yung mga nagbebenta ng mga mask, mga shield, mga ano, naging import sila. Siguro five times, ten times, twenty times na lumaki yung kanilang sales. No? Kaya nga, yung tinitingnan ko, sino ba yung talagang tinamaan ng uh, pandemic? Yun lang industry ng transportation, yung mga hotel resort resort restaurant at wala pa ang nagpagawa sa akin ng ganyan no kaya hindi ko pa makita talaga na uh, ad- very adverse yung effect ng pandemic no so yun yung sa economic substance sino pa yung kumita yung mga nagtitinda ng food at saka yung uh, sa services naman yung delivery no yung mga nagagrab yung mga nagmumotor yung mga uh, delivery services No? Sila talaga yung kumita kasi mas marami na yung hindi lumalabas ng bahay, anong ginagawa na lang? Nagpapa-deliver uh, na lang. So, anong nangyari? So, maraming deliveries, malumaki ang kita ng mga uh, service entities na nag-provide ng delivery. No? Okay. So, in a perfectly competitive market price is determined by the market demand and supply curve. No? So, ano, ano ba yung... Uh, famous natin na uh, low of supply and demand. Yun yung economics, di ba? The, the low of supply and demand. Na nagkaroon nga ng joke dyan noon sa kay President Erap na sabi daw ni President Erap, pwede ba tanggalin natin yung low of supply and demand? No? Ano yun? Ano ang supply, uh, the low of supply and demand? Pwede ba natin tanggalin? Pwede ba natin walain yan? Of course not, but because that is a natural law. At pag sinabi po natin na natural law, You cannot break it even if you break yourself, no? Kasi nandiyan na yan eh. Although along the way, may mga nagbabago din kasi kahit nga yung nature natin nagbabago din, no? But uh, itong law of supply and demand is still existing, no? Okay, so the intersection of supply and demand determines the equilibrium price, no? In this example, 250 pesos ang quantity, tapos 8,000 pieces, no? So, uh, mas tumataas yung uh, price, tumataas ang price, bumababa yung demand, no? Kasi itingnan nyo, pababa ang demand pagka mataas yung price, no? Pero pagka tumataas naman yung, uh, bumababa ang price, tumataas naman yung uh, demand, no? Kasi maraming bibili pag mura yung 
uh, supply mo, no? Pero depende din yan sa commodity, no? Meron talagang tinatawag natin ng mga scarce commodity, no? Okay. So, economic substance refers to the price of goods or services involved in the transaction between associated and independent enterprises. Ito pong ating discussion dito. Ano pa lang to yung backgrounder ng transfer pricing, no? Yung specific mamaya pa yan, no? So, which are influenced by the market forces and not by the controlling entity through artificial price management. So, saan pumapasok yung artificial price management? Saan yan pumapasok? Sa control, no? Sa related parties. Why? Kasi kung independent parties kayo, wala na mga artificial price management yan. Especially if your uh, transactions is governed by the economic forces, no? Uh, and for your information, meron na po tayong tinatawag ngayon na uh, Philippine Competition Commission. Sila po yung nagre-regulate. Sila yung parang antitrust law po ng Pilipinas. Sila yung nagre-regulate ngayon ng ating uh, tinatawag na mga economic transactions. No? Yung mga consolidation and mergers ng mga, mga top uh, companies involving billions of pesos na that will really affect the economy at sometimes magkaroon ng economic sabotage. Lumadaan po sa Philippine Competition Commission for their approval. Kung hindi po nila i-approve, hindi po matuloy yung uh, merger and consolidation ng companies. No? And for your information, nag-aral din po sila sa atin ng one week natin yung certificate program in transfer pricing. No? Because that transfer pricing is very important. No? So, when the economic substance is lacking or kulang siya in their commercial and financial dealings, then the purpose is not for business. No? So, hindi na siya business. Anong purpose? Avoiding, minimizing payment of taxes or for any other reasons. No? Sometimes control, sometimes monopoly. No? So, iba-iba. Ano pa yung hindi inaalaw ng Philippine Competition Commission? Yung predatory pricing. Ano po yung predatory pricing? Ito yung uh, baba ka ng baba ng presyo mo no? para patayin mo yung competitor. Pag patay na yung competitors mo, taasan mo na yung presyo mo. No? So, bawal din po yan pag predatory pricing. Sino yung lang pwedeng gumawa niyan? Yung talagang uh, well-versed na market players kasi kung mga baguhan lang, hindi kaya yan. No? So, in this case, a comparability adjustment should be made to calculate the taxes that should be paid for those particular transactions. That's why we are very, very careful in uh, comparability analysis na dapat ang i-compare mo sa related party transactions are really independent party transactions. Because if you compare related party transactions to another related party transaction, then defeated po yung purpose ng comparability analysis. No? But yung nakita ko ngayon, sobrang hirap. Especially dun sa manufacturing companies na hinahanapan namin ng mga comparables. Halos yung player niya in the same industry are also related parties. So, saan ka ngayon maghahanap? No? Ng comparables. Very few. Ilang comparables ba ang allowed? No? Uh, 8 to 12 is enough, sabi po ng OECD. No? But of course, magkaroon ka pa ng point of elimination... Nung umpisa ako, maabot kami ng at least 200 companies, no? Mga comparables namin, bago namin ma-reduce yan into 10 or 12. Okay. So, the demand curve for a good or service shows the total quantities that consumers are willing and able to purchase at various prices, no? So, yun yung demand curve. Uh, sahin nyo na yan, no? Uh, punta na tayo sa... That's why yung, yung purpose ko sa inyo, ang dami kong uh, binibigay na mga handouts na in advance for you to read. Ha? Okay, so competitive firm as a price taker. No? Pag sinabi mong competitive firm, ano siya? Controlled or independent? Of course, independent siya. Kaya nga competitive firm siya eh. Why? Price taker siya. Ano yung price taker? Nag, parang naghahanap ka ng price in the market na Ito, mababa siya ngayon, so bibili ka na, no? So, an active market is a market in which all the following conditions exist. Ito yung uh, active market, no? The items traded in the market are homogeneous, iba-iba. The willing buyers and sellers can normally be found 
at any time. No? Kasi kung walang buyer, yung product mo, eh, wala, walang demand, hindi ka talaga makapagkuman ng price dyan. No? Prices are available to the public. Yung iba, ngayon ko lang naintindihan na yung iba, tinatago yung price nila. No? Why? Kaya nga mayroon tayong tinatawag na intangibles na list of customers, list of product. Bakit? Because uh, pag prices are available to the public, ito yung prices ng product mo, gustong-gusto yan malaman ng competitor mo. Bakit? Kasi magdadive yan siya. Ah, yan pala yung, yung product mo, 2 pesos. Gagawin ko yung sa akin, 180 para sa akin na lahat bibili. No? So, ganun po yung price. That's why pagka uh, yung prices mo hindi available to the market you are protecting your uh, product no pero hindi yan active market pag tinatago mo yung uh, price mo so in an active market competitive firm is a price taker no pag sinabi mong price taker it has no influence or market price yung kontrolado niya yung market price kaya, kaya anong ginagawa ng monopoly so one one of the uh, thing na nire-regulate po ng Philippine Competition Commission is yung monopoly, no? yung cartel. Bakit? Pag may monopoly, wala ng uh, economic na, uh, parang yung economic activity mo, sanction na or controlled na. No? So, competitive market is such that it is composed of large number of sellers, no monopoly. No? Ano ba yung monopoly? Siya lang yung, sa kanya lang available yung product. So, anong gagawin niya? Itaas niya yung presyo, ibaba niya yung presyo, kaya-kaya niyang gawin. No? So, ibig sabihin, isang tao lang yung nag, isang entity lang yung nag influence ng uh, price ng market, ng uh, product no, in the market. So, uh, the competing firm's outputs are perfect substitutes from each other. Yan ang active market. no? So, yung product mo merong uh, substitutes. So, halimbawa, tinaasan mo yung product mo, hindi sila bibili. Dahil may mabibili naman sila, same product na mas mura pa. No? Kaya, anong ginagawa ng iba as a strategy? Gagawin nila, meron sila isang product na sellable. Gagawa sila ng substitute of that product, pero kanila din. No? So, anong gagawin nila? Uh, at least limang product, same yan, pero kanila lahat yan. No? So, yung product na nila, yun na nagko-compete sa market. The buyers have complete information about the cost, price, and quality of competing goods. That's why yung iba, alam nyo, yun yung mga sinasabi natin na yung economic intelligence, lahat yan, minumonitor nila yung mga price, no? yung mga product in the market. Kasi if you are a market player, dapat alam mo yun, otherwise, wala. Pagdating ng araw, you are out of business. No? Okay. So, competitive markets provide efficient amount of goods and service at minimum cost to the consumer who are most willing and able to pay for them. Alam nyo, yung pag-competitive na yung market, ang dami na available na goods, bababa yung presyo. Why? Kasi hindi na, hindi na, ang usapan doon, pataasan ang presyo, pababaan na ng presyo. Bakit? Kasi yun ang hinahanap ng tao. No? So, the price is the result of the willingness of the buyer to buy and the willingness of the seller to sell the product. No? Yan ang active market. No? At saka walang influence with each other. Walang control. No? Okay. So, yun yung um, uh, pag-aralan natin sa economics that really influence the transfer pricing. At sabi na nga natin, since uh, transfer pricing is economic taxation, that's why we have to study what are the economic forces in the market. Kasi yan po yung kasama pag nag-present tayo ng transfer pricing analysis report natin. Huh? Pasensya na dun sa mga very basic lang ang alam sa transfer pricing. Ha? Baka hindi nyo maintindihan yung mga sinasabi ko. Kasi ano na to, yung parang meron na kayong basic knowledge about transfer pricing. At saka, ang uh, dinidiscuss ko sa inyo is about economics. Lahat naman tayo, pag nag-college na tayo, di ba, may economics. Yung economics 1, economics 2, no? So, sana nakaka-relate naman yung ating mga audience. Okay. Diretso tayo sa 
uh, control transaction at yung sinasabi na non-arms non -arms length dealings, no? Uh, related parties. Okay. Ano ba itong uh, arms length dealings? Ito, ito yung uh, uh, dealings between the independent parties, no? Ano yung non-arms length dealings? Ito yung uh, dealings with between the related parties, no? Kasi nga, controlled yung transaction. So, once the transaction is controlled, sabi na nga natin, hindi na nasusunod yung economic forces. Ano na? Yung control na. That's why, pinag-aral natin ng control, pinag-aralan natin yung uh, active market, yung economic forces, so that nakaka-relate tayo pagdating na po, na-apply natin yan sa uh, transactions or sa dealings ng company under transfer pricing analysis or audit. Okay. Independent parties act independently on their business dealings. No, no element of control. No, the price of goods and services are influenced by market forces and not an imposed price influenced by the controlling parties. No, so you see, no, ba yung nagko-control? Pagka controlled ka, sino yung nagko-control between the parent company and the subsidiary? Of course, it's the parent company who controls the subsidiary. The investor and the investee, sino ba yung uh, nagko-control? Siyempre, ang nagko-control yung investor. Why? Uh, why na um, kinokontrol niya yung in investee niya? To protect its money or its investment. Hmm? So that is inherent naman. But for tax purposes, uh, ano, ano yung ideal? Yung walang control. Why? Because that is the true transactions. Huh? Okay. Yan, na-explain yan mabuti dyan sa ating, uh, ano ha, sa ating, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Now, let's go to the Philippine Accounting Standards for Related Parties. Ito yung IS Pass 24. No? So, it ensures that the entity's financial statements contain the disclosures necessary to draw attention to the possibility that its financial position and outstanding balances with such parties. Ano yung nire-require ng IAS uh, or past 24, no, accounting standards? Yung uh, disclosures, no? Ano yung disclosures ng related party transactions? That's why may matrix yan. Doon sa notes to financial statements, kung ano yung dapat natin na i-disclose uh, the... Uh, Transactions between related parties. No? Nakalagay doon yung nature, the name of the related parties, and then the amount. And then yung explanation. Okay. Uh, disclosures of related party transactions, outstanding balances in the separate financial statement of parent, venture or investor presented in accordance with IS 27 or the consolidated and separate financial statements which are mandatory for certain uh, entities, no? Okay, so ito po yung scope ng IS 24, no? Identifying related party relationships and transactions. So you have to identify the related party relationship and transactions. Requirement niya ng standard, no? So identify outstanding balances including commitments between an entity and, it, and its related parties. No? So, ano yung outstanding balances? Ano yung mga commitments? No? Ang related parties, the parent, the uh, other related parties. Not, not necessarily the parent no? and the subsidiary. Pwede ring, uh, the entity and other subsidiaries. Letter C, identifying the circumstances in which disclosure of the items is required. No? So, ano yung mga circumstances? Sa atin, we already have this uh, uh, Revenue Regulations 34, 2020. At doon sa BIR Form 1709, meron na tayong threshold doon na sinasabi. No? Uh, ano yung mga threshold na sinasabi doon? Yun yung, uh, ano yung mga entities na kailangan uh, mag-disclose no? ng BIR Form 1709? Dinefine doon yung large taxpayers yung mga entities enjoying exemptions no or tax incentives at saka yung mga entities na uh, nagdeclare sila ng losses ng 3 years no so sila yun yung mga at saka yung threshold sa
sa RR 3040 may threshold na na uh, 150 million for the sale of goods and 90 million of that sales is between related parties no and then yung sale ng tangible uh, property na 60 million saka yung services na 15 million no? so yun po yung threshold Okay, so yun yung sabi dito na uh, identifying the circumstances in which disclosure of the items is required. No? So you visit the requirement in RR 34-2020. Determining the disclosures to be made about those items. So pag na-disclose mo na kasi, may explanation yun. Meron ng amount and then meron pang uh, explanation. No? At least three explanations para naintindihan. Okay, so ano yung purpose na related party disclosures? Ipapakita nyo na to sa... When you make the notes to financial statement, itong April 15 na mga financial statements. Do, balikan ko na lang yung requirement pa na isa ng 34-2020 na halimbawa hindi kayo nag-attach ng BIR Form 1709 sa inyong annual income tax return. Sasabihin nyo rin doon sa disclosure to the financial statement sa notes the reason kung bakit hindi kayo required to file or attach the BIR Form 1709 at ano yung mga posible yung na reasons hindi kayo kasama dun sa threshold no na uh, sinasabi ng RR 34-2020 so yun yung reason ninyo okay so related party could have an effect on the project Profit, profit yan ha? Profit or loss and financial position of the entity. No? Kaya nga yung banks, yung mga external user of the financial statements, red light na kaagad sa kanila pag may related parties. Why red light? Kasi isipin na kaagad nila may element of control. No? Kaya bakit pagka ikaw ay uh, parent or subsidiary, nire-require na sa uh, parent na maraming subsidiaries to include in their financial statement, consolidated financial statement ng subsidiaries nila. Why? Kasi isang tingin mo nalang, makikita mo na doon yung uh, transactions at saka yung result ng operations at saka kung magkano yung kinita ng parent company doon sa mga uh, companies na nag-invest siya. Okay. So, profit or loss and financial position of the entity may be affected by related party relationship even if related party transactions do not occur. Ano yung sabi natin dun sa definition ng control kanina? Uh, control daw is defined as any kind of control, direct or indirect, uh, legally enforceable, uh, uh, exercised or uh, not. No? Basta pag sinabi mong control, kahit na hindi siya in-exercise, hindi siya legally protected, uh, considered pa rin siya na control. No? So, mere existence of relationship may be sufficient to affect the transaction of the entity with other party. No? Okay. So, very important po is the uh, knowledge of the entity transactions. Outstanding balances, including commitments, relationships. Actually, since 2016, gumagawa na po ako ng transfer pricing analysis. And right now, mas basic, mas uh, extensive yung ginagawa kong transfer pricing analysis ngayon. Why? Because meron na tayong Ramo 1, 2019. Meron na tayong mga RR na may mga regulations or may mga uh, requirements na on the transfer pricing analysis. So, dapat sundan natin yan, no? So, in the making of transfer pricing analysis report, I, I see to it that it is already compliant with those existing regulations. No? Bakit? Para, para pagdating na ng audit, wala na nga hanapin pa yung, ano, yung uh, examiner. Ano yung ginawa ko? Pati mga segmented financial statements, pati the supply chain uh, management analysis, nilagay ko na. No? So, wala na nga hanapin yung examiner. At saka, hindi na maghahanap pa yung uh, client pagdating ng transfer pricing audit. No? So, lahat ng mga kailangan during the audit, in-answer ko na doon sa transfer pricing analysis report ko. That's why very extensive. No? Okay. 
Disclosures of related party transactions in the financial statements. Anong i-disclose natin sa related party transactions for those who are preparer? Although, meron pa tayong tax preparer na seminar which is also free sa March 11 and 12, Bahari. Next week na rin, no? Thursday and Friday. No? On time yun na sa para sa uh, filing ng income tax, pahabol pa yan kasi hanggang April 15 pa naman. Ano yun? Yung uh, mga reminders para sa uh, mga tax preparers, especially in the notes to the financial statements and then dun sa mga itemized deductions. No? Kasi kahit nasabihin mo pa na arang sa akin, pabalik-balik na lang yan. Eh. But there are some na Hirap pa rin sila, no? Especially sa mga baguhan. So, we, we feel na kailan pa rin natin sila. Kasi, para sa akin yung turo, continuous eh. Pag nag-stop ka, pag nag-ano ka, wawawala ka rin eh. So, continuous. No? So, if March 11 and 12, meron pa tayong free seminar for tax preparer that is the second batch. After that, wala na. Kaya nga sabi ko nga kay Harry, pati yung ating mga live na YouTube, pagdating ng uh, ito March after after that dapat wala na rin to give way to the filing no kasi ang dami na niyan at that time eh, mayroon pang mga transfer pricing analysis report hindi na kakayanin okay so ano yung i-disclose po natin sa related party transactions in the financial statements doon to sa notes to financial statements no you have to disclose the relationship between the parent and its subsidiaries no so, ano ba yung relationships nila? Halimbawa, the company is a wholly owned subsidiary of, ganito yung parent company niya. And then, the ultimate parent is ganito. No? Uh, to enable users of financial statements to form view about the effect of related party relationship, it is appropriate to disclose the related party relationship when control exists. No? So, irrespective of whether there had been transactions between the related parties. So, ano yun? Notes to financial statements to, ha? Hindi to BAR Form 1709. So, do not misquote. Iba yung BAR Form 1709, iba tong disclosure to financial statements, which is mandatory din sa SEC, no? Especially if you are a corporation. No? So, ano yun? You disclose mo yung related parties when control exists irrespective of whether there had been transactions between related parties. So, ibig sabihin, kahit walang transactions between the related parties, basta may nag-exist yung relationship, you have to disclose that. No? Okay. Requirements to disclose related party between parent and subsidiaries in addition to IS-27 and IFRS-12, no? Disclosure of interest in other entities. So, kasama pa. So, you have to, to visit the uh, International Accounting Standards 27 and also the International Financial Reporting Standards 12. Okay. So, IS-24, paragraph 13, no? you have to uh, disclose also the most senior parent. No? Ito yung first parent in the group. So, siguro ito yung grandfather na o lolo-lolo na ng mga companies, no? Okay. Uh, sila yung mga nagpo-produce ng consolidated financial statements. So, the entity also shall disclose, ano pa, management personal compensation in total and for each of the following categories. So, do not misquote me na sabi ng RR34-2020, hindi na uh, i-disclose yung key management personal. Doon po yun sa 1709, ha? Ito sa notes to financial statements, i-disclose mo yung key management personnel compensation. No? So, iba-iba ito na, na requirement na disclosure sa is easy at saka iba din yung sa 1709. No? Kasi sa 1709, hindi na kailangan yung key management personnel i-disclose. No? So, short-term employee benefits, post-employment benefits, other long-term benefits, termination benefits, and the share-based payment. You have to disclose that. Sa notes to financial statements. Okay. So, during the period covered by the financial statement, disclose the related uh, party relationship 
information about the transaction, outstanding balances, commitments. No? Uh, okay. Ito namang uh, requirement under uh, paragraph 18 no, ng uh, International Accounting Standards 24 shall be made separately for each of the following categories. No? So, yung disclosure for the parent, for the entities with joint control, for the subsidiaries, for the associates. No? Kasi lahat to, magpe-prepare sila ng kanila financial statements. No? Yung associates, yung subsidiaries, may sariling financial statement in yan. Although, uh, kinoconsolidate yan sa parent, pero sila, may sarili talaga silang uh, financial statements. No? So, uh, magdi-disclose din sila doon ng related parties. Okay. Classification of amounts payable to and receivable from related parties. May tanong dito, ang advances by uh, officers, and by employees, are they related parties? Siyempre, no? Related parties po yan. Kasi if you, if you define, sino ba yung related parties, kaya inuna na nga natin yung definition ng related parties, eh, pasok sila doon, no? Kasi even member of, of the families, pasok sila. No? Okay, so what are the transactions that are to be disclosed if they are with a related party? Ito yung Purchases or sale of goods, no? Alibawa, nag-purchase ka sa parent company mo. How much during the year? You have to disclose that. Purchase of sales of property and other assets. Sa sale of property, yung tangible assets natin, magkano yung threshold? Para mag-disclose ka na sa 1709, 60 million. No? Rendering or receiving of services, magkano yung threshold? Under RR 34 to 2020, 15 million. No? Pagka-render siya between related parties. And then leases, transfer of research and development, transfer under finance arrangement. This has to be disclosed, ha? Sa related parties, transaction. Provision of guarantees or collateral. Commitment to do something if a particular event occurs or does not occur in the future, including executor contracts. Ha? Ito yung mga, mga commitments, may mga kontrata yan. Ha? Pag sinabi mong commitments, meron tayong requirements sa civil law that it should be in writing no, to make it enforceable. So even if it is a contract between the related parties, it should also be in writing. That's why sa paggawa ng transfer pricing analysis, very, very important po yung contract. Ang problema lang, hindi ka bibigyan no, ng contracts. So paano mo gagawin yung analysis mo? So hindi kompleto. No? You, you just render the opinion based on the available documents presented to you. Kasi, hindi mo naman pwedeng pilitin, hindi mo naman pwedeng ipasubay na yung uh, company kung ayaw kang bigyan ng contracts. Anyway, uh, available documents. No? Yun ang maging basis mo ng opinion. <laughs> Yan yung constraint, no? Pag ikaw yung gumagawa. Kasi along the way, ang dami mong findings, pero pag... Pag sinabi mo naman sa management, ayon lang sundin, no? Meron nga akong kausap na large taxpayer, ma'am, mandatory na po yung uh, related party transactions mag yung constraint, no? Pag ikaw yung gumagawa. Kasi along the way, ang dami mong findings. Pero pag, pag sinabi mo naman sa management, ayon lang sundin, no? Meron nga akong kausap na large taxpayer, ma'am, mandatory na po yung uh, related party transactions mag Kasi pag ikaw yung consultant, minsan natanggap na ako. Sabi na bayaran niyo ako ng retainers, okay na, tanggap na ako. Anyway, the prerogative naman, kaya nga kahit sa financial statements, it's management responsibility. Likewise, dito sa transfer pricing din, if you are the ones doing the transfer pricing analysis, management responsibility din po ito, no? <clears throat> Meron nga ako na gawa ng transfer pricing audit na based on the contract, yung financial statements niya, hindi pasado, no? Ang gumawa nun sa big firm, no? Based on sa contract, meron silang service level agreement, cost plus markup, no? 
magkano yung plus? Yung cost nila, plus markup of 5%, no? which is very low pa kung independent parties. No? Pero tinignan ko yung financial statements nila, the cost plus markup lang na 3%. Why? Kasi 3% lang yung gross profit niya. So sabi ko sa kanila, your financial statement is already against the contract that you signed. Why? Because you signed in the contract that there is a plus of 5%. E eh, bakit sa financial statement nyo, 3% lang? Sabi ko, you tell your accountant to amend. Sabi ko sa kanila. Kasi habang ang ano po natin, habang wala pang letter authority po yung BIR, pwede pa kayong mag-amend. No? As many times as you want. Kung palagi kang may mali, palagi kang may adjustment. Basta't wala ka pang letter authority for, for audit, pwede pang mag-amend. No? So, ang ginawa ko, I recommended them to uh, amend their financial statements to conform with the contracts, no? with, with the parent and the subsidiary. Sabi ng management, ayaw namin kasi masyadong mahal, maningil yung aming uh, accountant. Okay? Sabi ko, di, wala kayo. Yun na din yung gamitin ko, the available document. And ano yung available document? Yung contract nila, cost plus 5% markup. Ay yung kanilang presentation sa financial statement nila, cost plus 3% markup. So that's already breach of the contract. No? Eh, you you render the opinion based doon sa uh, documents presented sa iyo. So yun yun. Anyway, uh, bakit sila pumas pumasok pa rin sa... Uh, uh, ano yun, yung pumasa pa rin sila sa arm's length. Why? Because yung mga comparables nila mas mababa pa doon sa 3%. No? Kaya, kasi ang, ang role mo lang naman dyan is mag-compare ka eh. No? So, kung may mga comparables ka, mas mababa pa sa 3% yung kanilang gross profit rate, pasado siya. No? Arm's length siya. So, yun yung magiging recommendation mo. But, based doon sa contract, may valuation na talaga siya. Kasi yung contract is 5%. Tapos yung uh, ginawa nila 3% lang. Okay. So, participation by a parent of subsidiary in a defined benefit plan that shares risk between group entities is transaction between related parties. So, it should also be disclosed. Ano yun? Yung uh, benefit plan, no? Para sa mga employees. Uh, disclosures that related party transactions were made in terms equivalent to those that prevail in arms and transactions are made only in such terms if such terms can be substantiated. Yan nga yung purpose ng uh, BR Form 1709, no? Yung, yung unang, uh, require, yung unang uh, revenue regulations, yun yung RR19-2020, ano yung nakalagay doon? Lahat i-disclose mo, no? Sa, uh, at saka yung documentation, i-attach mo na during the filing. Buti na lang, in-amend noong 34-2020, ano yung amend niya? Yung documentation, itago mo lang. Yung um, form na lang na uh, 1709, yun yung i-submit mo during the uh, filing of the annual income tax return. no? But make sure that it is available pagdating na ng audit, no? Dah dahil base dun sa regulations within 30 days that the BAR or the commissioner demands for the presentation of those documents dapat na present nyo na at ano ang pinaka uh, maganda or advantage for those na meron ng transfer pricing analysis report kasi pwede ka namang mag-submit ng 1709 na wala ka pang uh, Transfer Pricing Analysis Report. But what is the advantage kung meron ka ng Transfer Pricing Analysis Report at gumawa ka ng 1709? Malinis na yung mailagay mo doon sa 1709. Samantalang, kung wala ka pang Transfer Pricing Analysis Report, eh malay mo magkaroon pala ng adjustment based on the Transfer Pricing Analysis. At least, kung nagpagawa ka na, na-adjust na, no? So, more or less, wala na magiging findings doon sa 1709 mo. No? So, yun yung magiging advantage. Okay. So, taposin na lang natin ito at saka mag-break tayo. The SEC rules for related parties, yun yung under uh, SRC Rule 68, no? Na ano yung nirequire niya? Uh, 
consolidated financial statements, no? Disclosure about subsidiaries, no? Not consolidated and 50% or less owned uh, persons. So, summarize the financial information shall be furnished in the notes to the financial statements, no? For its significant subsidiary, not consolidated, and for its 50% or less owned person, no? So, kasama yan, uh, i-disclose mo. Summarized financial information shall be furnished in the aggregate for subsidiaries not consolidated and 50% or less owned person. No? Not reported upon pursuant to AHRO if the aggregate either subsidiary not consolidated or 50% or less owned persons would not constitute a significant subsidiary. No? Okay. Uh, ito yung uh, company covered by part 2 of the rules na may significant foreign subsidiary of subsidiaries. No? So yung mga foreign subsidiaries, mga permanent establishment, shall submit to the commission is easy. Copies of the financial statements of such subsidiaries. It should be stamped received by the BAR or its authorized stamp. No? Okay. Uh, bago tayo magpunta sa the arms and principle, ito yung principle po ng transfer pricing na marami akong ipapakita sa inyo. No? So, before we go to the arms and principle, let's have a 15 minutes break. No? Pahinga lang po tayo at saka mag-charge ng battery natin. No? Hari. No? Uh, let's have a 15 minutes break po. And then yung inyong mga questions, if you have some questions that we will answer, pakilagay nyo na lang dyan sa uh, comment portion po na uh, ating uh, YouTube channel.
Okay. Ilan yung viewers? 45. Ah, nandiyan na? Tapos ah, na. Ano na? Live na? Live na. Okay. Sige. Um, good morning po again to our uh, participants, no? So this is our second session for today and we will uh, discuss about the arms length principle, no? So what is this arms length principle? Kanina we have discussed about the related parties. Ano ba yung related parties? Why very important? Because sabi ko nga sa inyo, kung walang related parties, walang transfer pricing. And then we discuss secondly, the element of control, no? So yung element of control which is uh, ano ba yung purpose? Why this, there is control? To obtain benefits. No? At ano yung benefits na yun? Yun yung uh, reduction in the payment of taxes. No? And then, uh, yung comparison. No? We, we also study about the active market. Ano ba yung active market? Because sabi nga natin, transfer pricing is economic taxation. That's why we study also the behavior at saka kung ano ba yung active market na sinasabi because ang sabi natin yung benchmark ng um, transactions commercial and financial transactions na related parties dapat yung uh, nandyan sa market no yung uh, uh, competitive forces in the market kasi kung may element of control hindi na nasusunod yung uh, kung ano ba yung, talaga yung totoong price no ng goods or product. Okay. So, let's now go to the arms length principle. Ano ba itong arms length principle which is the principle adopted by the transfer pricing advocates para uh, yun ang i-apply sa financial and commercial transactions of the related parties. No? So, pagka may related parties now, we define the related parties, meron na related parties, dapat they observe the arms length principle. Ito yung application o yung standard na dapat meron sila. No? So, ano yung internationally accepted principles of transfer pricing as provided in Article 9 of the Model OECD Tax Convention on, on Income and Capital? No? I have provided uh, here all the references that I have no, originally coming from the source. No? So, ito yun. Ito po, no? yung uh, Model Tax uh, Convention. No? on income and on capital sa OECD po to binili ko to mismo sa OECD in Paris, France and this cost me 40,000 pesos no uh, in-import ko siya so dumaan sa customs muntik pa hindi ma-release because ang one-time importation lang na walang permit is 10,000 eh ito 40,000 no? so tumagal pa to sa customs dahil hindi ma-release so ano nakalagay dyan the uh, Article 9 of the, OD, of the OECD Model Tax Convention. Okay. Sign ko sa inyo yung Article 9. So, ito po, ito yung Article 9 of the OECD Model Tax Convention, which is the basis of the arms and principle po ng uh, transfer pricing. So, ano pong sabi dito? Article 9, Associated Enterprises. Ano ibig sabihin ng Associated Enterprises? Related parties. Why Associated? Ibig sabihin, kakasama sila. Associates, di ba? No? So, may related parties. Okay. Ano sabi dito? Number one, where A, an enterprise of a contracting state participates directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of an enterprise of the other contracting state, or letter B, the same persons participates directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of an enterprise of a contracting state, and an enterprise of the other contracting state, and... In either case, conditions are made or imposed between the two enterprises in their commercial or financial relations which differ from those which would be made between independent enterprises. 
Ibig sabihin, yung relationship ng related parties, iba kaysa doon sa independent enterprises. So, anong mangyari? Then, any profits which would, but for those conditions have accrued to one of the enterprises, but by reason of those conditions have not so accrued, may be included in the profits of that enterprise and taxed accordingly. No? So, siya, yan po yung sinasabi ng... Uh, Article 9 of the model OECD Convention no, no, about associated enterprises. And this is the very powerful uh, declaration or statement of the arms length principle. Ito po yung uh, Article 9 of the model OECD Tax Convention. Okay. So, ano pa? The arms length principle requires that the dealings of the business activities of the controlled transactions should be comparable to the uncontrolled transactions. Kasi ano sabi niya? The commercial or financial transactions which differ from those which would be made between independent transactions. Pag nag-iba siya sa independent transactions, then the profits of that enterprise can be included doon sa hindi niya binigay na, binigyan ng profits, can be included in the profits of that enterprise untaxed accordingly. No? Okay, so yun po yung sabi ng uh, arms and principle. Ano pa? Yung ating mga uh, references po sa uh, arms and principle. No? So, in our references, halika nga, Hari, iabot mo kasi hindi ko na ma... Ano? Ito, ito muna, yung OECD Model Tax Convention uh, Transfer Pricing Guidelines. Isin yun? Pus na yan eh. No? If you want to go farther, no, dito explain well, ito yung, uh, ito po yung OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines natin na 2017, no? So, if you want to study more, ito yung ating guidelines na OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines 2017, no? So, you will learn a lot from here. Saka, ito pa. Dito pa. Ito yung ginagamit din, mostly na mga tax authorities in their, uh, Practical Manual on Transfer Pricing for Developing Countries, no? This is also the 2017 guidelines ng United Nations, no? For transfer pricing. This is a big help sa inyo kung talagang gusto nyo matuto ng uh, transfer pricing. Okay. Ang ina yan. And, lahat yan, ha? Kailangan ko yan. Saan pa siya, uh, hindi, hindi ito, benchmark to eh. No, treaties, tax treaties. Okay. Saan pa po makikita yung uh, arms length principle? On associated enterprises, also Article 9 of our model tax treaty. No, in this case, uh, tax treaty po natin doon sa Singapore. And then yung isa, na example ko lang sa inyo, yung tax treaty po natin sa Malaysia. But, but uh, the Philippines right now has tax treaties with 44 43 countries, no? So, ano yung nakalagay dito sa Article 9, no? So, Article 9 yan, Associated Enterprises. Article 9, Associated Enterprises. Ito yung uh, tax treaty natin. Ano yung nakalagay dito? Where an enterprise of a contracting state participates directly or indirectly in the management control or capital of an enterprise of the other contracting state, or the same persons participate directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of an enterprise of a contracting state and an enterprise of the other contracting state. And in either case, conditions are made or imposed between the two enterprises in their commercial or financial relations which differ from those which would be made between independent enterprises then any profits which would, but for those conditions have accrued to one of the enterprises, no? uh, because of those conditions, hindi napunta sa enterprise na dapat na doon yung profits. But by reason of those conditions have not so accrued, may be included in the profits of that enterprise and taxed accordingly. Yun yung pwede ka na mag-adjust at ibigay mo yung profits doon sa enterprise kung kaya saan talaga siya dapat, no? So, yun ang sinasabi ng ating tax treaties. That's why, in transfer pricing, you may consult also our tax treaties with other countries. Uh, uh, yung tax code na maliit at saka yung tax code ng US, no? 
Nasaan pa po yung mga pronouncement natin, the arms and principle? No? So, I will read you also the section 50 po ng ating, ito ha, National Internal Revenue Code natin, section 50. Yan din po yung other basis ng arms and principle. No? Section 50, allocation of income and deductions. In the case of two or more organizations, trades, or businesses, whether or not incorporated and whether or not organized in the Philippines, owned or controlled directly or indirectly by the same interest. The commissioner is authorized to distribute, tatlo yung pwedeng gamit ng uh, commissioner, ha? distribute a portion or allocate gross income or deductions between or among such organization, trade or business, if he determines that such distribution apportionment or allocation is necessary in order to prevent evasion of taxes or clearly to reflect the income of any such organizations, trades, or businesses. Iyan po yung powerful statement also of Section 50 of our National Internal Revenue Code. Saan pa po natin pwedeng makita yung uh, arm's length principle natin? Ha? Kasi sabi ng iba kasi, ay wala tayong legal basis dito sa Pilipinas. So ito na pinakita ko na lahat sa inyo ng legal basis locally and internationally. Same. Same din po yung sinasabi dito sa Internal Revenue Code of the United States, Volume 5, Section 482. Basahin ko rin po sa inyo. Kasi, ang dami pa rin hindi maniniwala sa transfer pricing, no? Ay, wala yan dito, wala. And for your information, our tax laws here are patterned with that of the United States. That, that's why yung mga jurisprudence ng U.S. is applicable in the Philippines. No? So, I read to you the Section 50 of our National Internal Revenue Code. I will read to you the Section 482 of the uh, U.S. No? This is the Internal Revenue Code of the United States, Volume 5, Section 482. No? Pakinggan nyo ha. Allocation of income and deductions among taxpayers. Yan po yung sabi dito. In any case of two or more organizations, trades or businesses, whether or not incorporated, whether or not organized in the United States, same na same po doon sa section 50 natin, and whether or not affiliated, owned or controlled directly or indirectly by the same interest, the secretary, sa atin, the commissioner, no? The secretary may distribute a portion or allocate. So, tatlo yung pwede niyang gawin, no? Distribute a portion, allocate. Ganon din doon sa section 50 natin. Gross income, deductions, credits, or allowances. Yung wala lang doon sa section 50 natin itong credits or allowances. No? Between or among such organizations, trades, or businesses, if he determines that such distribution, apportionment, or allocation is necessary in order to prevent evasion of taxes or clearly to reflect the income of any such organizations, trades, or businesses. No? So, yun yung sa atin. Kasi yung sa section 482, may dinugtong pa sila about intangibles. Ano yun? In the case of any transfer or license of intangible property within the meaning of the section 93683B, the income with respect to such transfer of license shall be commensurate with the income attributable to the intangible. So, ito yung na-revise nila noong 1986, no? So, ano yung pagka-transfer ng intangible, uh, commensurate with the income approach. Ito yung commensurate with the income attributable to the intangible. Ano yun? Yung valuation ng intangible na that will commensurate dun sa income na mag-generate niya. Kasi, marami yung valuation po na po pwede sa intangibles, no? That, that is a separate topic po sa transfer pricing. But for those of you who want to know more about transfer pricing, you cannot do away with the topic on intangibles. Why? Because there are so many disputes now in transfer pricing that reaches the court and the issues are about intangibles, especially valuation of intangibles, no? So, yun po yung mga references natin on the arms length principle, and hopefully meron na kayong idea. No? So if you want to expand further your knowledge ninyo in transfer pricing, they ca then you can always read all those uh, references that I mentioned to you a while ago.
Okay. So, for the principles of transfer pricing, which is ang sabi nga natin, uh, the principle of transfer pricing adapted the Armstrong principle. No? So, anong gagawin natin ngayon? We have to define transfer pricing. What are the benefits in adapting tra transfer pricing law? Ito yung economic forces that affect the market na ano ko na to sa inyo na uh, explain kanina, no? We have to describe the operations of the multinational corporations. Why? Because usually, we cannot do away with multinational corporations. Bakit? Sila na yung mga players, uh, economic players natin, eh, no? And usually, karamihan ng mga uh, gusto mag ng transfer pricing because they are somehow connected with the multinational corporations. And for your information, the multinational, multinational corporations are the architect of change. Why? Kasi sila talaga yung, yung uh, nangunguna sa mundo. Eh. They have the money, they have the business, they have the, the resources. No? Kaya sila nga yung architect of change in the world. Sila yung, uh, ayun na uso yung, their national financial reporting standards because of their needs, no? Because of their, their presence in different parts of the world, they need a report na isa lang para hindi sila mag-adjust, no? So, nagkaroon ng international financial reporting standards so that kahit saan ka sa mundo, isang language lang yung accounting nagkakaintindihan. So that pag gumawa silang consolidated financial statements, walang masyadong adjustment na gagawin. Okay, so, uh, objectives, know the principles in transfer pricing, which is the arms and principle, understand how related and unrelated parties deal with each other, and know the tools in avoiding double taxation. Kasi ang isang uh, purpose po natin din sa transfer pricing is to avoid double taxation. Why? Because double taxation is not... Um, helpful or not healthy to the economy or to a certain country. May, mamayang hapon, may ipapakita ako sa inyong video ng OECD. No? Very short lang. Bakit? Yung portion lang na ipakita ko sa inyo yung update sa uh, taxation. No? Para at least yung kung baga sa ano, yung mindset natin, ito na yung bago in our new economy, in, especially in our digitized world. No? digitalized na tayo ngayon so digitized na rin yung business no kasi ano na yung taxes ngayon taxes without physical presence no at ano na yung magiging uso natin hindi hindi, pa, hindi natin alam but there are 80 countries na na they are training already their tax officers without borders why tax officers without borders anong gagawin mo diyan sa mga online sellers mo anong gagawin mo diyan sa mga uh, mga services no na without borders, yung services mo na that caters around the world because of the digitized uh, facilities. No, anong gagawin mo dyan? No, so, ang examiner mo also, tax officers without borders. Kahit saan, pwede siya mag-examine. Okay? And uh, yung uh, uh, mga initiatives ng OECD to avoid the double taxation and also yung um, to have tax certainty kasi ang daming mga countries na nagrereklamo that they want to have tax certainties no yung ano yun uh, to give to their taxpayers also assurance na pagka nagbayad ka na ng ganitong tax hindi ka na papabayarin ulit kasi uncertain eh nagbayad ka na ng tax and then later on during the audit magbabayad ka ulit so ano yung cry ng mga uh, countries to have tax certainties and I uh, will show to you that video how this OECD uh, answers or uh, makes some initiatives in order to answer these needs. So, globalization. Bakit ba kasi may transfer pricing pa at very important? Because of globalization at now digitalization. Magmula sa globalization kasi parang ang hirap ng globalization without digitalization. Why? Kasi global ka na all over the world. Paano mo i-access lahat yan? No? Uh, transportation, pwede, pero napakahirap. Communication, yes. Uh, ano na ang ginawa? Digitalization. No? So, globalization is the process by which the whole world becomes a single market, which means that goods and services, capital and labor are traded on a worldwide basis. And information that the results of research flow readily between countries. So, yun yung nangyari noong 1960s. 
yun yung globalization. So, ano nangyari? Uh, goods and services also cross the borders. Nag-international din siya. So, anong ginagawa ng mga tax authorities natin? No? Bawa, yung taxable goods mo, taxable services mo, nandun na sa ibang country, nandun sa ibang countries, dito ginagawa yung services, dito nangyayari. So, paano mo yan i-tax? No? And it became more complicated now na digitalized na tayo. That's why, ipapakita ako sa inyo the move or the initiatives, how to answer all these uh, concerns na digitized economy. At meron na, na tayong tinatawag na mga cryptocurrency, di ba? Yung mga um, digitized currency, no? And they are also being taxed. Kasi bakit may income din na nangyayari dyan? No? Okay. So, the Philippine local market, the Philippines is one of the countries in Asia that were affected by globalization. Although, noong nag-globalize na, hindi pa tayo ready, no? The country is taking part in the process of globalization ever since the country has signed an agreement with World Trade Organization in 1995 lang, no? So, globalization is very effective in the Philippines. It has allowed major changes in the nation, like more labor, more Filipino and foreign companies emerged in the nation in order to help the country's developing economy. Kasi developing economy pa lang yung Philippines. That's why, sino yung mga pumasok dito? Yung mga business process outsourcing, yung mga MIPS, no? yung mga PESA, registered enterprises, na dito na sila nagpapagawa ng kanila materials because of the low labor uh, rates natin, and then export it back to their countries, no? So, yung mga pinakauna natin na, na pesa dito is the MEPS, no? Yung Mactan Export Processing Zone, yan yung sa Cebu. Sila yung mga nauna pa dyan. Bago pa nag-uso yung mga pesa registered enterprises all over the Philippines, nauna na yung MEPS sa Cebu, yung sa Mactan, no? Doon maraming ginagawa na mga relo, uh, yung mga um, uh, manufacturing companies, iba't ibang mga goods, no? or mga spare parts doon na ginagawa. Okay. Philippines is one of the developing countries rapidly dealing with globalization ever since the influence of the U.S. during the World War II, no? So, yung World War II, 1945, nag-peace time, umpisa yun, no? 1940, no? So, that was ilang years ago? 2021. Sa 40, 50, 70, mga 75 years ago, no? So, walking through the Philippine marketplace, one can see different products bearing international marks and brands. If you try to look at sa mga products natin, puro international, no? Kunti lang yung local. Okay. So, pero yung, yung products na yan are also manufactured in the Philippines by foreign parent companies who establish local subsidiaries. Yan naman yung ginagawa ng multinationals no, para hindi sila ma-heavily tax or uh, makakapasok sila sa isang bansa. They establish a local subsidiary pero it is owned by a foreign company. No? So, sino yung ini-employ nila? Uh, local employees are employed. Pero, sino yung may control? The management. That's why ano yung, yung pinaka-importante sa transfer pricing the element of control. No? So, you determine kung nasaan yung control. No? Ano yun? Exercise only by the parent company. Sila lang yung nag-exercise niyan. Okay. So, what is the operations of these multinational corporations? Uh, the enterprise or entity in several countries managed from one home country. No? Ang transnational corporation naman, different from multinational corporation, it does not identify itself with one national home. No? So, transnational siya. Iba-iba yung um, bansa. No? Kung nasaan siya, hindi niya na-identify. The traditional MNCs are national companies with foreign subsidiaries. Yung transnational uh, companies naman, loc location themselves in many countries by adapting local culture. So, sino ang mas um, powerful or in, uh, influential sa kanila? The transnational companies. Huh? Okay, so modern MNC is the architect of internationalization. Why? Kasi sila yung nag-introduce talaga ng internationalization because of their global presence no? in different countries. 
The National Accounting Standard has been adopted because of the need of the MNC. Yun ang sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. To prepare reports which can be understood in any part of the world. No? So, pag sinabi mong cash, means the same thing, cash in America, as in cash in Africa. No? So, you're, you're talking of the same cash. Ano ba yung components ng cash? Ano yung composition? Ano yung mga kasama? No? So, pareho na lang because of the international standards. And the Philippines adhere to that international standard. MNC brought resources and capital to the different parts of the world. No? So, alam nyo, kung, kung if you try to look talaga, laki ng tulong ng multinational corporations in the world. No? Bakit? Kasi sila yung may pera, sila yung uh, initiative nga ng change, no? sila yung nag-initiate, at saka sila yung nag-develop, na, nag-invest in research and development. Kaya tayo nakakapag-produce ng mga products na uh, magaganda, nakakatulong sa humanity because of their, their efforts. No? So, maganda yung kanilang uh, contribution. No? Ang hindi maganda kung hindi sila magbayad ng tax. No? Kasi because of their very sophisticated structure, pwede na dalhin at saan yung kanilang profit at doon pwede yung tax. No? So, because they are engaged in international trade, no? MNC brought resources and capital to the different parts of the world. Kaya hindi na concentrated lang yung mga resources. Kaya tingnan mo, no? Nakakatuwa. Sa Africa ngayon, di ba dati, ang, ang picture ng Africa sa atin, yung mga famine, yung mga gutom yung mga bata, gutom yung mga tao na mga kawawa. Ngayon, hindi na. Pati bata sa kanya, naka-cellphone na rin. Why? Because our big countries, just like China, US, uh, even Europe, invest so much in Africa. Nandun na pati yung mga facilities ng um, being uh, first-class digitized countries, nandun doon na sa Africa. So, anong nangyari doon? Lahat ng tao nakaka-enjoy, nagkakaroon ng trabaho. No? Kaya, para sa akin, maganda yung uh, contribution ng multinationals in the world. No? So, the advantage is that it brings employment to the local residents, improve their skills, and enjoy products with new technologies. Yan na. Kasi hindi lang, <clears throat> pag dinala mo na kasi yung employment sa isang bansa, of course, hindi mo naman sila employ without training. So, ano yung nangyayari? During the training, na-transfer na sa kanila yung technology, natututo sila. At ano pa? Sisweldohan sila, nagkakaroon sila ng income. So, they enjoy life. No? And ano pa? Of course, pati yung new technology which is being introduced, natututo din sila. So, ano yun? Uh, kakaroon na sila ng knowledge. Hindi, hindi kagaya nung walang presence yung multinational countries. Wala talagang alam no? yung mga tao at hindi na-enjoy yung facilities. So, multinational enterprises operate in the following ways. Paano sila nag-operate in a certain country? Through franchising. No? So, usong-uso talaga yung franchising. You pay a lump sum amount and then uh, during the franchising contracts, kung may sales ka, may percentage pa na yan ng sales. No? At saka may other uh, charges pa yan. Just like advertising, freebies, or whatever. No? So, pag sinabi mong franchising, hindi lang isa ang charges dyan. No? May lump sum yan. Saka may uh, monthly at saka may one time pa ng mga charges, no? And then the second, <clears throat> pwede din sila mag-operate as brands, no? Pag brands ka, they are considered as permanent establishment. Nandiyan din yan sa Article 5 nung um, tax treaties natin, how you treat this uh, permanent establishment and how they are being taxed, no? Pag brands ka, uh, required ka ngayon to have a brands profit remittances. No? May nakita ang mga multinationals every three months. May brands profit remittances sila. So, ibig sabihin, they are preparing an interim uh, financial reports, yung mga 3 months, 3 months, tapos makikita mo na yung uh, profit mo for that month, and then, papadala nila dun sa head office. Kasi every 3 months sila may brands profit remittance. Eh. That's why they are paying a 15% brands profit remittance tax. And then, they are also sometimes operating as subsidiaries, No? Pag sinabi mong subsidiaries, they are um, forming a corporation and then nag-i-invest sila on the stocks of the corporation. Okay. 
Oh, uh, another way of uh, establishing business presence in a certain country is through a joint venture. No? So, pwede rin. A multinational corporation establishes a company in foreign country in partnership with local firms. The multinational and foreign firms share the ownership and control of the business. Pero usually, it's always the um, multinational na uh, siya yung co-control ng business. No? Kasi usually, siya yung malaki ang investment. And number five, Thorn K projects. Ano to? The multinational corporation undertakes a project in foreign country. No? Constructs, operates, industrial plant by itself. Then provides training to the staff in the operation of plant. No? Yun yung mga example ng Thorn K projects. No? Okay, so the presence of corporations, MNC, doing business in the Philippines should be properly regulated so that proper and correct taxes could be collected from them and also for the Philippines to get a fair share of their tax payments. Kaya meron na tayong revenue regulations to dust 2013. Ito yung uh, transfer pricing guidelines no? in the Philippines uh, dated January 23, 2013. Ma anong corpus nito? Uh, to avoid double taxation and also para yung Pilipinas get its fair share in the uh, taxes, no? especially kung uh, it involves uh, cross-border or uh, may mga foreign uh, companies na na-involved. No? So, how much taxes will go to the Philippines? Okay. Ito po yung example ng multinational enterprises organizational structure. No? Very complicated. No? If you try to look at it, very complicated. Ano yan? Sinadya. No? So, um, ito yung si IP Hub. Ano yung IP Hub? Intellectual Property Hub. Bakit siya hub? Kasi, pinangalan sa kanya lahat ng intangibles. No? Ano yung intellectual property na to? can be your uh, the name no the logo the patent the the business structure or yung uh, mga trademarks no ng uh, company sa kanya ipinangalan no so sa kanya magbabayad ng royalties for the use of that uh, intangibles no so meron siyang uh, physical goods ito si contract manufacturer no si contract manufacturer nagpurchase siya ng materials kanino siya nagpurchase no dito sa Cairo materials suppliers no uh, and then nagma-manufacture siya sa as Loris uh, manufacturing and then meron siyang marketing hub no uh, ano ito marketing hub ito yung nagbebenta na ng kanyang mga goods no where in meron siyang local sales and then uh, 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 punta na sa customer no sa delivery ng customers meron siyang mga consignment na stocks no so from the marketing hub hindi na siya doon dadaan sa kay local sales kung sino man yun diretso na siya sa customer no so yun yung billing nila billing invoice from the marketing hub na to the customer in country uh, C. Sa ma in country C, ang customer, pero sa country U, C, marketing hub. And then, uh, sa country X naman, nandyan si manufacturing, uh, na low risk manufacturing siya, nandun sa kanya yung physical goods, and then, uh, papunta siya yan kay marketing hub yung goods, and then, i uh, tuloy na, diretso na ni marketing hub kay customer hindi na siya dadaan sa local sales. No? So, nasaan yung billing ngayon? Nandun ka ay marketing hub. Si local sales, halimbawa, si local sales dito is the Philippines. So, what happened to him? Walang sales. No? Bakit? Yung marketing hub ang nagkaroon. And usually, nasaan niya? Nasa Singapore. Nandun yung mga invoices. Pero yung customer dito sa Pilipinas. So, in that case, ano na lang yung magiging collection ng uh, uh, Pilipinas dito? Halimbawa, sa local sales is commission lang yung sa kanya. At then, yung commission niya is 3% lang ng sales. So, ano lang yung pwedeng makolekta dyan ng uh, 
ng uh, Pilipinas, yung tax lang doon sa 3% na commission. Eh, magkano lang yun? No? So, wala. And then, si Marketing Hub, meron pa siya sa countrywide ng contract research and development. And then, meron siyang IT services and then the procurement services. Ito naman yung hub sa countrywide. No? Yung hub, pwede yung parent company yan. No? Okay. So, dito, makikita nyo dito sa line yung kanyang mga uh, relationship. Kaya nga sabi natin, related parties. No? Kasi pag walang related parties, wala tayong pag-usapan na transfer pricing. Okay. So, makikita ninyo yung um, line. Yan yung uh, relationship nila. No? So, very complicated structure. Yan ang... <coughs> Example dito, and the presence is in country U and also in country Y, no? And also yung sa local sales sa country Z. No? Okay. So what is the meaning of transfer pricing? Transfer pricing is the area of tax law and economics that is concerned with ensuring that prices charged between associated enterprises for the transfer of goods and services and intangible property accord with the arms and principle. So, di ba pinag-aralan na natin kung uh, sino yung associated enterprises, sila yung related parties, no? Ano yung nakalagay dito? Transfer of goods. So, transfer of goods, yan ang commercial transaction, no? Transfer of goods, services, and intangible property. At ano, ano, ano dapat, it should be done in accordance with the arms and principle. So, how do you know that the, they are observing the arms and principle? Kaya nga, pupunta sa iyo, ma'am, ito yung gagaw ginagawa namin, ito yung gagawin namin. Anong gagawin namin? So, hindi mo naman sabi na, you conform with the arms and principle, pa paano? No? So, hindi, hindi ganun kadali mag-advise po. <clears throat> so, transfer prices are the prices at which services Tangible property and intangible property are traded across international borders between related parties. Kaya nga, uh, transfer prices siya eh. Kasi bakit the goods transfer from one entity to another? Especially kung halimbawa, manufactured goods yan. Minamanufacture siya sa uh, Europe. And then, uh, anong gagawin sa kanya? Isiship pa siya dito sa Pilipinas kung nandito yung... Uh, customer niya dito ang sales o kaya may mayroon siyang marketing uh, entity dito sa Pilipinas. No? So, they are traded across international borders between related parties. No? So, transfer pricing can also be defined as the price of goods or services transferred from one part of the organization to another part of the same organization. Kasi, uh, Kaya nga yung ginagawa natin ngayon na transfer pricing analysis, pinapakita talaga natin to yung uh, transfer of goods between department, between one entity to another. No? Sometimes corporation operating in more than one country can use transfer pricing to reduce or even eliminate tax liabilities. That's how powerful transfer pricing is. No? So in the side of the taxpayer, pwede niyang gamitin yung transfer pricing to eliminate the tax na wala na siyang babayaran. In the part naman of the uh, tax authorities, pwede rin niyang gamitin ang transfer pricing as a tool to conduct the transfer pricing audit and make an adjustment so that kung ano yung nawawala na profits declared by the entity in some other countries, ibabalik niya yun. No? So, both transfer pricing is very useful. No? So, both on the context of the taxpayer and also for the tax authority. Ilan yung ating viewers? Hari? 49. Okay. Sige. Good enough, no? Ilan yung nag-register sa atin? 130? 120. 49. So kung 40, one third. Okay. Good enough, no? Very good. Okay. So, uh, tax savings through transfer pricing. Yan na yan. Yung tax savings ng uh, entity 
using the transfer pricing scheme. No? So it, this is just an example. Ha? This is just an example, although sa totoong buhay nangyayari po ito. No? So country A, the tax rate is 18%. No? In country B, the tax rate is 45%. So ang layo, magkano diferensya? 25, 27%. No? So sobra, 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 doble. Okay. So, considering the tax rate in uh, country A is 18% and country B is 45%, so anong ginawa dito sa uh, company na to? Halimbawa, the bag is uh, 100 lang dito sa kay country A. No? Tapos binenta niya sa subsidiary niya sa country B ng 450. Magkano yung profit niya? 350. No? And then, si country B naman, Binenta niya na naman sa other subsidiary niya ng $750, no? So, $100 lang, tapos naging $450, and then naging $750. Okay. So, we analyze the profit kung saan at magkano yung binabayad ng tax, no? So, the gross profit, profit in uh, country A, no? Kasi binenta niya ng $450, yung puhunan niya is $100. So, magkano yung profit niya? $350. Si country B naman, magkano yung profit niya? 300. Why? Kasi binili niya ng 450, binenta niya ang 750. So, may tubo siya na uh, 750. No? So, what happened to the tax payable? So, in country A, 350 yung uh, profit niya. You multiply mo by 80%, which is the tax rate in country A. So, you have 63 as your tax due no? sa country A. How about in country B? Si country B, magkano yung kanyang tax rate? 45%, no? So, si country B, um, binili niya ng 450, yung bag, binenta niya 750, so may tubo siya na 300, no? So, the 300 multiplied by 45% is 135, no? Imagine, 63. Ta mas mataas pa yung uh, income ni country A, 350, as against 300 lang kay B. Pero napakalaki ng diferensya ng tax nila. Super malaki yung mabayaran ni country B because the rate in country B is 45% as against 80% lang kay country A. Okay. So, anong gagawin? A multinational company in country A produces bag for 100. No? So, they sell the bag to another part of the corporation in country B for 450 which is the transfer price, no? So, yung transfer price niya dito is 450 So, they are then retailed for 750 in country B. <clears throat> so, the gross profit to the corporation is 650 uh, 750 minus 100 no? Kasi bakit? Kasi related party lang sila, eh. Kaya magkano talaga yung gross profit na mapunta sa kanila? 600 kasi 100 lang naman yung cost nila to manufacture, no? And considering na yung country A to country B is uh, related party. No? Isa lang yung may-ari. Okay. So, magkano yung napunta sa may-ari? 600 na profit. Okay. <clears throat> the six, 650, no? hindi 600. Kasi 100, eh, binenta na 750. Okay. So, sa country A, magkano yung profit niya? Kasi binenta niya ng 450, 100, so 350. Sa country B naman, magkano yung profit niya? 350, 300, no? Kasi sa 450, binenta ng 750. No? So, assuming tax rates are 18% in country A and 45% in country B, the taxes paid by the corporations are 63, no? 350 times 18%, and in country A, um, 135, 300 times 45% in country B for a total liability of 198. No? The profit after tax is 452, 650 minus 198. No? So, kung i-combine mo sila, ang uh, profit niya after tax is 452. No? Okay. So, ganyan po ang uh, determination ng proper tax na binayaran doon sa transaction between related parties. No? Okay. 
So for the our, our 2 2013 na transfer pricing guidelines po natin, uh, these uh, guidelines apply also that arms and principle for domestic and cross-border transactions between associated enterprises or related parties. No? Asan po kinuha itong uh, RR2-2013? This is based largely on the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. No? Okay. And also the Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Ano yung binasa ko kanina sa inyo? The authority of the commissioner to, yung tatloy, pwede niyang gawin, distribute, allocate, and apportion. No? Ano yung i-distribute niya or allocate or apportion? The income or the deductions. And what is the reason? To prevent tax evasion. No? Article 9, ito na yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina on the uh, Philippine Tax Treaty Model, yung sa Malaysia at sa Singapore. So, the commercial or financial relations between two associated enterprises differ from those made between independent enterprises may be included in the profits of the enterprise and taxed accordingly. No? So, may be included in the profits of the enterprise and taxed accordingly. Okay. So, what are the five comparability factors? No, Although, Saan ba natin i-discuss yan? Mamayang hapon pa dapat, di ba? Ah, pwede na rin. 77 tayo. Okay, so pwede na ngayon yung comparability factors. Kasi mamayang hapon, we will discuss the comparability analysis and adjustment and then followed by the transfer pricing methods. Actually, yung transfer pricing methods medyo mahaba yan kasi good for one day po yan because sa dami nang dapat i-discuss. No? Okay. So, this is the Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code and uh, ito yung uh, Article 9 of the Associated Enterprises of the Philippine Tax Treaty Model. No? Uh, commercial or financial relations between two associated enterprises, so it defines, and also uh, it differs from those made between independent enterprises, so meaning in the arm's length may be included in the profits of the enterprise and taxed accordingly. No? So, kahit hindi mo siya, alibawa, yung, yung income supposed to be here in the Philippines is uh, 100. Tapos, hindi mo binigay sa kanya kasi doon ka nagbayad lahat sa Singapore. No? So, ano dapat? May be included in the profits of the Philippines, yung 100. No? So, what are the five comparability factors which are very, very important in the study of transfer pricing? No? So, we have the uh, nature or characteristic of the goods or services. We have the functions, assets, and risk. We have the economic conditions. We have the business strategy and the contractual terms. No? So, actually, itong five comparability factors, mahaba din po yung uh, discussions dito. But uh, since very limited lang po yung time natin, then you can always have these uh, readings on the five comparability factors. Because the five comparability factors, when you do the transfer pricing analysis, it should also be uh, properly or well explained. No? Starting with the nature or characteristic of goods or services, the functions, assets, and risks, the economic conditions, business strategies, and the contractual terms. And uh, in the afternoon, we will discuss also a lot about the five transfer pricing methods. No? So we have the comparable and controlled price method, the resale price method, the cost plus method, transactional net margin method, and the profit split method. Although, if you try to look at the United Nations manual, 
meron pa siyang tinatawag na sixth approach, no? Which was also adapted by the uh, Ramo 1-2019, which is our uh, transfer pricing audit uh, guidelines. No? <coughs> Excuse me. Ilan niyo ang ating viewers? Ha? Okay. Masyado tayong mabilis, no? So, but uh, please augment it by reading our uh, presentation. No? Oh, ma-attend din ako ng mga webinar. Hindi sila nagbibigay ng ano nila, ha? Di ba, Hari? dami hindi nagbibigay ng mga uh, materials nila. Pero ako, binibigay ko sa inyo, no? It's up to you to read. Sa bagay, ako hindi ako nagdalamot kasi ang dami yung binibigay, hindi naman binabasa. No? And then, sa iyo pa rin tanong ng tanong, okay din yun kasi binibigyan ako ng client. So, I welcome that. Pero mas gusto ko, matuto kayo para kayo na rin yung tatanungin, No? Saka sometimes, mas malawak pa yung ano nyo, exposure nyo kaysa sa akin. So, mas parunong pa kayo. That's why I try to read the materials I have shown to you. You can download it sa internet. No? <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, piyaw natin dito, no? Yung documentation under the 2017 OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines, which I mentioned you all, already a while ago. <coughs> why? Kasi... Yung um, um, 1709 natin na form o oh, doon sa una sa 19 na 2020, ni-require nga yun kaagad-agad i-attach mo na yung documentation. No? At least, <clears throat> nung binago siya sa 34 na 2020, hindi mo na kasama na i-submit yung uh, attachment, no? yung documentation. Okay. So, what are the uh, documentation required under the 2017 OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines? We have our master file, we have our local file, and we have our country-by-country -country reporting. You know? Okay. And we have to consider also, pagka gumagawa tayo ng mga analysis natin, uh, we have to consider also the Ramo 1 2019, the Transfer Pricing Audit Guidelines, no? Kaya nga sa paggawa ko na ngayon ng comparables and then the selection and uh, rejection of comparables, I already followed the uh, guidelines set forth in Ramo 1 2019, no? Uh, ano yun? Sa ano nga yung Ramo ko, Hari, abot mo nga. Kasi ipakita ko sa inyo kung ano yung yung guidelines nung Ramo on the uh, rejection Excuse that. dito no? So ito yung um, revenue audit memorandum order number 1 as 2019 no So if you try to look at that Ito yung <coughs> criteria niya on the candidate comparable, no? Ito yun. So, anong uh, pinoprovide dito na Ramo 1 2019 sa atin? The uh, framework and guide for transfer pricing examinations. So, when we make our transfer pricing analysis, we have to bear in mind that later on we will be examined. 
So under Gagoynathan, since we already have the framework, then make your st study such that you consider already the framework that you are compliant with the provisions of the guidelines. No? So applicable and controlled transactions where at least one party is accessible or chargeable to tax in the Philippines. Also, permanent establishment treated as separate and distinct enterprise from its head office for tax purposes. Ano po itong mga permanent establishments? These are what we call as or considered as brands. No? <clears throat> Anong provision ng permanent establishment in uh, the uh, uh, OECD Model Tax Convention? Article 5. No? And also Article 5 din po sa ating mga tax treaty, tra uh, tax treaty model. Okay, so this uh, Ramo 1-2019 provides step-by-step -step guide to revenue officers on how to conduct a transfer pricing audit. No? So they also specify required information to be submitted by taxpayer in report form. Kaya nga, kung guide ito ng uh, revenue officers, guide din siya ng taxpayer. Why? Kasi yun lang ang kagandahan ngayon sa mga uh, regulations na lumalabas, very specific na sila such that guided na rin both the taxpayers and the examiners. So, all we have to do is, pag gumagawa tayo ng transfer pricing analysis, see to it that we visit the provision of the guidelines. No? Provide sample letter notices, no? statement letter, and minutes of provision of information on taxpayer in respect to affiliated transactions. Affiliated meaning related transactions, no? Kasi by affiliates. Okay. So, itong comparability analysis natin, no? so, mamaya, dapat mamaya hapon pa to, eh. But, uh, since tapos na tayo dun sa iba nating topic, no? Tuloy na lang natin to. And then, uh, mamayang hapon na tayo doon sa transfer pricing methods, no? Okay. And then, pag natapos natin yun, we proceed with our question and answers, no? So that, uh, may, ano kayo, may idea na, no? But balikan natin itong guidelines po ng uh, 1 as 2019, no? Before we, uh, thoroughly discuss the comparability analysis. Ano yung nandito sa uh, Ramo 1, 2019 na gusto kong emphasize po sa inyo, no? This is the general review, no? General review of the uh, criteria to reject candidate comparable among other things, no? So, sabi nga natin, in the uh, arms length principle adapted by the transfer pricing is that we have to compare the transactions of the independent party with that of the related parties. Why? Kasi sabi natin, gusto nating makita yung totoong transactions between related parties. That's why yung benchmark natin or yung uh, kanino natin siya i-compare sa independent party because sabi nga kanina doon sa first topic natin, the uh, true transaction is that of the independent party transactions because it is not influenced by control uh, or um, dictated yung kanyang uh, transactions, no? So, ano yung true transactions? The independent party transactions because it is influenced only by economic forces in the market and at ano po yung uh, pinakita natin sa inyo na economic forces of the market, yun yung law of supply and demand, no? So, walang element of control ng independent uh, enterprises. That's why, ang sabi ng arms length principle, dapat kung ano yung prevailing, ano yung ginagawa ng independent parties, ganun din ang related parties. No? So, halimbawa, since controlled siya, yung kanyang um, um, goods or services between related parties, ganito lang niya binalyo. Pero, what is uh, really the value of the uh, goods or services in the independent market? Ito. So, for tax purposes, i-adjust mo yun. No? Karoon ka ngayon ng adjustment. Ano yung adjustment mo? Doon ka sa true 
price no so kahit na dineclare niya yan na 1 peso kung pagdating doon sa independent enterprise is 50 pala yan so yun ang gagamitin yung 50 for tax purposes no so magkaroon ng adjustment and then that entity under audit will pay an additional uh, deficiency taxes no? okay so going back to the criteria since sabi natin magkaroon tayo ng comparable so how are we going to compare and how are we going to choose for those companies na dapat natin i-compare doon sa ating related parties no okay so this uh, general review dapat meron muna tayong general review of the comparables sino yung comparables ito yung mga independent parties na i-compare natin doon sa related parties no so the purpose of the general review is to select companies that have data or information available to further testing and those that meet basic comparability requirements such as independence, product, and business activity similarities. No? So, sino yung i-compare mo? Yung similar. Hindi, hindi mo i-compare yung hindi sila pareho. No? Because those are incomparable. So how how do we um, review? No, we have the rejection criteria, and we have the description and the number of companies remaining after applying the uh, criterion. So ito po yung uh, criteria, no? So for the rejection criteria, uh, dapat active, no? Active yung uh, company na pinili mo as your comparables. Sino po ba itong comparables? Ito yung mga independent parties that you compare to that of related parties. No? Okay. So, ano yung uh, reason or yung description? Uh, reject companies that are no longer active or are dormant since they do not have economic activity. So, hindi mo pwedeng gawin, gawin na comparables or i-compare mo doon sa uh, related parties no yung mga companies na wala naman silang operation during the year unang-una wala kang data ano yung anong information yung i uh, compare mo and then we have the uh, corporate structure no sabi ng guidelines reject companies that are not listed as a stock corporation no uh, the company's legal form is either a limited or general uh, partnership no and then uh, the next criteria is available information because you cannot compare with those companies na wala na may information so available information reject companies that do not have financial information for at least two of the three years of the tested period no so reject companies that do not have sufficient information based on internet research no so pagkakulang-kulang yung information ng uh, independent parties na kailangan mong gamitin para makapag-compare ka doon sa related parties na hawak mo then uh, dapat sufficient or available yung information dahil pag hindi that would be reason that you reject that as your comparable no? and then product and business activity Okay. So, review the main uh, business or entity of the companies and the product that they deal with. Okay. And then next, we have the independence. So, number one, or the most important criteria when we choose our comparables is that dapat independence siya. No? So, independence, reject companies that have the following no? so letter a companies which are owned by another by more than 25 percent of its total shareholdings no? so pagka yung um, companies na napili mo own siya ng uh, more than 25 percent pwede mo na rin siyang i-reject no also, companies which have related party transactions that are more than 20% of the relevant threshold, no? So, 50, 20% siya.
Okay. Pero tingnan mo sa RR uh, 34 this 2020, no? May matrix hold doon. Okay. Uh, consecutive losses. Ito naman yung reason mo for rejection, yung consecutive losses niya. Reject companies that are not uh, comparable due to the volatility of the profitability as evidence. or shown by uh, consecutive years, no? Okay. Other rejection criteria. Reject companies that declared affidavit of non-operation and discontinued commercial operations, no? Newly registered uh, companies, companies that have no business description or have insufficient data. So, hindi mo talaga siya um, isama pagkakulang yung data or insufficient yung data. And then you are going to review also the financial no, information of the remaining companies no, in uh, place under further scrutiny to ensure the companies perform the same far or functions, assets, and risk. No? Okay. So, the rejection criteria is the level of revenue. No, yung level of revenue ng uh, company. So, reject companies whose revenue level exceed 10 times higher or lower than the tested revenue level. No? So, indicating the company's scale of operations may be different from the uh, tested party. And also, the level of research and development, magkano lang siya dapat? Uh, reject companies whose ratio of research and development expenses to sales exceed 3%. Bakit? Pag nag-exceed na sa 3%, dapat capitalize mo na yan, no? Kasi yung um, research and development, sometimes they are, very, uh, they are being uh, undertaken by the company in order to uh, develop a new product, no? So, pagka uh, the research and development is used to develop a new product, hindi mo yan pwede na i-outright expense mo sa operation mo. Why? You have to capitalize that for the cost of the production of that new product. No? So, hindi pwede yan na uh, operating expenses. Kaya nga, ang in dito is only 3% of your total sales. Kasi ang ibig sabihin, if it exceeded 3% of your total sales, then meron ka ng project na ginagawa. That should not be expense, but capitalized. No? And then we have the uh, level of intangible assets to total assets. No? So reject companies whose ratio of intangible assets to total assets exceed 3%. So depende siguro, pag ang comparable mo naman, mataas yung intangible assets niya, then yun ang hanapin mo rin na comparables, no? not right away na i-reject mo. Pero pag ang company na under uh, audit mo is uh, walang intangible, then i-reject mo yung uh, company na comparables mo na may intangibles na malaki. No? So this is the uh, Revenue Audit Memorandum Order 1-2019. No? So, sa, sa mga gagawa na dyan, ng inyong mga transfer pricing analysis report, take note na uh, have this as your reference, no? Especially pagka uh, naghanap na kayo ng comparables. Because, ano ba yung unan yung gawin pag gumagawa na kayo ng analysis? Siyempre, ang unan nyo talagang hanapin are the comparables and the, the functions, no? Kaya ito nga yung pag-usapan natin, yung comparability analysis. Why? Kasi dito na kayo maghahanap ng uh, comparables nyo. Kasi paano kayo mag-compare kung wala kayong companies na i-compare nyo doon sa uh, company under study. No? Okay. So, comparability analysis, we have the tested party. No? Pero dito sa tested party, hindi naman lahat kailan ng tested party. No? We have the five transfer pricing methods mentioned to you a while ago under the OECD uh, transfer pricing guidelines because sa uh, uh, United Nations manual meron pa silang pang 6 no pero dito 5 lang no so under the uh, OECD transfer pricing guidance natin 
meron tayong five comparability, uh, five methods, no? Transfer pricing methods. We have the comparable and controlled price method. We compare the price. We have the uh, cost plus method, the resale price method, transactional net margin method, and the profit split method na meron na siyang guidance noong June 2018, yung profit split, ha? Kasi titinan doon kung what are the profits that you are going to split. Dito naman sa, sa comparability analysis natin na maghanap tayo ng tested party, yung comparable and control price method, walang tested party yan. At saka yung profit split, no? Walang tested party yan. Sino na lang yung may tested party? Yung cost loss method at saka yung um, resale price method and the transactional net margin method. Why? Kasi itong tested party, ito yung uh, gagamitin mo um, the less complex na uh, ano siya, yung kanyang uh, functions, no? Siya yung gagamitin mo kung tama ba yung uh, price na sinacharge sa kanya. Kasi yung iba, ano ba, manufacturer, complex yun kasi ang dami mga i-consider. Pero yung tested party sa resale price, siya yung uh, distributor. Very simple lang yung kanyang uh, activity or functions, no? So, sa comparability analysis natin, we have to determine the tested party. And then, we have to determine also ano yung profit indicator, no? So, ito mga profit indicators, ito yung ratios, no? Kaya nga, sabi ko na sa inyo, hindi madali yung paggawa ng transfer pricing analysis report because sa transfer pricing team, no, marami kayo dyan, hindi isang tao lang, no? You have your accountant, you have your lawyer, you have your statistician, you have your... Uh, industry expert no you uh, ano pa economist no kasi hindi hindi lahat yan uh, pare-pareho yung uh, knowledge no so lahat yan kailangan sa transfer pricing study no so ano yung silbi nitong profit indicator um alam niyo itong profit indicator usually ito yung naka-question sa court no kasi bakit Bakit yan ang ginamit mo na profit, uh, profit indicator? Why? So, you have to uh, explain. No? So, ano, ano yung mga ratios na ginagamit as profit indicator natin? Ito yung gross profit, ito yung uh, net profit, o yung iba, yung earnings before income tax. No? O kaya yung return on assets, return on capital. No? Yung iba, very ratio. No? Ano yung very ratio? Yun yung gross... Uh, profit divided by uh, operating expenses. No? And then we have the uh, sources of information for potential comparables. So when you are doing transfer pricing analysis, ito yung mahal. No? Kaya ang ginagawa ko ngayon sa uh, ginagawa ko ng mga study for the information no? na kailangan. Diba, you buy in the database. No? Kasi kung wala kang information na hawak, that's why if you intend to do a transfer pricing analysis and you offer that as your services, mag-start start ka na na mag-collecta ng mga uh, information, no? Economic information about the industry, about the different industries. Kasi hindi mo alam kung sino yung lalapit sa inyo na magpapagawa ng transfer pricing analysis, no? So, you have to... Uh, Look for the sources of information for potential comparables. Ano yun? So, if, if you are uh, having a study on a certain company engaged in a certain industry, then yung mga industry players in that particular industry, yun ang gagamitin mo, potential comparables. Why? Because when you compare, dapat pare-pareho sila ng functions. So, sino ang una-una niyang mga competitor? Yung, um, yung comparables niya, yung mga competitors niya, in the industry, no? So, hindi ka nalalayo. And then, we have the arm's length range, no? Kasi, uh, halimbawa, ang kinumpare mo is gross profit, no? So, yung gross, gross profit, walang namang actual yan out of the uh, 30 companies, halimbawa, nagre-range yung profit niya from uh, zero or from the negative up to 43%, no? So, saan ba yung acceptable range during the... Um, pag ginawan mo siya ng chart, no? So, from from 0 to uh, 43% halibawa. So, asaan yung 
uh, acceptable range. No? Sabi ng OECD, the acceptable range is between 25% to 75%. So, kung yung range ng uh, profit, no? yung gross profit halimbawa ng uh, company mo is 0 to 43%. So, saan yung 25% dyan at saka yung uh, 75%. So, titingnan mo dyan, gagawa ka ng chart. And pagpasok dyan yung gross profit nung uh, client mo under study, then pasado siya. No? Ibig sabihin, arm's length. You can conclude that the uh, study is arm's length. No? Okay. So, for, for comparability analysis, usually the objectives there is to discover the sources for potential comparables. No? Uh, so, ano yung mga sources ng potential comparables? You have to know also the different factors in determining the comparability of transactions. Kaya nga, pag-aralan natin mamaya yung mga uh, comparability factors which are very important. Not sabi ng OECD nga, you have to memorize those, no? So, describe the ratios used as profit level indicator. Ano ba yung mga uh, ratios ng profit level indicator? And how you, are you going to apply that kung nandyan na yung comparables mo at nandyan na yung company mo? No? So, know the process in comparability analysis. How you are going to compare. Why? Because, sabi nga ng OECD, the heart of transfer pricing is comparability. No? So, comparability talaga. Bakit? Why? Because the, the principle of the uh, transfer pricing is the arms and principle and it states there that you are going to compare the transactions of the related parties with that of the independent parties. So, kung wala kang uh, comparison na ginawa, eh, wala kang study na ginawa, no? So, so you cannot show proof na arms length ka yung transactions kasi hindi ka nag-compare, no? But in some cases, alam nyo, just like the com, com profit split method. In that case, wala kang makompare. Eh. Why? Halimbawa, the industry is very unique. And uh, the company operation is highly integrated. No? And then, iba-iba yung contributions ng players. No? Halimbawa, yung mga associated enterprises, very highly integrated yung kanilang operation. Iba-iba yung kanilang contributions. So, anong gagawin mo? Profit split. That's why... Uh, meron tayong June 2018 na guidance on uh, how to use, how to select the uh, profit split method as the mo, uh, most appropriate method in the circumstances. No? So, anong tawag doon, anong requirement? Most appropriate method in the circumstances. Ikaw yung mabili. But if you try to look at our guidance naman sa RR 2-2013, no? Kasi meron na yung transfer pricing guidance. Anong nakalagay doon when we uh, make our transfer pricing study? We have to make use also of the uh, different uh, transfer pricing methods at ano yung gagawin ng uh, analyst. Apply all the methods and then recommend the best methods. So, sa OECD, ang sinasabi niya, determine the most appropriate methods Sa RR2-2013 naman, na yun yung guidance ng transfer pricing natin dito sa Pilipinas, ang sinasabi naman niya, best method rule. No? So, best method rule, apply all the methods and then recommend the best method. No? So, sinong susundin natin? Siyempre, yung RR2-2013 kasi nandyan na. That's why if you are uh, making a transfer pricing analysis report, dapat Katabi nyo yung RR2-2013, RAMO-1-2019, no? at saka yung uh, RR-34-2020. No? And of course, the OECD and also the... Ang kagandahan lang kasi pagka may, may reference na tayo sa US, no? na mga uh, cases at saka mga regulations nila kasi applicable yung, yung US jurisprudence dito sa atin. No? So, you, we can make use also of, their, uh, of the US. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ano na eh? Uh, 12 o'clock na, no? So, 
we, we will discuss thoroughly the comparability analysis this afternoon. Uh, let's have a break of uh, one hour. Uh, let's be, go back ng one o'clock. No? So, ano yung na-discuss natin kanina umaga? We discuss about the related parties. No? Sino ba yung related parties at kailan related yung mga parties? No? And then we also discuss the element of control. And then uh, yung comparability analysis uh, this afternoon at saka yung uh, yun nga, yung papiyaw natin yung mga uh, uh, Ramo 1 2019 and the guidance paggawa ng transfer pricing analysis report. Why? Bakit natin ito pinag-aaralan? Because that is the ultimate uh, result or application of the knowledge that we have in transfer pricing. Hindi natin pwedeng hindi aralin yung basic. Otherwise, kung pupunta na lang tayo doon sa uh, gagawa na lang tayo ng transfer pricing analysis report, then our analysis report will not answer the uh, objectives or the purpose na uh, bakit siya ginawa. Kaya para siya uh, effective, dapat we learn kung ano yung mga guidance no, na binibigay sa atin or existing na so that compliant na doon yung magawa natin na transfer pricing analysis report. Otherwise, maliligaw yung report natin. Gumagawa tayo ng report na hindi naman uh, ayon doon sa uh, mga regulations na nang existing. No? So, pagdating na ng transfer pricing audit, ano lang ginawa mo? Iba na makahanapin ng examiner. So, anong gagawin natin ngayon? Let us be guided by, by the existing regulation so that hindi na rin mahirapan yung client natin during the transfer pricing audit. And doon no, no, na lahat kasi nagawa na natin during the uh, analysis. No? So, with that, I would like to say uh, thank you, and then uh, let's be back at 1 o'clock.
Hello, so good afternoon po. Uh, isa shoutout ko po ulit yung mga nag-attendance po ngayong uh, hapon. So, ang nag-attendance pa lang po ngayong hapon is si uh, Ma'am Jennifer uh, Lumbre Acebuche. And then, si Ma'am Charlene Jem Mamaklay Baktad. Tsaka si uh, Feches Ramada Cabarubias. Uh, Grace Grace Arroyo Cadiz. Angelica Grace Arroyo Cadiz. Uh, Nemuel Umapoy Calda. Tsaka po si uh, Zaira F. Ah, sorry. Si ano pala? Si Trisha Dizon Kama Kamara. Tsaka si Ma'am Marilyn Ceredon. Ma'am Marilyn Cidro. And then, shoutout din po kay Ma'am Maria Meiji S. De Los Reyes. Tsaka po kay Junjun Batad Doinog. So, ngayong hapon, uh, present din po si Josel Hikap Guantero. Tsaka si Maria Lizel Samson Lustre. And good afternoon po sa inyo, uh, Nicole June Vizcaino Pagdanganan. Tsaka po si Jeffrey Salceda. Uh, present din po ngayong hapon si Sir Michael Angelo Espiritu Santos. So, good afternoon din po sa inyo, Sir Antonio Shotchi Jr. So, present din po ngayong hapon si Sir Ephraim Dagdag Tenorio. So, yun pa lang po yung nasi-check. So, tingnan natin kung dito, ano yung humabol dito. Si Ma'am Rose Ann Monserrat. Good afternoon po, pati si uh, Ma'am Rizalina Lau. And Ma'am Loida Z. Lalong Isip. Uh, good afternoon din po, ah, uh, Ma'am Freda Amayag And then present din po at nag-attendance si Ma'am Desiree Hernandez And andito rin po si Jonella Jean Ado And shoutout din po uh, Sir Renzo Pasiones Reyes And nag-attendance din po si Ma'am Kijami Ael Ballena Uh, present din po si Ma'am Julian Principe. And then si Ma'am Hulaiza, Hulaiza M. Ibay. So, yung mga nabanggit ko po yung palang po yung nag-attendance ngayong hapon. So, yung mga present po, hindi pa po nag-attendance. I-type lang po dito sa uh, chat box. Para po ma-include kayo sa attendance. Kasi no complete attendance, no e-certificate po. So, yun lang po. Chat nyo na lang po dito yung mga hindi pa nag uh, hindi pa nag-attend doon. So, Mabol sa inyo, sir. Good afternoon sa inyo, sir. Jire. So, check natin dito yung attendance na. Ayan. Present din po si ma'am Nemesis T. Rubio tsaka si ma'am Maverick Santa Ana. So, yun lang po. Check na lang po namin dito sa ano. Yung mga hindi pa po nag-attendance, i-chat nyo na lang po. Okay, so thank you, Hari. And uh, let's proceed with our discussion, no? Okay, so let's continue with our uh, comparability analysis discussion, no? Because ang sabi nga natin, uh, we want to know transfer pricing and comparability is the heart of transfer pricing. So, walang transfer pricing kung walang comparability.
Those transfer pricing. Okay, so let's continue with our uh, comparability analysis discussion. No? Because ang sabi nga natin, because transaction is and comparability is the heart of transfer pricing. So, walang transfer pricing kung walang comparability. Transfer parties. Well, kasi kung hindi sila similar or equal, then we have to adjust. Okay. So, comparability analysis is defined by businessdictionary.com as the side-by-side -side examination or of two or more alternatives. No? So, ano yung side-by-side -side examination meaning? Compare mo. Yung alternatives can be processes, can be products, can be qualification, sets of data, can be systems and others to determine if they have common ground, similar ba sila? Equivalence or similarities. Bakit natin hinahanap na similar sila? Kasi <clears throat> ang true transaction is that of the independent transaction. So, hahanapin natin na similar sila yung independent transactions at saka yung related party transactions para ma-apply natin yung principles of uh, transfer pricing which is the arm's length principle. No? Transfer pricing analysis searches on for commonalities or similarities. So, hahanapin mo yung pareho sila, similarities or commonalities ng controlled and independent transaction to determine the arm's length price, which is the price of goods or service in the open market. So, hahanapin mo yung similarities or commonalities. So, when you compare, dapat ang i-compare mo, pareho din, no? So, halimbawa, um, uh, manufacturer ng mga uh, extractive industries or mineral products, dapat ay compare mo siya, same industry, manufacturer din ng mineral products. Hindi mo pwedeng i-compare yung manufacturing ng mineral products with that of the general merchandise. Kaya transportation, no? kaya magkaiba sila ng uh, industry, so hindi mo sila ma-compare, ma no? Okay. May naaamoy ako. Anong masakit sa ilong? Naglalagay ka? Kate? Naglalagay ka ng mga alcohol, perfume? Ikaw, hari? Pakibukas mo. Sa ulo? Pag uh, matanda na, sensitive na sa uh, mga amoy, no? Okay. Eh, di na ako makapasok sa mga buildings, no? Di na ako makaakyat sa BR. Why? Because pagpasok mo pala sa BR, puro na alcohol, sprayhan ka ng ganun. Hihimatayin ako. Kaya, wala. Since lockdown, dito lang. Kaya tuloy, tuloy-tuloy ang YouTube. No, yun, yun yung nagiging uh, result. Kasi hindi na makalabas. Pupunta ako sa BR hanggang entrance lang ako. Pagpasok ko, puro amoy. Atras na, balik na. Para akong hihimatayin sa mga amoy. No? Okay. So, let's go back to our discussion. No? The price of good or service in the open market is the price that the seller is willing to sell. As what we have discussed kanina, na yung uh, correct price is that of the open market no or active market no there is no element of control or undue influence ng uh, seller or the buyer 
Walang pinilit lang sila, controlled sila, or dictated sila, or artificial price. Walang ganon ang uh, market. Pero sa controlled transaction, there is such thing as controlled price, there is such thing as artificial price management. No? Kaya ang hinahanap natin sa comparability analysis is the true price. No? Kaya nga ang mga transfer pricing cases, if ever they reaches the court, ano din yung pinapatunayan nila doon sa court? The true price of the product. No? So, when we uh, compare, we use comparables. Ano yung comparables? Sila yung i-compare natin sa related party. Ito yung mga independent parties that we choose para i-compare natin sa related parties. No? Kasi gusto nating makita we want to discover the real price or the true price in the transaction. No? So, we use comparables. We have to compare. At sino yung pipiliin natin? The independent parties. That's why doon sa guidelines kanina na sinabi ko sa inyo under Ramo Wadas 2019, there is already that rejection ng mga comparables. Paano natin sila i-reject? Uh, pagka walang independence, no? Hindi sila independent parties. Meron percentin, certain percentage ng ownership. Sino yung mga uh, i-reject natin? Yung 50% or more ownership, no? Kasi ang ibig sabihin diyan, control talaga siya ng uh, parent company niya kasi 50% owned siya. No? And then we have also our um Yung 20% ng ownership din, no? Kasi significant influence na yan. Okay. So, we have guidelines in Ramon 1, 2019 for the selection of the rejection of the comparables. No, tingnan ninyo yan. So, we have internal and external comparables. These are the two kinds of comparables na pwede natin gamitin, no? Isang internal, isang external. Sino itong mga internal at sino itong external comparables, no? Meron akong nakausap, nagpa, ano sila sa akin dati, yung consultancy, no? Sa uh, accounting firm. Ito yung nakausap ko doon yung lawyer nila. Alam niyo, kinakwestiyon niya ako. Sabi niya, uh, why, why do you consider daw yung, kasi doon sa uh, ginawa namin na organizational chart ng distributor ng client, nilagay ko doon internal comparable no internal comparable yung kanilang mga same na distributor within the uh, group no sabi niya bakit in, bakit tatawain mo yan na internal comparable e, ibang company yan <laughs> kasi niya naiintindihan that's why sabi ko i i don't want to deal with people na walang basic knowledge sa transfer pricing kasi ang tinitingnan niya yung meaning ng internal at saka external but in the context of transfer pricing iba no so ano ba ang internal at saka ang external comparable no so a comparable and controlled transaction is a transaction between two independent parties pag sinabi mo na uh, uncontrolled transaction siya between two independent parties no independent parties are parehong independent no that is comparable to the control transaction under examination. Pareho silang independent parties. No? So, pagka between one party to the control transaction and an independent, no? isang party sa control transaction at saka yung independent, ang tawag doon internal comparable. No? So, yung between two independent enterprises naman, wala talagang uh, related parties, yun ang tinatawag natin na external comparables. So, pag sinabi mo internal comparable, itong si related party, meron siyang transaction with the unrelated parties. Ang tawag yan, internal comparables. Pero, pagka si independent parties, may transactions with another independent parties, ang tawag doon, external comparable. No? Bakit external? Kasi pariho talaga silang external to the group. Wala talaga silang relationship with the group. Samantalang yung internal, may related party, may transaction with the independent party. So, may connection pa rin, no? Kaya internal ang tawag doon. No? So, hindi na natin questionin kasi yun ang guidelines mismo ang nagsabi na internal yan. No? <laughs> kasi mag-a-argue pa tayo, 
eh, eh hindi naman tayong gumawa ng mga regulations na yan or guidelines, no? At bago na buo yung mga guidance na yan, may deliberate na, may deliberation siya, no? Bago na resolve. Kaya accept natin yun. Yung sinasabi ng guidelines. Ang tawag niya doon, internal comparable. Okay. So, what are the example of internal and external comparables? So, ito yung internal comparables. Si company A, which is a parent company, and manufacturer, meron siyang uh, transactions to both independent and related or controlled transaction, no? So, yan yung ating example. Si company A, the parent company, meron siyang dalawang uh, distributor, no? Si company B, subsidiary niya or related parties niya, at si company C, independent company distributor niya. So, anong tawag dito? Internal comparable. Why? Kasi, may isang related party na nagkaroon ng Uh, transaction with an independent party. Ang tawag po dyan, ex internal comparable. Ano naman yung external comparable? Si company A, na parent manufacturer, meron siyang control transactions with company B na subsidiary. No? Ngayon, i-compare mo yung kanilang transaction with company C, which is an independent company manufacturer, With that of company D na independent company distributor. So, pariho silang independent, hindi sila related. So, yun po yung tinatawag natin na external comparable. Why? Because somewhere along the... the uh, dito sa figure na pinakita ko sa inyo, wala talaga silang link with the related parties, no? Kaya ang tawag sa kanila, external comparable. Kasi kung may link sila, may relationship sila with another uh, related parties in the group, ang tawag sa kanila, internal comparable, no? Okay. Risk in a transfer pricing risk assessment process, no? Okay. Bakit may risk sa transfer pricing assessment? The risk of adjustment, no? Okay, so ano yung mga risk dyan? The following are most likely to undergo the risk of transfer pricing audit. Sino yung uh, i-audit sa transfer pricing? So, tingnan din po ninyo yung sa RAMO 1-2019 oh, because that is our transfer pricing audit guidelines. So, ito yung mga enterprise that have many types of related party transactions, no? Marami siyang related party transactions kasi yung uh, business nila is such that marami related parties no it somewhere it evolved all, uh, around related parties no and also yung uh, kandidato palagi sa transfer pricing audit are enterprises that report losses no yung kasi it's against the sound economic principle na you continue your business na loss ka naman no Limbawa, lost ka na ng 10 years and still you are operating. Question mark na yan. A big, big question mark. Why? Because you are just uh, throwing away your money and effort. No, You are just wasting your resources. Why? Lost na nga. Ba't mo pa kinukontinue? So, anong ibig sabihin sa transfer pricing? If we apply the substance over form, it's not true that your company is losing. Why? Kasi kung totoong losing yan, you have closed it already. Second, third year pa. Kasi tinatapon mula yung pera mo. But the fact na 10 years ka ng loss, hindi mo uh, kid loss. So, ibig sabihin, in substance, you are not losing. Only in form. No? For purposes lang na uh, kinocompute mo yung payment of taxes mo, loss ka. Pero sa totoong operation, you are not losing. So, enterprises that report losses, marginal profits, or fluctuating profits for extended periods for a consecutive number of years. A consecutive number of years, ibig sabihin, 2 years na yan, 3 years, 5 years, 7 years, 10 years, puro loss. No? And enterprise net income are lower than those of other enterprise in the same industry benchmark result of the BIR. Ito ah, pakita ko sa inyo yung benchmark ng BIR. Ito, ginawa pa to under the 
uh, Deputy Commissioner Valeroso noon, no? ito yung acceptable benchmark rates. Hindi ko na, hindi natin na masabi na acceptable pa ba ito ngayon because this has been um, made or computed 2012, no? But this is the example po ng benchmark na uh, hari. I-email mo na sa, sa kanila yung example ng benchmark at saka yung ABC. Ha? Huh? Ito, na email mo na? Wow. Okay, so meron na po pala, may na-email na si Harry sa inyo. You, you try to look at, na-email na po sa email address nila. Okay. So, nandyan po, nakalagay dyan yung acceptable benchmark. No? Ano tong acceptable benchmark? Ginawa ito ng different revenue regions. No? Dito sa Metro Manila. So, we have, uh, we have um, region number 5. Kaloocan, region number 6, Manila, uh, region number 7, Quezon City, and region 8, Makati. So, ito yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 regions, no? Gumawa sila ng benchmark. And, uh, example ko lang dito, ha? Sa gross profit, income tax rate, at sa VAT rate, no? Kinuha nila dito kung uh, magkano yung gross profit. So, for the... PSIC code 17430 advertising so ito yung industry no itong PSIC code ano yon Philippine Standard Industrial Code no uh, in for purposes of classifying the industry ng company you can always uh, refer to this PSIC code nandiyan din po yan sa internet no Philippine Standard Industrial Code So for advertising the respondent is uh, 57 and the uh, model is 40% no so 40% siya of the uh, uh, total respondents no so the gross profit rate for advertising is 50.85 no so yun ang uh, ano nila uh, result and then for the income tax rate The model is 3.05 and for the VAT rate 6.1. Bakit? Kasi yung advertising industry natin wala yung masyadong input. That's why mataas yung VAT rate niya. For income tax rate uh, 3%, no? And for the gross profit is 50.85. So mal mataas, malaki, no? Uh, next industry, arts, dramatics, music is uh, the model is 50%, no? Uh, eight respondent, meaning kakaunti lang yung nag-engage yan sa industry na yan. The gross profit rate is 71%. No? Taas. Uh, the income tax rate is 8.71 and the VAT uh, rate is 8.57. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, this is the benchmark. Kasi pag gumawa kayo ng sarili nyo study in your particular industry, you can always refer to this as your um For, for guide or just to have an idea, no? Pero di ko sinabi na yung 2021 mo, i-compare mo dito yung 2020 kasi iba ang economic conditions, lalo na yung 2020. No? This is just an example. For PSIC code uh, 1561, bakery products, ito yung nagmamanufacture ng mga bread. The, the model is 60%, the gross profit is 48.75%, No? BPO or call centers, the gross profit is 26%. So, granting na itong benchmark na to is still applicable today or sa 2020 natin na study. Dapat, pag gumawa ka ng transfer pricing analysis report mo, halimbawa, dito yung gross profit na sinasabi for BPOs is 26%. So, para acceptable, yung uh, within the range yan ng 26%. 0.08%. No? So, gagawa ka ngayon ng range based on your comparables na napili. Ito yung mga respondent mo. Yun yung comparables mo. So, based on that, dapat within 25 to 75% uh, percent, uh, in the range, pasok yung uh, gross profit rate. Kung gross profit rate ang profit level indicator mo, so, dapat pasok doon. So, hindi siya lalayo dapat sa 26% percent no na gross profit rate business and management consultancy ang taas no 81% ang gross profit cargo handling 53% construction um, non individual 
percent, construction, thirty-nine point eighty-three percent, customs brokers, non-individual, twenty-six percent, customs brokerage na individual, eighty-four percent. But kaya ang lalaki, no, nang diperensya. Freight and forwarding services, sixty-two percent. No, so ang tataas ng gross profit nila. Kailangan pag ito yung halimbawa pinaka-benchmark mo, dapat para masabi mo na arm's length ang uh, ratio or yung uh, profit level indicator ng uh, client mo, dapat hindi siya lalayo dito sa um, benchmark model. No? Yan yung no noong 2003. No? So, ang daming industries dito na ginawa nila ng benchmark. Hmm. Manufacturing, uh, gasoline, fuel, garments, yung IT, machineries, wholesale, retail, do? So, yun po, yung sinasabi natin na um, risk and transfer pricing assessment. O, pag pagka masyadong malayo yung uh, ratio mo doon sa Uh, halimbawa kung meron man tayong benchmark o doon sa comparables mo with the independent party transactions no? so masyadong malayo so kandidato ka talaga for audit okay so enterprises whose profit margins are lower o kaya hindi lang lower puro net loss pa and does not correspond with the functions and risks undertaken no Enterprises that enjoy tax exemptions or transact with related parties established in tax havens. So, sila rin, kandidato din sila for transfer pricing audit. Okay. Okay, so what are the factors affecting comparability? These are the very important um, study in transfer pricing. Ito yung mga factors. Why? Kasi dito na naman mag evolve yung study natin sa comparability. Ano ba yung i-compare natin? Ito yung five factors. Ano yung i-compare natin between independent parties and related parties? Kasi sabi natin, mag-compare tayo. Sabi ng arm's length, you have to compare. The independent party and the related parties. Ano yung compare natin? Ito yun yung mga factors na to, no? Kaya pag nagawa ka ng transfer pricing analysis, isa isahin mo to, no? So number one is the characteristics of property or services, no? So pwede itong nature or characteristic of property or services, whether tangible or intangible, no? Kasi ang assets natin ngayon hindi lang tangible la. More so, we have to recognize also the intangible assets that we have. Okay. So, characteristics of the property or services, we you have to compare. So, the characteristics of the property or services and compare it with. The, with your comparables who have also the um, property that with that other property or services that you compare. And then the second are the functions performed, assets used, or risk assumed. Dito and the main findings dito pagdating sa uh, actual, no? Sa mga issues, no? So, on the functions performed, on the assets used, and also on the risk assumed. No? So, what are the risks na, na pinapa-assume yung related parties with the uh, subsidiaries or with the members of the group? No? And also, the assets used. No? So, you have to adjust kung masyadong malaki yung assets and then you compare it with the assets of the tested party, masyadong malaki, then you have to adjust for the cost of... Um, achieving or acquiring that assets and also the functions performed. Dapat pag nag-compare tayo, 
talagang pareho sila ng functions. Once na magkaiba sila ng functions, we have to see to it na uh, hindi nakaka-apekto yung functions na yan at kung nakaka-apekto man, we can uh, materially adjust no, the uh, difference no, to make them similar. And then another factor is the contractual terms. No? So dito ang dami din. Actually, there are cases that resist the court na ang kinu-question yung contractual terms. Why? Kasi profitable na yung isang company. Pumasok pa siya sa isang kontrata, no? Na ang nangyari, naging net loss pa siya, no? So ano ba yan? Yung sabi nila na there is no business reason to do that. For so many years, ito na yung uh, profit mo, no? Maganda na yung binabayad mo sa tax authorities. And then all of a sudden, during the year, uh, nakipagkontrata ka sa isang company na ang effect nun, bumaba yung uh, tax due mo, no? So, revisit the contractual terms. I I are the provision in the contracts are arm's length, no? Kasi kung hindi yan arm's length, then that can always be disallowed or during the transfer pricing audit, the examiner may adjust, no? At sabi na natin, pagka nagkaroon na ng adjustment, yan ang pinaka gusto gusto ng examiner because the reason for adjustment is that meron kang deficiency. No? Kasi ang resulta ng um, anong tawag dito? Ang resulta ng uh, adjustment or deficiency. No? Magbabayad ka. Okay. So, for the contractual terms, Anong kukunin mo dito pag uh, ikaw yung gumagawa ng transfer pricing analysis? The contracts uh, signed by the parties during the year or the contracts even though signed in the previous years but still subsisting on the current year, kailan mo rin siya isama. No? And then we have the economic circumstances. What are the economic circum circumstances or the uh, events? No, economic conditions that happens during the year that affects the business. Kasi, uh, posibly na um, bumaba yung presyo niya o tumaas yung presyo niya kasi nga tumaas yung uh, raw materials because of uh, something that happened during the year. No? Kaya nga, sabi ko, excited ako dun sa ginagawa kong transfer pricing analysis because I want to discover the effect of the economic conditions brought about by pandemic last year, no? But uh, hindi naman pala kasi yung uh, mga companies na uh, ginagawa namin ngayon ng transfer pricing analysis are not those industries na uh, talagang nag-suffer during the pandemic, no? So yung mga companies natin, uh, ano siya, ma ma manufacturing ng spare parts, hindi siya naapektuhan, no? Yung iba naman, uh, medical supplies, medical uh, goods, no? hindi rin naapektuhan. Kasi marami pa rin bumibili during the pandemic. No? Okay. So you have to uh, explain all the economic circumstances or the economic conditions that uh, happened during the year. No? So, explain mo talaga yan lahat and how it affects the industry, how it affects the sales or the operations. You have to discuss everything. And then we have the business strategies. So, what are these business strategies? These are your um, strategies or <laughs> alam nyo pagka, pagka nag, nag, uh, basta ka ng mga transfer pricing cases, iba-iba yung tawag nila dun sa mga cases, eh, no? Meron silang tinatawag na Project X. Tapos, hindi uh, pa tapos si Project X. Meron naman silang Project Y. No? So, those are business strategies that the management formulate to take advantage of uh, the condition or uh, the opportunity no? para magkaroon ng kita yung kanilang uh, business. No? So, those are what we call as business strategies. No? Wag lang yung business strategies mo, predatory pricing, yun, in-explain ko sa inyo kanina, ano yung predatory pricing. Si strategies din yan eh, no? Uh, actually, it, it actually happens here, no? Merong company na for a while, 
talagang ang dami-dami bumibili sa kanya because manufacturer siya ng steel, no? Nung mamanufacture ng mga steel. Okay, so since uh, very important material siya sa construction, ang dami bumibili sa kanya. Until all of a sudden, merong factory na nagtayo din sa malapit sa kanya na steel factory din, no? So, what happened? Sobrang mura nung uh, steel products nung baguhan lang, no? So, ano nangyari doon sa matagal na sa steel uh, industry? Nalugi, no? So, so, more than a year, imagine, kaya mong makipagbigay ng mababang presyo for a year, no? So, anong nangyari? Since mababang mababa na yung presyo ng isa, lahat ng customer lumipat na sa kanya. So, what is left dito sa isa, wala na. No? So, anong nangyari? Nag-close shop siya. Why? Kasi continued na yung loss niya. No? So, that is what we call as predatory pricing. Why? Because the moment na siya na lang mag-isa, the only player in the market, that uh, predators no? na gumawa ng business strategy na yun, pag siya na lang mag-isa, itaas na niya yung presyo. Wala na kukontra at wala na mapupuntahan yung customer. No? And that is bawal under the Philippine Competition Commission yung tinatawag na predatory pricing. Kasi parang deceiving yan eh. Parang dinideceive mo yung uh, company and also the customers. No? So those are prohibited. Okay, next po tayo. The five factors important in determining comparability. No? So lahat yan. It includes examining the factors in the uh, controlled transaction and the factors in the independent transactions. No? So, yun yung uh, five factors. No? So, ano daw i-examine mo? Controlled transactions and the independent transactions. Pariho mong i-apply yung five comparability factors. Ano, wala pa rin sound? Ha? Ah? Okay. Huwag pindot ng pindot, ha, kate, para di ba wala yung sound. Ano ba ang pinipindot niya dyan? Hindi ba uh, diretso na yung PowerPoint ko dyan sa iyo? Ah? Oh. So, ano pa yung pinipindot? Okay, so nawawala po yung sound. Okay, so nature or characteristic of goods or services 
evaluate the degree of comparability between controlled and uncontrolled transactions. Ano yun? Requires the comparison of the property or services transferred in the transaction. No? So, this comparison may include any intangibles that are embedded in tangible property or services. <clears throat> may mga intangibles kasi na embedded sila sa tangible property. No? Ano yun? Ano yung mga intangibles embedded in the property? Yung design. No? Halimbawa <clears throat> na lang yung Coca-Cola. Diba? Yung bote ng Coca-Cola. Ano yung bote niya? Nakaganyan, no? Diba? Sexy. Nakaganon. Kaya nga ang tawag sa mga sexy, Coca-Cola body. Kasi maliit yung bewang, no? So, nakaganon. So, ano yun? That is the intangible embedded in tangible property. No? Ano pa? <clears throat> ano pa yung intangible embedded in tangible property? Yung mga logo, No? Yung mga signs na linalagay natin sa uh, mga damit, sa mga t-shirts, sa mga sapatos, or sa bags. No, those are intangibles na embedded or linalagay mo sa tangible property. No? Okay. Nawala pa rin? Okay. So, the relevance of product comparability in evaluating the relative reliability of the results will depend on the method applied. Usually, itong uh, nature or characteristic of goods or services, pag nag-compare ka, ginagamit ito sa comparable uncontrolled price method. Why? Because yung comparable uncontrolled price methods are influenced by na the nature or characteristics ng goods and services. Bakit? Kasi mag-iba lang siya ng, ng characteristics, mag-iiba na yung price. No? Okay. And uh, next is the functions performed. Ano yung mga functions performed na sinasabi dito? These are the functional analysis of commercial and financial dealings between associated enterprises and also the functional analysis of dealing between independent enterprises should be performed to determine the arms and price charged by associated enterprises in their financial and commercial dealings among the related groups. So, ano posible yung functions? Ano yung mga uh, example natin ng functions? No? Marami, no? So, functions that may need to be accounted for in determining comparability of two transactions may include. So, itong mga functions na hindi natin dapat kalimutan. Bakit? Just like research and development, gaano ba ka-importante ang research and development when it comes to the operation of the company? No? So, ang research and development is very, very important. Why? Uh, a big amount or a huge amount of money is invested in the research and development. Why? Because research and development, yun ang buhay ng product. No? In a very competitive uh, market, kasi nga sabi nga natin, the true transactions are that in the market and yung active market natin are very competitive. Bakit? Nandyan yung mga presence ng iba't ibang klase ng uh, product that will compete to your product. So, anong gagawin mo to have a very competitive product? Palagi ka nag-invest sa research and development so that every month or uh, periodically, you are launching a new product. No? So, nasusubaybayan ka ng mga customers mo. Uh, improve palagi yung iyong uh, product. Why? Kasi, if hindi ka mag-invest sa research and development, and then yung product mo ngayon is same with uh, the product you have uh, two months, three months, or one year uh, after, then naiiwanan na sa shield yung iyong product. No? That's why ang mga um, uh, karamihan talaga sa ating mga business owners are, and even the multinationals, they are uh, investing so much in research and development. At ang research and development na yan, the aim of that is to innovate no? or improve the products or create or develop a new product. No? na uh, kikita sa market. May mga study na yan sila, may mga market study na. No? Ang nakita ko lang, dito sa Pilipinas, ang mga tao dito, they are not uh, so much uh, 
hindi naniniwala sa research and development or they are not doing any research and development at all. Parang uh, ano na yung pag nakita mo sa ITR, may, may expense na research and development. Ang tendency din, since alam naman ng lahat na hindi na masyadong nagre-research and development yung mga taxpayers, uh, dinidisallow pagdating sa investigation o kaya hinahanapan ng uh, mahigpit na mga requirements sa research and development. But in some other countries, the research and development is a major expense. Para bang buhay ng company na pag hindi siya nag-invest in the research and development, mawawalan ka ng negosyo later. Why? Kasi magiging dormant yung product mo. Wala nang bibili. No? So, research and development is a very, very vital or crucial uh, expense na meron yung mga companies. But of course, may mga rules and regulations tayo that uh, should be followed in the recognition ng research and development and in charging the research and development to an expense account. Why? Kasi, pag uh, ang purpose ng research and development is to develop a new product, then that research and development should be capitalized to the cost of the new product and you cannot claim that right away as an expense. No? So, yun po yung research and development natin. And then, we also have our product design and engineering. No? So, Ano ba yung product design and the engineering na apaka uh, importante? Why? Kasi yung ibang mga companies, they are investing so much on the product design. No? May mga consultants yan silang hinahire such that uh, pinapapatent yung kanilang pinapapatent. No? Tama no? yung product design at saka yung kanilang mga processes, yung engineering. So that protected sila by law, no? Ano yung mga product design? Ini-improve nila yan to make uh, their products more sellable at saka mas uh, useful sa public, no? Eh, yun yung uh, product design is uh, also used ng uh, transfer pricing is in evaluating the product. And then we also have, under the functions, we have the manufacturing, production, and process engineering. So marami sa mga nagpapagawa sa atin ng transfer pricing analysis, ang daming manufacturing. So kumuha na kami ng mga comparables. So, ang dami sa manufacturing. But of course, you have to choose those comparables na they are manufacturing uh, with the same, no? kung halimbawa spare parts ang uh, minamanufacture ng tested party mo, dapat yung comparables mo, uh, hindi lang basta manufacturing kasi iba-iba din ang manufacturing, no? maraming klase. So, it should also be manufacturing of spare parts, no? component parts. Yun yung sinasabi. No? And then we have the uh, production. No? Production, kasama na rin yan sa manufacturing. And also the process engineering. No? Kasi yung process are very important and sometimes ito mga process, ito yung mga secret formula that are also protected. No? But uh, ito mga secret formula, hindi mo pwedeng i-register ito. Why? Because it will be known. Dapat sa secret formula, unknown. Pag ka register mo, makilala na, magiging known na siya, it ceases to be a secret formula. No? Kaya nga yung mga sekreto natin sa buhay, sekreto talaga yan. Pagka may nakaalam na dyan, kasi pinagsasabi mo rin, hindi na yan sekreto. No? Uh, wala ng value. Pag ang secret formula kasi, made known already to the public or to some persons, it ceases to be a secret formula and it loses its value. No? Okay. Okay. Uh, another function could be product fabrication, no? nagpa-fabricate, or extraction and assembly. Sa dami, alam nyo, um, because sa economics natin, we are producing the needs of the people. No? So, so, dito sa product fabrication, extraction, and assembly, napakaraming mga industries dyan na yan ang ginagawa, no? but uh, producing iba't ibang products. 
no? Nagpa-fabricate. Dito nga sa atin, ang dami ng nagsiship building, no? Usually, yung mga Japanese companies, imagine, gumagawa sila ng mga ship pang laki-laki. At saka, nag-hire sila ng napakaraming welders, no? Kaya yung mga skilled natin na welders, yun yung nawawala ng trabaho. No? They are, they are uh, hiring thousands of mga skilled welders. No? Okay. So, product fabrication, also extraction. Ano itong ex extraction? Ito yung mga mineral resources natin. Ang dami sa atin, ha? marami tayong mining industries, extractive industries yan. Ano yun? Ano yung mga minamine sa atin? Yung mga mineral resources natin. If you try to look, take a look sa uh, mining and geographical, ano ba yun? geological bureau natin, no? ang daming mga companies doon at saka nandudoon yung uh, kanilang uh, mga production o nakalagay doon, nakareport. No? Why? Kasi nag-research na ako niya noon because uh, I attended the OECD Uh, transfer pricing guidance on extractive industries. No? So, from that time, gusto ko nang mag-loads ng another book ko transfer pricing, which is the advanced transfer pricing. But I feel at that time, parang kulang pa, parang mga uh, nanganga pa pa yung transfer pricing dito sa Pilipinas. So, sabi ko, parang untimely yung ilo-loads ko yung advanced transfer pricing. But because now, meron na tayong mga ramo, transfer pricing audit guidelines, uh, pwede na. No? So, hopefully, itong 2021, makapag-launch na po tayo na advanced transfer pricing natin kasi kompleto na tayo ng materials. No? At isa na itahil natin dito uh, na gustong-gusto ko talaga na matagal na and I exerted already so much effort, ito yung book natin on intangibles. No? And also yung sa extractive industries natin. Kaya nga nakapag-research na ako dyan sa Mines and Ge Geological Bureau ng DNR. No? Kasi sila yan. So ito yung mga extractive industries natin na if you try to take a look, iba-iba yung kanilang rules when it comes to uh, recognition ng depletion nila. No? Iba yung, at saka yung kung ilang years nila pwedeng i-claim yung loss nila, iba kaysa doon sa mga uh, regular na industries natin. No? Kaya masasabi nga natin dito na yung extractive industries ni natin are favored industries. No? Kasi iba yung treatment sa kanila, pati yung mga development cost nila, iba, pati yung depletion nila, iba rin. No? And another are assembly. No? So ano itong mga assembly na to? nag assemble ka ng uh, mga goods, kagaya ng ginagawa or galing sa mga chap-chap no? na assemble mo para mabuo yung product. Kaya anong ginagawa ng iba? Assembly na lang sila, yung mga spare parts nila, pinapa yung mga component parts nila, pinapa outsource, pinapa uh, gawa sa iba and then pag nandyan na instead na sila pa, gagawa ng bawat parts, mag-assemble na lang sila. Yun yung sa assembly. And then we have our uh, purchasing and materials management. No? So that can also be the functions. Actually, uh, actually ang daming companies dito sa Pilipinas. No? Pagdating kasi sa um, semen, yung maritime business, ang dami natin, competitive tayo in the world. May nagsabi nga sa akin na based on the study, 90% daw, ng barko na umiikot sa mundo are manned by Filipino crew or Filipino captains. No? Eh, yung isang pamangkin ko nakapag-asawa din ng kapitan sa barko. No? Uh, every four months, akyat, tapos baba na naman. No? So, ano yun? Uh, ang ma maraming companies dito sa Pilipinas na ang uh, engage nila, ano, yung ginagawa nila are uh, yung may nakapagawa din sa amin ng transfer pricing study, no? Yung crew management at saka yung sa shipping nila, nandito yung kanilang accounting, outsource nila dito, pati yung to yung procurement nila, no? Yung mga umaakit sa barko, di ba? Uh, 
yung purchasing nila ng mga materials no, na ikakarga nila sa barko nandyan. So, marami niyan dito sa Manila. No? Yan yung mga industry dyan, no? malapit sa port. Okay. Purchasing and materials management. No? So, but uh, yung purchasing and material management, marami din ito sa mga manufacturing companies. No? Yung purchasing and materials management, meron akong na-encounter naman, actually, consultant ako, no? Um, pero consultant na kung kailan lang maalala. No? Although yung sa ibang company, meron akong regular na retainers. Yung purchasing and materials management, they create a company, actually, doon sila nag-umpisa, to purchase the raw materials, no? yung chemicals, yung mga active ingredients used in the pharmaceutical industries. Doon sila nag-umpisa. No? Doon sila lumaki. Ang uh, ginagawa ng isang company, siya yung nag import and then nag export And then, yung ibang companies, na group of related companies, siya nagsusupply doon. No? So, usually, may naunit din ako anong nangyari. Yung nagpo-purchase, siya yung nagpo-purchase and then sinusupply niya dito sa uh, related parties din niya, walang markup. No? Walang markup, ang laki ng sales. Ha? Walang markup. I-import niya, uh, 1 million. Ibenta din niya sa related party niya, 1 million. Is that arm's length? No? Kaso lang yung time na nasa BR pa ako, hindi ko pa kilala yung transfer pricing at the time eh. No? But that is a potential case in transfer pricing. Pero mo, ikaw yung purchasing. No? You are a different uh, company owned by the same person. Tapos itong pinurchase mo from abroad, uh, dineliver mo dito sa related parties mo, kung makano mo siya in-import, Ganon din yung pagbigay mo. So, anong ibig sabihin mo nun? Walang business reason. No? So, is the transaction arm's length? Of course not. Bakit? Kasi nag import ka. Um, may resources ka na ginagamit, nang ninegosyo ka. Eh, bakit ibenta mo rin at no cost, no? at no markup yung uh, in-import mo? No? Ano dapat to make it arm's length? Dapat, kaya nga itong nasabi ko, no? itong mga question, dapat hindi dapat yung ganon. O ma'am, anong gagawin namin? Dapat, meron kayong markup. No? So, ikaw yung nag import You are a different company. Sinusupplyan mo itong related parties mo. Ano dapat? To make it arm's length. Kung ano yung markup ng independent parties, dapat yan din yung markup mo in supplying that other party. No? Kasi bawat isa sa inyo magbabayad ng tax. O. Oh. So, kung siya walang income, kaya nga yung na-audit ko dati na uh, group of companies, wala talagang kita, walang kita. But, yung hindi pa nga namin kilala yung transfer pricing, parang some, something is wrong. No? Masasabi mo something is wrong, but there is no regulation that back you up. So, wala. Pabayaan mo na lang. No? Kasi ano nangyari doon sa nag-import ka, tapos... Uh, Binenta mo pa rin at same price. Puro ka negative pagdating sa VAT. Why? Kasi meron kang advance VAT na binabayaran. Pero pagdating naman doon sa disposal ng product mo, same lang. Hindi eh, wala kang output. So, pero ang dami mong input. No? So, yun yung nangyayari. So, anong benefited? Since halimbawa, dalawa yung company mo, same person na yung may-ari. Inag-import ka, wala kang output kasi same mo lang pinasa dito. Ano yung mga binayaran mo doon na VAT? I-claim mo ngayon yan as tax credit or tax refund. So, benefited ka nga rin sa VAT. Pagdating naman dito sa uh, isang company, kung magkano mo siya binili, pinasa mo dito at the same price. So, yung pagpasa mo dito, input mo na siya. Liable na lang yung related parties mo on the uh, markup. No? Kasi kung binenta niya ng 1 million, binenta niya ng 1.5 million. So saan na lang siya magiging liable doon sa 0.5, no? So nakatipid sa tax. No? Kasi sabi ko, bakit same lang naman 'to? Siya pa rin yung may-ari. Bakit dinalawa pa niya yung company niya? No? So 
Kung hindi ko nakilala yung transfer pricing, hindi ko rin alam yun na ganun pala yung effect. No? Ang laki pala ng uh, savings niya uh, sa tax. Kasi yung advance bat na binayad niya doon sa, sa um, customs, maklaim niya in full through tax credit or tax refund. No? Kasi bakit? Kasi pinapasa niya, binibenta niya at no markup. So lahat ng binayad niya sa bat, ibabalik sa kanya. Okay. So yun yung uh, sa purchasing. Uh, uh, one, one company is doing the purchasing and then uh, the rest of the company sinusuplayan na niya. No? So with also dito sa material management. Pero balikan ko yan lang ha, pagdating sa materials management, especially sa inventory, very strict na po ngayon yung BIR. Ha? So pag sinabi natin na very strict ang BIR sa inventory, yung reporting natin ng inventory every year and na, mahigpit na. Okay. Excuse me, Harry. Isara mo na yung ano, yung mga pinto kasi maingay. Pati yan. Pati yun doon. Huwag mo nang patayin. Yun na lang. Ayun, yung kumakanta. Diyan? Sa overpass. Malapit po kasi kami sa overpass ng GMA. No? Eh, may nakapwesto dyan na bulag araw-araw kumakanta. No? May singer din siya. Yung bulag um, nagigitara. Oh. Oh, o, yun, yun sila maririnig ninyo. Background music natin. Sila yun. No? Si kahit isara mo yung mga pintuan, ano, naririnig pa rin eh. Tapos maririnig nyo pa yun. Ano yan? MRT. No? Kaya pasensya na kayo sa mga background noise natin. Okay. So, let's now go to the next functions. Ito yung marketing and distribution functions. Bakit ko po iniisa-isa to sa inyo and ini-explain? Because dito umiikot po yung mga transfer pricing issues and sa mga disputes, no? And we are now uh, talking about comparability, no? So, very important topic sa transfer pricing. Okay. So, marketing and distribution functions including inventory management, warranty administration, and advertising activities. And not only that, dito sa functions, dito po, nagkakaroon ng mga case studies kasi dito umiikot din yung business restructuring. Ano yung business restructuring? They restructure or the, the tested party or the entity restructure their business operation in order to minimize also the, pay, the payment of taxes. No? So, insan itong marketing and distribution functions, instead na full fleets, distribu distributor siya, gagawin na lang na uh, commissioner. Commission na lang. No? So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Pagka marketing and distribution functions mo, binago, ni restructure. No? Limbawa, ikaw ay full fleets and distributor. You own the inventory. You pay for the advertisement. O ginawa ka na lang commissioner. So, pag commission ka or agent, anong mangyari sa iyo? Hindi ka na yung full fleets na distributor. Hindi ka na may-ari ng uh, inventory. Hindi ka na magbabayad ng um, advertisement. Bibigyan ka na lang, bayaran ka na lang ng napakaliit na commission. Sometimes 3%, no? So, yung, yun yung kine-question ko. Is the 3% commission um, arm's length? No? So, depende. Kung mahirap yung ginawa at saka very risky ang ginagawa ng distributor or ng commissioner, di, dapat mas mataas din yung ibabayad sa kanya. No? Pero kung simple lang, siguro palagay ko pwede na rin yung 3%. No? So, marketing and distribution functions, very important sa manufacturing companies, no? Uh, kasi, sa marketing, alam mo kung ano yung minamarket mo and you are particular on your uh, share in the market, no? And sa distribution functions naman, ito yung uh, sinasabi ko sa inyo na nagagawa ito ng uh, restructuring, no? Instead of... Uh, yun na nga, fully distributor ka, 
uh, full-fledged distributor, gawin ka na lang commission. Okay. So, ano pa yung ibang mga services under this? We have the inventory management. No? So, if you have inventory management, maganda yan. Um, see to it na, uh, alam nyo, mayroong nagtanong pala sa akin, no? naalala ko sa YouTube, no? YouTube uh, live. Ma'am, what happened kung ang aking uh, uh, bat returns, puro negative na overpurchase ako uh, palagi, no? Bawa during the year, over daw yung purchases niya, kaya palagi siyang uh, negative sa bat. So, ang sabi ko naman sa kanya, uh, kasi inventory management yan eh, sabi ko sa kanya, be sure lang na kung palagi kang over sa purchases mo, be sure na bumabagsak lang lahat yung purchase mo doon sa inventory. No? Why? Because mamaya, over ka ng over ng uh, purchases, wala naman doon sa inventory mo, inasaan, nawawala. No? Kaya nga gusto ko pa, pero I have no time and because of the constraint po sa transfer pricing analysis na pinapagawa sa amin ngayon, 11 na. No? Ang isa pa sana na i-discuss ko, no? uh, magkaroon ako ng free seminar for the tax preparer also, kahit one day lang, yung mga tax issues in the preparation of financial statements. Why? Kasi bawat account yan sa balance sheet, may mga tax issues yan na uh, pag nakaligtaan mo, may tax consequence na pala. No? Okay. So ano yun? Kagaya dito, halimbawa, itong example natin, inventory management. Sige, purchase ka ng purchase over yung declaration mo because uh, nag-claim ka ng input tax because ayaw mo magbayad. So anong ginawa mo? Dagdagan mo yung output, input mo magkarga ka ng magkarga ng maraming purchases, no? But, ang nakaligtaan mo, na since nag-over ka palagi ng purchases mo, ang bagsak niya, nando doon sa inventory, no? So, na, na, bili ka ng bili, negative ka ng negative doon sa bad returns mo, wala naman pumapasok sa inventory, man, inventory mo, sa list of inventory mo. So, what happened? What happened? misrepresented yung financial statements mo. Projolent. No? Bakit? Bili ka ng bili, purchase ka ng purchase na inventory, nasaan? Nawawala lang. No? Kasi dapat, yung purchases na yan, hindi yan mabenta at cost, ipasok mo yan sa inventory. No? Eh, wala ka namang inventory. That's why, sa tawa ako dati, yung mga kasama kong examiners, no, may mga findings sila. Oh, zero ang bat. Pero pag tinignan mo sa income tax return, wala na mong purchases sila doon na pang pagkuhanan ng VAT. No? Saan ba nang gagaling yung, yung VAT na input? Magagaling yan doon sa uh, purchases mo na may input. No? Uh, magagaling yan doon sa increase na assets mo. Kasi ibig sabihin, during the year, mayroon ka ng purchase na assets. So, uh, that can be a possible source ng uh, input. Pero sabi ng examiner, ang laki-laki ng uh, input na na-claim mo against your output. Pero pag tinignan daw sa uh, balance sheet, income statement, or sa income statement, hindi mo ma-account na meron siyang mga ganun kalalaki na purchases. No? So, be sure na yung sabi ko sa inyo sa dos and don'ts dun sa income tax rate, uh, in filing yung income tax, talagang itali nyo po lahat dyan. No? Eh, reconcile nyo. No? Okay. So, inventory management, warranty. Ano yung mga warranty? Ito yung liabilities. Why? Kasi warranty ito against uh, defective goods, against uh, defective na products, no? Na dapat, since may warranty pa ka, ka pa, gagawin mo ulit pagka nasira yung product, no? Because you are the manufacturer. And usually, sino may ari nitong warranty or liable? Da? parent company na sometimes siya yung manufacturer. Okay, administration and advertising activities. No? So, these are uh, services, mga service um, oriented. No? Yung administration and advertising activities. Services po yan sila. Although, if you try to look at sa ating Uh, pandemic, result ng pandemic natin, itong mga uh, advertising activities were also affected. No? Yung mga in, 
involved natin sa advertising na wala din sila ng mahanap buhay. No? Why? Kasi, alam nyo, pagka dumadaan ako sa EDSA dati, tuwan-tuwa ako. Why? Kasi tingin ko sa EDSA, both sides parang comics. Why comics? Kasi ang daming mga beautiful face, beautiful faces, mga iba't ibang products. Parang siyang um, comics, no? Na pag tinignan mo, ang daming ang dami mo makikita. Pwede mo nga nang lagyan ng kwento, no? Bawat uh, billboards at saka lalaki. No? Dito sa atin, ganyan eh. Pataasan, pa pa gandahan ang mga billboards. Sa China, naman, no? Napunta ko sa Shenzhen dati. Napaka-organized ang kanilang mga billboards na sa gilid, no? Pare-pareho. Hindi mo makita na sobrang laki. Mas, ano naman, hindi na makita, sobrang liit. Kasi, depende yan sa budget, eh. No? Yung mga nagbi-billboard dyan sa EDSA, millions ang mga bayad dyan. No? Kaya yung mga advertisers dyan, kumikita ng malaki. Kaya pagdating ng pandemic, napakalungkot po ng EDSA. Bakit nawala yung mga ads? No? Saka malungkot talaga. I have uh, a friend na may friend siya na nasa advertisement na pagdating na po nung pandemic, Uh, hindi na siya makausap, no? Hindi na siya kumakain, hindi na kuma makausap. And then one morning, hindi na siya nagising, no? Na stress. Kasi siguro for so many years, lucrative yung income sa advertising. And then all of a sudden, hindi mo malaman, nagsara na, wala ng advertising. So, hindi na. na ano siya, sumama na siya doon sa pandemic, No? Okay, so yun yung sinasabi natin na advertising activities. And uh, another function that we have, transportation and warehousing. No? Ito yung mga warehousing, logistics. No? Meron, meron tayo, Harry, no? na logistics. So transportation and uh, warehousing, this can also be the functions. Pag transportation ang uh, company mo, yung tested party mo, ano yung mga... Uh, ano yung industry na yan? You have to study the industry. No? Yung isang ginawa namin ng transfer pricing analysis, transportation, wala kaming makuha na uh, yung economic information dito na bumili sa mga databases and it cost us 350,000. Huh? Yun, yun lang data na yon sa uh, economics no? about transportation. And also warehousing. Warehousing are also considered services, just like transportation. No? Another functions can be managerial, um, legal, accounting, and finance, uh, credit and collection, training and personal management services. No, so these are also the functions performed. No, so ang functions mo halimbawa managerial ka, or legal, or the sa accounting and finance. No credit and collection, training and personnel, management services. No? That can also be your functions. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so those are the functions. No, I have discussed to you the uh, different kind of functions. Actually, kunti pa lang yun yung mga functions na na-discuss natin. Sobrang dami pa niyan depending on the actual. No? So, another comparability factors. So, ano yung first comparability factors natin? We have the uh, nature or characteristics of the goods or services, whether tangible or intangible. And then we have the functions, assets, and risk. No? And then we have the... Um, ano yung next natin kanina? The economic conditions. Okay, so functions, assets, and risk. And then, ito na yung terms of the contract, no? So, wala pa yung economic conditions. So, the terms of the contract, ano yung titingnan natin dito? So, the degree of comparability between the controlled and uncontrolled transactions requires comparison of significant contractual terms that could affect the results of the two transactions. So, ano yung uh, sa degree of uh, comparability natin? 
comparison of, of significant contractual terms, no? So, yung kontrata is very important, no? Kasi titingnan natin kung ano yung mga provisions dyan. And, ang sabi ng OECD, try to see also that the provisions in the contracts are being followed. Kasi mamaya, yung terms ng contract, meron nga kontrata, pero formality lang, no? Okay, so nandito yung economic conditions that we are going to analyze also as uh, number four na comparability factors, no? So, we have economic conditions. Determining the degree of comparability between controlled and uncontrolled transactions, no? So, it requires a comparison of the significant economic conditions that could affect the prices that would be charged or paid or the profit that would be earned in each of the transactions. No? So, yun yung economic conditions that affects the profitability or the profit that would be earned. No? <clears throat> so, ano yung economic conditions natin during the pandemic? No? So, kawawa yung may industries na talagang tinamaan. Okay. So, for the economic conditions, we have the factors. So, ano yung mga factors the, the chat, that should be included in our study? The similarity of geographic markets. No? Similarity ng geographic markets. Bakit siya kailangan similar? Yung um, similarity ng geographic markets because in some cases, Magkaiba. Halimbawa, yung geographic market ng uh, Philippines, I compare mo sa geographic market ng Thailand or ng Cambodia or, or ng uh, Singapore, no? So, sometimes kung may difference yan, you have to adjust also. No? So, those are the similarity of geographic markets. We also have the relative size of its market and the extent of the overall economic development in each market, no? So, ano yung size of the market? Kagaya, ito, ito, example lang, ah. Uh, during the time daw na uh, sa India, pag may pumasok doon na mga gamot, ginagaya agad ng India. Why? Because wala sa kanilang batas na kailangan mong uh, i-protect yung patent o yung copyrights or trademarks ng iba, No? So, pagpasok pa lang ng uh, gamot, gagayahin na nila, then they, they uh, manufacture in uh, large quantity, no? So, anong sabi ng mga multinationals na nasa India? Dahil ginagaya yung kanilang mga product, no? Yung mga patents nila, formula nila sa pharmaceutical. No? Anong sabi nila? They retain the... Uh, uh, authority no ng India sabi daw ng uh, company sige pag tuloy-tuloy ninyo na ginagaya yung aming mga patent yung aming mga processes sa aming product sabi niya aalis kami sa inyo no aalis na kami dito aalis kami sa India hindi na kami ma we will not do business in India anymore no ano daw sagot ng India sa kanila okay go ahead go ahead right away no, where can you find in the world 1 billion customer? <laughs> so, ano ibig sabihin yan? Relative size of its market, no? Kaya pag India, pag China, you have 1 billion uh, customer already. <laughs> Sa Pilipinas, ilan lang, 100 million, no? It's quite uh, big na rin, no? Okay. So, yun yung sinasabi natin na relative size of the, ma uh, the market, no? The extent of the overall economic development in each market. So, yun yung sinabing extent ng overall economic development. You have to uh, disclose. Okay, analysis transferred or provided. So, ito yung relevant market shares ng product sa um, properties or services transferred or provided. Okay. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng market share? Salimbawa, may product ka, it's in the market. Yung iba, nag sila ng mga experts to uh, determine their share in the market. No? 
Kasi alimbawa, gusto mong increasean yung shares mo in the market. Gawin mong kung 10% ka lang sa market kasi bago ka lang. No? So you want to uh, improve your share in the market. So anong gagawin mo? Advertise ka na, advertise. May mga uh, gagawin kang mga pakulo para maging um, tumaas yung market share mo. No? The relevant market shares for the products, properties, or services transferred or provided. No? And the location, the specific cost of the factors of production, and also the uh, distribution. No? So these are the factors sa uh, comparability analysis. No? Okay. And also, we have to consider the under economic condition, the extent of competition, of competition in its market with regard to the property or services under review. So, ano yun? Extent daw ng competi competition in its market. Kasi sa market talaga, sa amin na natin, we want an open market. There is really competition. Okay. Next, the economic condition of the particular industry including whether the market is in contraction or expansion. No? So you have to disclose that also, the economic condition of a particular industry. And then we have the alternatives realistically available to the buyer and the seller. Yun yung uh, availability of uh, substitute goods. No? Okay. And then we ha also have the economic condition of the particular industry, no? including whether the market is in contraction or expansion, a contract ba siya or nag expand pa. The alternatives realistically available to the buyer and seller. No? So, ano yung uh, substitute products available to the seller uh, or the buyer? Okay. And the last uh, factors, no? comparability factors that we are going to consider are the strategies employed. No? Ano yung mga iba't ibang strategies na, uh, na employed ng company? No? So in some circumstances, taxpayers may adapt strategies to enter new markets to increase a product's share of an existing market. Kaya ka nga gumawa ng strategies to improve your share in the market. No? Halimbawa, yung share mo, baguhan ka pala is 10%. So, you want to uh, improve it. So, anong gagawin mo? Mag-massive advertising ka para makilala yung product mo. O kaya mag-promo ka. So, anong gagawin mo? Sa mga food, may pre-taste sila, no? Libre. No? Okay, so those are uh, strategies employed para madagdagan yung share in the market. No? Such strategy would be reflected by temporarily increased market, development expenses, or resale prices no? that are temporarily lower than the prices charged for comparable products in the same market. Okay. Okay, so let's go to tested party. Sino naman itong si tested party? No? Tested party is the participant in the controlled transaction whose activities or dealings with the controlled transactions can be verified no? using the most reliable data and acquiring the fewest and the uh, most reliable adjustment and for which reliable data regarding uncontrolled comparable can be located and identified. No? So, yan po yung tested party. At ang sabi ko nga sa inyo, kanina, na yung nangangailan ng tested party are the uh, resale price method, cost plus method, and transactional net margin method. Yung comparable and controlled price, hindi na kailangan, saka yung profit split. <clears throat> okay. So, in most cases, the tested party will be the least complex of the controlled taxpayers. No? So, yung tested party siya yung uh, 
hindi masalimuot yung kanyang uh, role, no? Uh, less complex. Okay. The least complex of the control taxpayers and will not own valuable intangible property, no? So, wala siyang uh, valuable intangible property. Or unique assets that distinguish it from potential uncontrolled comparable. Okay. For the profit level indicator, itong profit level indicator, hari na, na uh, ano muna sa kanila yung transfer pricing analysis na na ano muna, na uh, oo, ABC. Kailan pa? Kanina umaga. O sige. Kasi doon po sa ABC na yan, may mga uh, discussion din tayo doon, no? So, profit level indicator, ano pong ibig sabihin dito? Ito yung mga ratios, no? Na gagamitin natin during the analysis. So, depende na yan sa inyo, if you are the transfer pricing analyst, kung ano yung profit le level indicator yun na uh, sa palagay ninyo is applicable to the study, no? So, we have the profit level indicators are ratios that measure relationships between profits and cost in card or resources employed. No? So, a variety of profit level indicators can be calculated in any given case. No? So, itong profit level indicator, sometimes, anong role nito sa transfer pricing? Ang kapagbigay ng um, authoritative statement and, and uh, uh, in this profit level indicator are the ex industry expert, no? Kasi sila yung expert sa industry. Iba yung um, ano nila, iba yung exposure nila at saka iba yung alam nila, no? So, profit level indicators, no? Sila yung uh, ratios, no? Okay. Okay. So, whether use of a particular profit level indicator is appropriate depends upon number of factors. No? So, ito naman yung mga factors niya. Including the nature of the activities of the tested party, the reliability of the available data with respect to uncontrolled comparable, no? and the extent to which proper level indicator is likely to produce a reasonable measure of the income that a tested party would have earned had it dealt with controlled taxpayers at arm's length. No? So, taking into account all of the facts and circumstances. Okay. Ito na ang pinakamahirap sa lahat. No? The sources of information for potential comparables. Saan po na kukuha yung <clears throat> information for potential comparables? Saan po yan nakukuha? So, uh, pwede siyang manggagaling on data coming from uh, publicly filed information returns. No? Uh, published articles, pwede rin. Okay. Databases, ito yung mga mahal. Pwede, pwede, pero mahal lang. And internal records of the taxpayers are potential sources of information for comparables. No? So, galing sa mga publicly filed information returns. No? Okay. Ano naman tong arms length range, no? So, yun yung naging example ko kanina sa inyo, that the arms length range, halimbawa yung comparables mo, ginawan mo na ngayon niya ng uh, matrix, no? So, ang gagawin mo para sa arms length range, tabulate mo ngayon yung, uh, kung halimbawa yung ginamit mo ratio is gross profit, tabulate mo yan uh, lahat. And then, uh, magkaroon ka ng rates. Ang sabi nga natin, kung magkano yung gross profit ng mga companies na ginawan mo, uh, dapat yung arm's length range nitong tested party is between 25 and 75% of that uh, gross profit. No? Okay. 
The arm's length range will consist of the results of all uncontrolled comparable that meet the following conditions. No? So, so uh, ano yung information na yan? The information of the controlled transaction and uncontrolled comparable is sufficiently complete. No? It is unlikely that all material differences have been identified. Okay. Ano yung mga material differences have been identified? No? Have been identified and adjusted. No? Okay. Each such difference has a definite and reasonably ascertainable effect on price or profit. No? So, yung difference daw, kasi nga nagko-compare na tayo, no? So, Yung difference has a definite and reasonably ascertainable effect on price or profits. And adjustment is made to eliminate the effect of its such difference. No? <clears throat> so, uh, comparability adjustment after na we have analyzed, yun na yung sabi natin based on our findings that we have to uh, make the comparability adjustment, no? So, purpose of comparability adjustment, we do a comparability adjustment, no? With to do. And then the types of comparable adjustments. And we have the suggested steps in making comparability adjustment and adjustment that should be avoided, no? So, adjustment that should be avoided galing to sa RR 2 2013 or the uh, transfer pricing guidelines for dito sa Pilipinas. Okay. So, for the comparability adjustment, we have to define the comparability adjustments. Ano ba yan? Learn how to analyze cases. No? Uh, paano ka mag-analyze ng case para uh, makapag-adjust ka? No? So, know how to make comparability adjustments. No? Uh, describe the steps in making comparability adjustments and also learn the purpose of comparability adjustment. So, what are the purposes of comparability adjustments? Okay. Nasabi dito, uh, it should not be performed to correct differences. Na wala namang material effect on the comparison. Huh? Okay. It should only be resorted to mm. after a thorough analysis of the situation being compared. Adjustments are neither routine nor mandatory in a comparability analysis. Okay. So, kailan mo uh, daw gagawin yung comparability adjustment? Kasi nag-compare ka na, nakita mo may differential, they're not similar. So, you adjust, no? So, when to do a comparability adjustment, no? Comparability adjustment should be considered if and only if they are expected to increase the reliability of the results. No? So, the relevant considerations might include the following. Ito na ang uh, i-consider mo. Materiality of the difference for which an uh, adjustment is being considered. No? The quality of the data subject to adjustments. No? Okay. The purpose of the adjustments and the reliability of the approach used to make adjustment, no? So, ano ba yung approach used? Okay. So, what are the types of comparability adjustments? We have the... Uh, Adjustment for accounting consistency designed to eliminate differences that may arise from differing accounting differences between controlled and uncontrolled transactions. No? Segmentation of financial data to eliminate significant non-comparable transactions. Kaya nga bukas, mayroon tayong uh, segmented financial statements in the afternoon. No? Okay. Adjustment for differences in capital functions, assets, and risk. No, imagine you have to uh, adjust 
And then the working capital adjustment designed to reflect differing levels of accounts receivable, accounts payable and inventory. Uh, yun yung, uh, that will affect the capital. Uh, and magkaroon ng capital adjustments. So for the account, uh, working capital adjustments, reflect differing levels of accounts receivable, accounts payable, and inventory. No? Okay. So what are the suggested steps in making comparability adjustments? No? Paano tayo gagawa ng comparability adjustments? No? Kasi nagkaroon na tayo ng analysis, nagkaroon na tayo ng... Uh, uh, yung, yung uh, discussion on the functions. So, what are the steps in making comparability adjustments? No? So, these are the uh, steps. Adjust the comparable to the tested party. No? Uh, adjust the tested party to the comparable. And adjust both the tested party and the comparability to asset intensities of zero. No? So, yun yung sabi niya. Okay. Okay. So for the examples ng major adjustment natin, we have an asset intensity adjustment. Ba bakit kailangan natin mag-adjust ng asset? Kasi minsan uh, nagko-compare tayo ng independent na uh, transactions with that of the uh, dependent or related party, no? Uh, masyadong malaki yung asset ng isa while yung isa maliit lang. So, ano yung gagawin mo? You have to adjust, no? Uh, for the asset intensity adjustment. And then, we have the accounting adjustment. No? Okay. So, we also have the PLI adjustment, yung uh, profit level indicator. And we have the geographic market adjustments, no? Ito yung pinakamahirap lahat because uh, sa geographic market, na adjustment yung geography halimbawa situated diyan sa ibang country yung market nila i-compare mo with sa market natin no okay okay ano yung mga adjustment that should be avoided under RR2-2013 the transfer price and guidelines no so ano yung mga adjustment na dapat hindi natin gawin Ito yung adjustment that are questionable no? when the basis for comparability criteria is only broadly satisfied. No? So, questionable yung adjustment mo. And then, we have the excessive adjustments no? or adjustment that too greatly affect the comparable as such indicates that the third party being adjusted is in actually not sufficient comparable. And then we have adjustment on differences that do not materially affect the comparability. No? So, itong sinasabi ng RR2-2013, iwasan natin to just for the sake na magkaroon lang tayo ng uh, findings on the basic transfer pricing. No? Okay. So, yung next natin na i-discuss is our uh, transfer pricing methods, no? But, uh, yan yung magiging last topic natin. No? So, before I discuss that, uh, let's have a 15 minutes break. No? 15 minutes break muna tayo.
Oktober. Jadi kok jam berapa? Okay, da? Sige. Okay. So, good afternoon once again. At saka, balik po tayo sa uh, discussion natin. And this time, we will discuss the transfer pricing methods. Okay. Uh, sabi na natin, yung ating uh, transfer pricing is uh, revolved around comparability, no? Kasi ano ba yung sabi natin, magko-compare tayo ng related parties with that of independent parties. So, magko-compare tayo. So, in that uh, comparison, ano yung methods na gagamitin natin in comparing those uh, factors, no? Uh, na sinasabi na natin. So, ito na ngayon yung methods on um, how we compare, no? The... Um, Factors that affects the comparability. No? So, we have the five methods. Yung sabi ko sa inyo. The, under the OECD, we have the five methods, which are the traditional transaction method, the comparable and controlled price method, the CAP, and the resale price method, or the RPM. No? And the uh, cost plus method. Ito yung sinasabi natin na traditional na transaction method. And we also have the Transactional profit methods, no? So, for the transactional uh, profit methods, we have the transactional net margin method. And then, the profit split method. So, under the profit split method, we have the residual profit split and we also have the contribution uh, profit split method, no? Uh, and, of course, we will discuss also what is the best method or the best method rule as provided for under revenue regulations uh, to dust 2013. Ano yung best method? Out of these five methods, i-apply mo lahat yan and then you recommend the best method. Or, sabi ng OECD Transfer Pricing Guideline, the most appropriate method in the circumstances. No? So, yun yung uh, i-recommend mo. Okay. Excuse me, Ari, yung ating video na ano muna? Well, dapat dito kasi i-adjust ko pa yun. Hindi naman yun ipapakita lahat. Okay, so let's go to the uh, traditional transaction method, no? The comparable and controlled price method. Okay. So for the comparable price method, it is the simplest way of determining the arm's length price, no? Kasi ano yung i-compare mo dito? The price, no? So, uh, ano yung i-compare mo? The price, no? So you determine the arm's length price. For the sale of tangible goods between related parties. Ano yung uh, subject dito? Tangible goods, no? Kasi pag intangible, yung mga walang um, uh, physical attributes, mahihirapan ka if you compare them using the price, no? So for the sale of tangible goods only, yun yung, uh, pwede natin gamitin yung comparable and control price method, no? So, we, we compare the price between those products, the same product. It requires that there be similar transactions between unrelated parties to use for comparison. So, dapat similar yung transactions. No? And also, not only the similar yung transactions, similar yung goods that you are going to compare. No? Kasi pag hindi sila similar, pag hindi same goods yung kinumpare mo, talagang uh, magkakaiba yan. Hindi mo siya pwedeng, ano, walang comparability yun. No? 
So halimbawa, yung product na uh, understudy mo is um, halim halimbawa shoes, no? So i-compare mo siya with the other uh, shoes so that uh, ma-determine mo kung ano talaga yung totoong price, no? So items or goods same goods yung i-compare mo, no? The method requires that the good subject of the transfer pricing analysis be standard enough to be old on an open market. No? So, nasa open market siya ang goods. So, maghanap ka ngayon ng uh, comparable price from the independent party. Yung, yung price na yan between uh, related parties, dapat comparable siya sa price ng the same product na binibenta ng independent party. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, the most uh, difficult in the transfer pricing study is the search for comparables. Kasi bakit? I-compare mo yung price ng goods of the related parties with the price of the goods of the independent parties. So anong mahirap dito? Hanapan mo siya ng comparable from the independent parties. Oh? So yun ang pinaka mahirap, yung searching for comparables. Okay. So, uh, method, comparability analysis under the CAP method shall take into account the following. Ano yung take into account the following? Ito yung mga uh, product characteristics that will influence the price. No? Kasi pag nag-compare tayo sa comparable and controlled price method, we compare the price. So, what are the factors that will influence the price of the product? No? So, you have to take into consideration just like Itong product characteristics, no? Product characteristics such as physical features and quality, no? So, pag nag-iba na yung quality ng product, mag-iba na yung price, no? Halimbawa, yung kinumpare mo is bag ng uh, uh, napakamahal, yung original na mga leather, no? And then, branded pa. And then, i-compare mo siya doon sa uh, hindi naman leather, and then, uh, ano lang, yung madali na masira, yung nag expire no? Uh, and then, uh, iba yung quality, no? Of course, hindi mo sila pwede ipag-compare ng price. Why? Because the product with a good quality will command a higher price. And yung product na branded will also command a higher price, no? Yung ibang bag na magkamukha lang din sila, yung unang tingin mo, Pero ang materials na ginagamit, uh, one year lang, sira na, no? Yung mga, ano ba yung tawag doon na mga um, uh, product, no? na raw materials, madali lang siyang masira. No? So in that case, hindi mo siya i-compare when it comes to uh, the quality of the products. At saka, posible na pareho sila ng physical features, pareho silang maganda. Pero doon sa quality, doon nagkakatalo. No? And uh, next is, if the product is in the form of services, the nature and extent of such services provided. Okay. Kung ang kinumpare mo naman is uh, service, then you have to consider also the price ng service na dapat yung uh, nature and extent of such services provided. Kaya nga sa services kagaya dito sa ginagawa ng accountant. The accountant are providing services. Ako, since na nag-aral na ako ng um, uh, master in, the, in business uh, administration, I always think of value added. No? Kasi ang sabi sa study, sa management, pagka gusto mo maging competitive ka, no? you are offering a prod, a prod, uh, your services. If you want to be competitive, ano yung dapat mong gawin? You always have a value added. Anong ibig sabihin ng value added? When it comes to comparing your services with the other uh, provider of the same services na meron ka, dapat lamang palagi yung serbisyo mo. No? Para hahanap-hanapin ka ng tao at saka di ka mahirapan na uh, i-market yung services mo. Magkaroon ka ng maraming kliyente. So, pa paano yun? Study ka at saka mag, uh, value added ka. You add value to your product. So, paano yun? Paano mo i-add uh, yung uh, value yung services mo? No? Uh, alibawa, prompt ka in your uh, 
services hindi na PFNRT yung mga kliyente mo. No? So lamang ka doon sa uh, providing the same service sa iyo tapos yung mga compliance ng kliyente na relate na penalty na, na penalize then lamang ka, no? O kaya sa value added mo na service mo uh, mayroon ka pang post service, alimbawa tapos na yung kontrata mo with uh, your client or with your customer. Pero na po-provide ka pa rin ng post service sa kanila, na bibigay ka pa rin ng free na consultation. So, lamang ka, may value added ka in the form of your service. So, in that case, possibly na mag-add on ka ng mas mataas na price. No? Uh, if the product is in the form of services, nature and extent of the services provided. No? Kaya nga, sa parehong doktor lang, no? may doktor na mura lang maningil, meron din mahal, pero may mga value added sila. Sa dentist, no? meron yung dentist na uh, mura lang, meron namang dentist na ang mahal-mahal, pero ano yung diferensya? No? Mas maganda naman yung uh, services dun sa mahal. That's why, ang sabi nga ng iba, if you want a good service, then you have to pay for it. No? Gusto mo, magre-reklamo ka for yung service. Eh, gusto mo naman ng tawad ka ng tawad. Then, you have to pay for uh, good service. No? Pag uh, gusto mo maganda ng servisyo, maganda din ang presyo. Of, also, you have to consider in the comparable and controlled price method, you have to consider whether the goods are sold whether the goods sold are compared at the same points in the supply or production chain. Uh, in the supply or production chain, ano ba siya? Wholesale? Siyempre, ang wholesale price is different from the resale price or retail price. No? Asana mas mura? Mas mura siyempre pagka wholesale. No? Okay. So, same uh, points in the supply or production or chain. So, kung uh, sa wholesale siya, sa distributor's price siya, dapat, pag-compare mo, pareho silang distributor's price. No? Kung sa retail ka naman ng compare, dapat pareho silang retail price. And then next is the product differentiation in the form of patented features such as trademarks, designs, and others. So, ano yung sinasabi dito na product differentiation in the form of patented features no? such as trademarks or design? Yung sabi ko sa inyo na um, may ano siya, yung sikat yung kanyang brand, no? Branded, no? So, yung branded at saka hindi branded, siyempre magkaiba yan ang presyo. Pag branded, bakit mas mahal pag branded? Because sa uh, mga branded na mga manufacturer, they develop their names through times, no? At uh, isa pa, Kasama dun sa brand that they offer to the market is the quality and the assurance na good quality yung kanilang product. No? Kaya nakakapagkuman sila ng mataas or mahal na presyo in the market. No? So, pag sinabi mong patented yung features such as trademark design, nakaregister yan sa IPO or the Intellectual Property Office. Pag international naman yung brand, nakaregister yan sa WIPO or the World Intellectual Property Office. No? Saan yung World Intellectual Property Office natin? Nasa Geneva, Switzerland. Saan naman yung IPO natin or the Intellectual Property Office natin dito sa Pilipinas? Nasa Tagig po. No? So if you want na yung mga patents nyo, trademarks, your designs nyo are protected, you have to register that with the IPO or the Intellectual Property Office. At may babayaran po kayo doon. At... Uh, nag expire din yun, no? So, after the, before the expiration, dapat nag-file na kayo ulit, no? Para uh, protected palagi yung inyong mga designs at saka trademarks. Just like yung mga business name ngayon, di ba? Uh, for five years, five years lang, tapos expired na. Pagpunta mo, wala na kasi nabigay na sa iba, no? So, volume of sales, if it has an effect of price, no? Ano yun? You have to consider also na sa volume ng sales, nagkakaiba din yung presyo. Why? Halimbawa, pareho kayong uh, customer. 
Ang binibili mo is uh, 100,000 uh, pieces or units ng uh, product. As compared doon sa bumili lang ng 5,000 or 10,000 na product, sino yung mas makakamura? Siyempre yung bumili ng 100,000 as compared doon sa 10,000 na yung nabili niya. Also, ang volume of sales or uh, volume of purchases na mayroong ginawa ang customer has also an effect in price. No? Kasi the, the higher the volume of uh, sales, the higher din yung, uh, the, the cheaper din yung price. No? Kasi mas marami kang binili, pwede kang bigyan ng mas cheaper na price. Okay. Another important consideration for the comparable and controlled price method is the timing of sale if it is affected by seasonal fluctuations or other changes in market conditions. So, kailan mo ba binenta yung uh, goods mo na masyado mataas ang presyo? No? Uh, usually, nangyayari yan pag December, no? yung mga um, goods natin, nagtaasan na, no? pati mga pagkain, nagtaasan. And then after that, babalik ulit sa normal. No? So, ano yun? Seasonal fluctuations or other changes in market conditions. No? So, uh, na-affecta dyan ang price. No? Sa so, timing of sale, the price is affected. No? And then number seven, whether cost of transport, packaging, marketing, advertising, and warranty are included in the deal. Once na gumagawa kayo ng comparability analysis using the price or comparable uncontrolled price method and ma-discover ninyo na meron siyang uh, difference, no? Limbawa, ito ah. Saan na yung pangsulat natin, Hari? Akin na. Ah. Hari, pangsulat ako. Dito, kaya ba? Kaya ba dyan? Kikita. Okay na. Okay. Sistay mo doon. Okay. So, example po ito ha. Na, 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 nagko-compare tayo ng price. No? So, Halimbawa na lang yung ating uh, uh, item is shoes, no? So, paano ba mag-drawing ng shoes? O, oh, mukha ba siyang shoes? Hindi. No? Hindi siya mukhang shoes. Sige lang, basta shoes yan. So, halimbawa yung isang shoes, ang price niya is 700, no? And then, si A shoes is uh, 500. And then, si B shoes is 1,000, no? Pareho lang silang shoes. No? Pareho lang silang shoes. Okay. No? So, pareho lang silang shoes. Pero bakit si B, so, unrelated parties, or independent, si B is independent, no? Independent. Okay. So, bakit siya 1,000? CA, ito yung dependent or related no? parties. So, bakit 700 lang yung kanya? So, hindi sila equal, di ba? Hindi sila pareho, pero same lang sila na shoes, same na product. No? So, sabi nga natin, we have to compare, magko-compare tayo. So, magkano difference? No? 700 at saka yung um, 1,000. So, the difference is 300. So, tingnan natin. Upon examination, nag-comparability analysis tayo, we found out na dito si B, the independent party, ang dami pa niyang charges. Dito sa 1,000, meron siyang mga charges dito. No? Ano yung charges niya? So, yung sinasabi dito, what are the charges? The cost of transport, the packaging, the marketing, advertising, warranty are included in the deal. So, ano pa? Yung transport, kasama. Ano pa? Advert advertising, no? Advertisement, kasama, no? 
if you want to total this, yung transport at saka advertisement, magtototal siya ng 200, no? Okay. So, that accounts for the um, difference, no? Siya, 700 lang, pero wala naman kasama na transport at saka advertisement. So, you account that for 200, pagkano pa yung kulang? So, uh, 800 na lang ito kasi bawas mo yung 200 minus 700. So, may difference pa rin na 100, no? Okay. So, during the comparability analysis mo, meron kang uh, 700, tapos ito si B na independent, you have analyzed na itong 200 para pala to sa transport at saka advertisement. So, ang unaccounted mo dito is 100. So, ano itong magiging uh, mangyayari dito sa 100? Ito yung comparability adjustment mo. No? So, halimbawa, during the year, si related parties, nagbenta siya ng 700, no? uh, ng uh, shoes at 700. Pero ang tamang price pala niyan is 800, no? So, dapat that the correct price is 800, no? Based on the uh, comparability analysis, nag-adjust tayo ng 100, no? This is the adjustment. So, dapat pala 800. So, during the year, si A was able to uh, market nakabenta siya ng ganitong klase na shoes ng 2,000 pieces. No? 2,000 pieces. So, i-base natin yan sa adjustment ng tag-100, magkano yung uh, i-add natin doon sa uh, income ni A? 100 times 2,000. No? So, i-multiply natin yan sa 100. So, we have uh, 200,000 additional income as adjustment to A. No? So, ganun po na mag-work yung ating uh, comparability adjustment. May question ba sa clarification? Wala na? Sabi mo kanina may two. Uh, uh, pero after na yun. Oh, sige. Okay, so ganun po. When we, when we compare, we have to consider also yung uh, other cost, no? The cost of the transport, the packaging, marketing, advertising. Ang sabi dito, if included in the deal. No? So, na, na, based on the analysis natin, kasama pala yung transport and advertisement, kaya nagbenta siya ng 1,000. No? So, uh, the correct price is 800. Eh, binenta lang ni related party ng uh, 700. So, kulang siya ng 100. Doon papasok yung adjustment natin. Okay. Pag halimbawa, 800 yung benta niya, wala tayong adjustment. Halimbawa naman, binenta niya ng 900. Then, meron din adjustment, but negative na 100. No? So, depende sa result ng ating uh, analysis. Okay. Okay. So, whether the products are sold in places where the economic conditions are the same, no? So, halimbawa, yung market natin, Asia, no? So, yung ginawa namin doon, yung uh, sa transportation, no? Sa Asian market. Uh, possibly, because uh, halimbawa, sa Asia, is the same yung economic conditions. Hindi, hindi lang sa iba na talagang malayo or iba ang uh, economic conditions. No? So, yung comparables mo dapat, same economic conditions. Kasi pag hindi, mag-adjust ka ngayon on the uh, difference ng economic condition. I-adjust mo yan to make them similar or equal. No? And number nine, whether a business strategy is adapted in the controlled transactions. Halimbawa, dito sa example natin, nag-business strategy siya, nag-advertise siya because bago lang siya sa uh, market. So, ano ginawa niya? Nag-massive uh, advertisement muna siya para uh, makilala yung product niya in the market. No? So, anong ginawa niya? 
binenta niya ng uh, 1,000 yung kanyang uh, shoes. Pero kahit na 1,000 shoes na siya, may business strategy siya, the independent party, mas mababa pa rin itong uh, related parties na kilala na sa market. So, kaya anong ginawa natin? Nag-adjust tayo. No? Okay. So, yung business strategies po, iba-iba yan ang ginagawa ng uh, company. No? They, they may employ different uh, business strategies in order to improve their business. Dapat din sa uh, business strategies that is being adapted by the company, nandyan pa rin yung business reasons or the, the uh, commercial, commercial rationality of the uh, strategies uh, na inadapt nila, no? Kasi, limbawa, gumawa ka nga ng business strategies, pero hindi naman siya, uh, wala naman siyang business reasons or kung baga sa ano, there is no economic substance for that business strategies, then that is not arm's length and hindi siya acceptable, no? So, transfer pricing. Okay. So, uh, we have studied the comparable and controlled price method, then let's now go to the resale price method. Ano po ba yung resale price method? No? So, kanina, we compare the price. Sa resale price method naman, this is another method in transfer pricing wherein it begins with the price no? at which the product that has been purchased from an associated enterprise is resold to an independent enterprise. No? Kasi nga, magkukumpare nga tayo, di ba, na related enterprise to the independent enterprise. So, it compares the gross profit margin earned in the control transaction to the gross profit margin realized in comparable and control transactions. So, anong basis natin in comparing dito? Kanina, sa comparable and control price, we compare the price. Dito naman, we compare the gross profit margin. So, when we compute the gross profit margin, ano yung ating uh, computation? Sales less cost of sales equals gross profit. No? So, ano yung i-compare natin? The gross profit margin earned in the control transaction. Bakit? Kasi ang resale price method, <coughs> meron tayong binili na product and then wala tayong so much value added, binenta natin ulit. No? So, ano yung uh, ano natin? Ano yung uh, sa resale price natin? Ano yung uh, minarkup natin doon? No? Uh, yan yung ating uh, gross profit, which is the amount that we mark up on the resale. Kasi wala naman tayong uh, binago. So, uh, yung add-on natin doon, that will comprise our gross profit margin. No? Okay. For tax purposes, ano yung uh, pwede natin i-deduct sa sales? The cost, no? Yung direct cost lang, no? At cost, hindi tayo yung, halimbawa, yung binenta mo is uh, tangible uh, property or real property, halimbawa. Tapos, ang ginamit mong cost is the uh, market value. Hindi pwede, no? For the cost, Cost lang talaga kung magkano mo siyang binili, pin or chase, yun lang yung pwede mong i-deduct in order to arrive at the gross profit. Okay. So, anong gagawin dito po sa resale price method? You compare the gross profit margin earned in the controlled transaction to the gross profit margin realized in comparable and controlled transaction. So, always remember na sa transfer pricing, ang i-compare natin palagi, the controlled transactions and the uncontrolled transaction. Why? Kasi nakita ko, no, I read some cases, na sabi ng tax authority, uh, uh, your uh, pricing is not arm's length. No? And in this situation, ito dapat ang ginagawa ng uh, independent transactions. But sabi naman ng court, okay, you're, you're alleged that hindi ito yung tamang price. No? And in the certain circumstances, ito dapat sa independent party. Pero wala ka namang ipakita na independent party or comparables na ito yung ginawa niya ng independent party. No? 
So ano nangyari? Talo yung tax authority. Why? Kasi pag sinabi mo kasi na nag-compare ka, dapat i-compare mo yung related party transactions with that of the independent party transactions. So meron kang point of comparison. Eh, sinasabi mo na that is just as an allegation. Wala ka namang ipipresent ng comparables na ito yung ginagawa ng independent party. Talo ka. Kasi comparability ito eh. Compare. Eh wala ka namang i-compare. No? Sinasabi mo lang na hindi arms length pero wala kang ipipresent na uh, comparables. Then, talo. No? Kasi hindi mo mapatunayan na hindi nga arm, arms length yung uh, transaction ng related parties. Okay? Okay. So, for the resale price method, ano sabi dito? Ito yung uh, i-purchase mo lang no? yung certain product and then without uh, adding so much cost, hindi ka na nag uh, dagdag pa ng mga uh, additional cost. No? Binenta mo lang kaagad. Halimbawa, nag nagbenta ka ng uh, bumili ka ng um, product. No? Kung ano yung itsura niya na, na binili mo, binenta mo na kaagad. Hindi yung, uh, halimbawa, may binili kang product, tapos binago mo pa yung packaging, no? Pinalitan mo pa ng your own packaging. Tapos yung uh, tsura niya, binago mo pa, no? Tapos nag-advertise ka pa, napagkadabidami. No? So, iba na yun. Hindi, hindi na applicable doon yung resale price. Sa resale price kasi, simple lang yung ginawa mo, binili mo lang yung product and then binenta mo with no so much value added on the product. No? Binenta mo na lang kaagad. Okay? So, yun po yung resale price method. Although, yung uh, mga methods na sinasabi natin sa inyo, all have its own strength and weaknesses. Dito naman sa resale price method, ano yung uh, strength and weakness naman po ng uh, resale price method. So, yung resale price, simple lang siya na i-apply, no? Hindi, hindi siya complicated. But the resale price also... Um, magkaroon siya ng tested party, no? So, uh, during the study, dapat meron kang tested party performing the uh, list complex. No? Sa resale price method example, ang parent company mo is your uh, manufacturing company and then uh, the distributor is a related party papunta sa customer, no? So, in our example, from the manufacturer to the reseller or distributor to the customer, ang tatlong parties na yan, hahanapan mo yung list complex, ang tested party mo dyan is the distributor. No? Why? Kasi yung distributor, under the resale price method, napaka-simple lang ng kanyang ginawa. No? Unlike sa manufacturer, which is the parent company, ano yung ginagawa no? sa manufacturing? Complicated. Why? Kasi mag-procure pa siya ng raw materials, meron pa siyang mga designs, Meron pa siyang mga secret formula, the processes, no? So, maraming um, proseso ang mag magagawa pagka manufacturing companies ka. Unlike na distributor ka lang, bumili ka lang ng uh, product from your parent company and then binenta mo na sa customer, no? Diretso na sa kanila. So, less lang yung... Uh, complicated yung inyong ginawa. So, uh, ang distributor dito is the tested party for purposes of computing or comparing the, using the resale price method. Okay. So, ano po yung weakness ng resale price method? Kung walang information about the gross profit. No? Kasi bakit walang information about the gross profit? Hindi halimbawa na supply ng comparables mo. No? Ayaw ibigay. No? So, wala kang Uh, comparables. Okay. Now, let's go to the cost plus method. Ano, ano naman po itong cost plus method na sinasabi? No? The cost plus method compares a selling price using cost plus overhead plus profits method arrive at in dealing with the arms length party to the actual cost plus the overhead to arrive at the markup uh, percentage. No? So, the markup so calculated plus total actual transfer cost will result in the transfer price. No? So, yung total na markup niya, 
na na-calculate mo plus the total actual transfer cost will result in the transfer price. No? So, ano yun? Yung markup daw plus yung actual uh, transfer cost equals the transfer price. No? So, ano yun? Cost plus markup. Kaya nga yung tawag sa kanya, cost plus markup. Why? Kasi yung cost mo, dagdagan mo ng certain uh, markup, so, yun na yung uh, price, no? Yung price mo. Transfer price, no? So, in computing for the arms and price using the cost plus method or the CPM, first to consider is the cost incurred by the suppliers or services in the control transaction. So, you have to consider the cost. And then, a reasonable amount is then added to the cost considering the functions performed and the market conditions prevalent during the transaction. So, so <clears throat> may actual ako na audit dito using the cost plus method. No? Uh, ano yung kanilang company? Their companies are engaged in construction. No? So, ano ginawa nung company na yan? <clears throat> in outsource niya dito, sa Pilipinas, yung kanyang mga uh, architectural designs, no? Sa, ang kanyang uh, site, construction site, is in Saudi Arabia. The company is based in Paris, France. At pin-outsource niya dito sa Pilipinas yung kanyang mga engineering works or yung mga designs niya, yung mga architectural designs na dito sa Pilipinas, no? So, na-audit ko yung company. <clears throat> And then, I was thinking, bakit ganito lang yung, uh, ano yun, netlo sila eh. Bakit ganito lang yung inyong uh, income, ito ganito kalaki yung expenses, no? So, uh, ma'am, kasi ang nangyayari dyan, wala naman po talaga kaming income, no? Kasi sabi niya, cost lang kami, tapos uh, may pinapagawa sa amin yung head office, and then dagdagan lang nila ng markup, and that's it, no? Yun yung natatanggap namin. So, sabi niya, we, we really don't have business here in the Philippines. Sabi ko, anong ginagawa nila? Yun lang daw uh, mga plano, art architectural designs ng um, company na gagamitin nila sa Saudi. Yun lang yung pinapa-outsource dito. So, anong ginamit nila? The cost plus method. No? So, ano naman ngayon yung titingnan mo pag uh, mag-compare ka na using the cost plus method? No? So, titingnan mo ngayon Magkano ba yung uh, charges ng related party transactions when it comes to cost as compared to that of independent party transactions? No? If you are, uh, sa example natin, no? uh, sa cost plus method, if you are the provider of services here in the Philippines, magkano yung cost mo? Yun yung mga salaries ng mga engineers, no? yung mga architects na uh, gumagawa dito. No? So, anong ginawa nila? Nag-mark up lang sila ng uh, 5% or 10% and yan na yung uh, pambaya dito. So, in short, wala talagang business na nangyari dito sa Pilipinas. Bakit? Kasi wala naman silang sales. No? Ang sales na dun sa France. Tapos ang trabaho na dun sa Saudi. So, itong Itong dito sa Pilipinas, support services lang siya, no? Okay. And they are using the cost plus method, no? So, wala, wala namang nag-object. And they are not under uh, transfer pricing audit. So, anong mangyayari? Acceptable lang na cost plus method. But if there is a transfer pricing audit, at saka may guidelines na tayo, hindi na applicable yung cost plus sa kanila. Ano na? Transactional net margin method, no? Kasi, <clears throat> bakit? Or profit split method. Bakit? Because their uh, transactions or their activities is such that it is highly integrated. Bakit highly integrated? Kasi yung ginagawa ng uh, company dito sa Pilipinas na mga architects at saka engineers, yung mga plano, pinapadala yan doon sa France. And then pagdating sa France, ang France ang naghahanap ng mga uh, kontrata And then, kung saan yung site, doon niya dadalhin yun. No? So, in short, in short, the company here in the Philippines is not doing business. No? So, in the parlance of the econo of economics, the, the Philippine company is not doing any business. It is doing service to the parent company. No? 
So in that case, hindi siya pwede na cost plus method ang gagamitin mo. Bakit? Dapat sa kanya ang profit split. Why profit split? Because the the operation is highly integrated. Bakit highly integrated? Kasi hindi mabuo yung buong transaction from the inception of the contract hanggang sa implementation niya. Hindi mabuo yan kung uh, walang participation yung Philippines dito na gumagawa ng uh, mga architectural design at saka plano. No? Okay. So, sa cost plus... You have to consider the cost incurred by the supplier of goods or services in the control transactions. No, a reasonable amount is then added to the cost, considering the functions performed and market conditions prevalent during the transaction. No, so yun naman yung titingnan mo. What is prevalent or ano ano yung dapat gawin in the present market conditions. After adding the cost plus markup, no, may cost na, tapos nagdagda na tayo ng markup, the cost is most useful for the sale of semi-finished goods no, between associated parties with long-term supply contracts provisions of services. No? So kasi i-add mo na yung cost tapos ang, ang markup, no? so yung sabi dito, the cost is the most useful for the sale of semi-finished goods. No? Bakit semi-finished goods? Kasi it requires further processing pa. No? Between associated enterprises with long-term supply contracts provision of services. No? Kasi kahit sila lang, pag nagkukontrata sila, may mga agreement sila, the, the related parties should also execute the documents. No? Ano yung mga documents? The associated parties with long-term supply contracts provision of services. Okay. So, transactional profit methods. Kasi natapos na natin yung traditional transaction methods. Ano yun? Okay, may lamok na naman hari. Yung traditional transaction methods are the comparable and control price method, the resale price method, and the profit split method. You know? Now, let's go to the uh, transactional profit methods. The two methods under the transactional profit methods are the transactional net margin method, which uses the net margin as a point of comparison, and the profit uh, split method na dalawa na siya. No? The residual profit split and the uh, contribution profit split. Okay. Actually, sabi ko na nga sa inyo, wala lang tayo masyadong time. No? Pero, uh, sana kung one day itong uh, as, uh, ano atin, transfer pricing methods, kasi dapat one day yan eh. No? Karoon tayo ng mga computations at saka examples. Anyway, ang gagawin ninyo to understand better, basahin ninyo yung OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines kasi ang dami po mga scenarios at saka mga examples na nilagay dyan no? on the transfer pricing methods. No? Kasi, bakit? Napaka-importante sa atin itong uh, transfer pricing methods. Why? Because when we do our transfer pricing analysis, anong gagawin natin? I-incorporate natin to to sa transfer pricing analysis natin. No? We apply all the, all the methods and then recommend the best method. And there can be no comparability kung wala kang methods, no? It even reaches the court, ha? Ito yung mga nakakatawa na sa mga nakarating na sa court, eh. No? May case doon na although nanalaw pa rin yung uh, tax authorities. Why? Kasi ang transfer pricing naman is common sense, no? So common sense lang. So ano nangyari doon sa case na yun? wala siyang trans na na alleged lang niya na walang uh, hindi arms length yung uh, transaction no yung transactions ng 
related party. Inaalage lang ng tax authorities. Pero sabi ng uh, Court of Tax Appeal, no? Sinag na sa appeal na sila. Sabi ng Court of Tax Appeal, wala ka naman transfer pricing methods na inapply dito, no? Pero although during the deliberations, maganda yung presentation ng mm, tax authorities against the taxpayers, sila pa rin yung nanalo, no? At ano yung verdict ng uh, judge or ng justice sa atin, no? Sa Court of Tax Appeal, they are called justices, no? So, anong verdict niya? Kahit daw walang transfer pricing methods na uh, in-apply, kasi yun yung issue ng, ano eh, ng uh, opponent, no? Ng kalaban, na wala daw transfer pricing issues na in-apply, no? So, anong ginawa ng judge? Panalo pa rin yung task authorities. Why? Kasi sometimes, pwedeng implied mo na lang eh, na ito yung uh, uh, methods na ginamit mo, no? It, it will show naman doon sa na ginawa mo na transactions. Ano ba, nag-compare ka ng um, using this uh, transactional net margin na limbawa, no? So, who pwede na na walang uh, transfer pricing methods? No? So, in that case, panalo pa rin yung tax authority. No? Kahit wala siyang transfer pricing methods na uh, nirecommend. No? Okay. So, transactional net margin method examines the profits arising from the controlled transactions or transactions between associated enterprises. No? So, ano yung ini-examine niya? The profits no? arising from the control transactions. The total profit of the transaction made between the non-arms and parties is allocated on a fair basis to each of the parties. No? So, yun yung mga non-arms and parties daw should be allocated on a fair basis to each of the parties. Okay. So, profits are usually calculated before taxes and interest and in some cases, gross profit is used. No? So, ano ba yung profits natin? How do we calculate that? EBIT, no? Earnings before income tax. No? So, before taxes. Why? Kasi ang taxes, hindi na yan pwedeng kumuha pa ng deductions. No? So, calculated before taxes and interest. And some cases, gross profit is used. No? So, the allocation will depend on such factors as functions performed, assets used, and risk assumed by each of them. In other words, each of their contribution. So, remember, ha, na itong transactional net profit method, highly um, susceptible or affected siya ng... Um, FAR analysis or the functions, assets, and risk. No? When we say functions, ano yun? Yung mga uh, functions or uh, activities na ginagawa ng taxpayer. No? Okay. So, these assets used and the risk assumed by each of them. No? Yung mga parties dun sa uh, transaction or commercial and uh, financial transactions. Huh? Okay. Dito tayo sa uh, transactional net margin, no? Method. Okay. So, it examines the profit margin relative to the appropriate base, no? Cost, sales, or assets. Then, a taxpayer realizes from a controlled transaction or transaction that are appropriate to aggregate no, under the principles of this, the chapter ng OECD. So, the transactional net margin method operates in a manner similar to the cost plus and resale price methods. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, kanina, itong tatlong method na to, the cost plus and resale price methods, um, and ito yung transactional net margin method uses the tested party. No? or the less complex uh, functions. Okay. Similarly means that in order to be applied reliably, 
the transactional net margin method must be applied in a manner consistent with the manner which the recent price of cost plus method is applied. Okay. So, yun yung sinasabi niya similarly. Excuse me. So, ano yung i-compare natin sa transactional net margin method? The net margin should be applied consistent with the resale price or cost plus method. Okay. So, this means that in a particular this in a particular that the net margin of the taxpayer from the control transaction should ideally be established by reference to the net margin that the same taxpayer earns in comparable and controlled transactions. No? Okay. Yun yung uh, net margin ng taxpayer. Paano natin na-arrive yung computation ng net margin? Uh, we have the sales list, cost of sales, or direct cost equals gross profit, less operating expenses. So, yun na po yung uh, amount natin na <clears throat> uh, i-compare natin kasi uh, we determine now the net margin. Huh? Okay. So, yun po yung transactional uh, net margin method. Now, let's go to the uh, profit split method, no? So, ano naman po itong profit split method? We split the profits from the term itself, no? We split the profits. And I will show to you yung uh, June 2018 na guidance ng uh, ito, na revised guidelines po ng OECD when it comes to uh, splitting of profits, no? So, ito yun. Oh, ano yung sabi niya dito? Uh, revised guidance on the application of the transactional profit split method. No? So, we're talking now of the profit split. Kasi itong profit split, nung nag, nasabi yan pa ako, nag-audit ako ng transfer pricing, ito yung recommended uh, methods ko instead of the cost plus. No? Okay. Okay, so, ano po yung nakalagay dito at ano yung in-explain in -explain itong guidelines pertaining to the profit split method? We have the, uh, what is a transactional profit split method likely to be the most appropriate method? So, kailan ang profit split method would be the most appropriate method o siya talaga yung dapat under the circumstances? No? And then, uh, guidance for the application, uh, in general, and also in determining the profit to be split. And yung pinaka <clears throat> huli na sa lahat, the splitting of profits themselves. No? So, nung sa akin, ano yung pina split ko na profit? No? Kasi yung ginamit nila, cost plus. Uh, ako, ang recommendation ko is the profit split. Why? Kasi highly integrated yung business. Pag ginawa mo kasi cost plus, lalo mong dinagdagan yung income ng uh, parent company somewhere. No? So, lalo mo namang niliitan yung uh, income na babayaran mo dito sa Pilipinas. No? So, the profit split method is generally used to remove the effect of special conditions. No? Ano yung special conditions? Imposed or present in the transactions between related or associated enterprise. By comparing the division of profits between uncontrolled or independent enterprise engaging on similar transactions or business activities. So, since um, five comparability methods or transfer pricing methods yung pinag-usapan natin, lahat yan, i-apply mo yan na ang kinocompare mo the uh, related parties at ang pinag-comparean mo is the uh, independent party. No? Okay. 
So in the profit split method, ano yung gagawin dito? Split the profit, no? Ibig sabihin paghati-hatiin yung profit. That's why yung OECD transfer pricing guidelines, yung Center for Tax Policy and Administration in the World, gumugawa sila ng um, mga uh, scheme na makakatulong, no? especially dito sa uh, profit split na to. Kasi ang hirap nito i-apply. No? Unang-una na, when you split the profit, ano yung maging basis mo? Of course, you have to establish the factor that you are going to use. No? <clears throat> so, uh, the first step is to identify the combined profits to be split. Pag samasamahin mo muna yung profit bago mo siya siyempre split. No? To be split from the control transactions in which the associated enterprises are engaged. No? So, i-combine mo talaga yung uh, profit split ng control transaction. No? So, it then splits those profits between the associated enterprises on an economically valid basis that approximates the division of profits that would have been anticipated. No? Okay. So, i-allocate mo siya ngayon, i-combine mo yung mga profits, and then, i-split mo na. No? Paano mo sila i-split using daw the economically valid basis? No? Okay. Ano, ano yung uh, valid basis na yun? Okay. Approximates the division of profits that would have been anticipated and reflected in an agreement made at arm's length. No? So, sa strength naman ng profit split method is that it generally does not rely directly or closely on comparable transactions. And it can therefore be used in cases when no transactions between independent enterprises can be identified. No? So, another strength is that under the profit split method, it is likely that either party to the control transactions will be left with an extreme and improbable profit result no? since both parties to the transactions are evaluated. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> Ilan pa yung viewers natin? Ilan yung questions natin? Ha? Ah? Okay. <clears throat> Sige, kasi uh, maiksi na lang din ito eh. No? <clears throat> para, para punta na tayo dun sa question and answers. No? So, for the residual profit the split method, kasi under the profit split, meron tayong contribution profit split at meron tayong residual profit split. No? So, ano itong residual profit split? The combined profits are split into ways. Dalawang way, no? Ways. Dalawang ways. So, each associated enterprises is allocated in arm's length remuneration for its non-unique contributions in relation to the control transactions in which it's in, it is engaged. No, ano daw dapat dito? Sa residual profit, i-credit ka, bibigyan ka ng... Uh, profit mo based on your unique contribution, no? So, unique yung contribution mo sa um, company. Okay. So, the initial remuneration is determined by applying one of the traditional transaction methods or a transactional net margin method by reference to the remuneration of comparable transactions between independent enterprises, no? So, so, ano daw dapat? Initially, consider mo yung transactional net margin method, no? Okay. And then, any residual profit or loss, no? Remaining after the first stage or division is allocated based on the analysis of facts and circumstances, taking into consideration the unique 
pa ano mo nga to hari erase mo nga Asa na ayun din? Sige. So, any residual profit or loss remaining after the first stage or division is allocated based on the analysis of past and circumstances taking into consideration the unique contribution of its participant to the business transactions. No? Okay. Kaya nga, residual. No? Residual profit. May natira pa doon sa profit no okay okay so dito po sa profit split na to sa residual okay so anong gagawin no combine the profit so ito mga related parties si A B C at saka si D no So, limbawa, yung total profits nila is uh, 100 million or 1 million. No? Okay. So, total profits ni A, B, C, and D is 1 million. So, you have to um, know kung ano yung mga functions nila at saka ano yung contributions nila dito sa profit. So, limbawa, si B is the manufacturer. No? Si B is the distributor. No? Si C is the retailer. Si D is the uh, procurement or uh, siya yung uh, bumibili ng mga purchaser, no? Purchasing siya. O, and warehousing, halimbawa. Okay. So, since may iba-iba sila na mga unique uh, distribution, sa residual profit split method, si manufacturer, halimbawa, Since complicated yung kanyang role, magkano yung ibibigay sa kanya na uh, profit muna, no? At saka si uh, B, si C, at saka si D. No? So, bibigyan siya, sila natin ng uh, profit for their contribution, no? So, bibigyan natin halimbawa si manufacturer kasi complicated yung kanyang gawa ng 100,000, no? Si B, since distributor siya, hindi masyado, 30,000. Si C, sa as retailer, also 30,000. And then si D, since purchaser siya, sa kanya galing yung lahat ng raw materials papunta kay manufacturer, bigyan natin siya ng 50K. No? So how much is that? 150, 210. No? So ang total niyan is 210. Thousand, no? So, the total uh, profit, ito yung profit, ah. So, the total profit is uh, 1 million less 210. So, magkano yan? Uh, 90. 790, no? So, dito sa 790 na to, ito yung residual profit. No? So, yun yung residual profit after uh, giving the Uh, profit sa bawat isa based on their uh, unique contribution. So, the residual profit is 790,000. No? Gagawa tayo ngayon ng uh, factors or ng variables na based na naman dito sa uh, participation ni A, B at saka si D. So, i, -i Gawa natin sila ng percentage. Sa nimbawa, since si, si A yung manufacturer, bigyan natin siya ng 50%. No? 50% of the 790. Si B naman, bibigyan natin siya ng uh, distributor siya, no? 15%. No? 15%. Si C, bigyan natin siya ng 10%. No? And then si Uh, D, magkano yung bibigay natin sa kanya to make up the 790, so 25%. This is just an example. Ha? So, all in all, uh, 100%. So, makukuha din natin yung 790,000. Ito yung residual. First, bigyan mo muna sila ng kanilang uh, profit based on their contribution and then yung matera, yun na yung i- Prorate mo sa kanila. 
No, yun po yung residual. Ibig sabihin, meron pang first stage ng uh, distribution and then yung um, matera sa ka magbibigay sa kanila ng percentage. So, in the contribution or uh, profit split method, kasi residual yun eh. No? So, so, the combined profits coming from the profits of associated enterprises and their control transactions are split or divided between associated enterprises based on their contribution. So, first stage lang. I-analyze mo ngayon ano ba yung mga contributions nila and then wala na yung una na states, no? Dito ka na sa percentage, no? <clears throat> Yan yung sa contribution, profit split. Mas madali siya kaysa doon sa residual. Okay? So, the functions performed in the control transaction which should be substantiated by external market. No? So, ano ba yung sabi na should be substantiated by external market? Balik na naman tayo doon sa related parties at saka sa independent parties. Such that when you divide the profit based on the contribution of these uh, uh, related parties, ano dapat? Ito dapat yung ginagawa ng independent parties on how they split their profit. So, uh, para mapatunayan natin na arm's length, no? Kaya nga sabi dito, it should be substantiated by the external, external market wherein uh, the independent parties or the unrelated parties are splitting their profit based also on that uh, criteria. No? So, information showing how independent enterprises would have divided profits in similar circumstances. No? So, paano ba nagdi-divide ng profit yung independent enterprises? Uh, taking into consideration na similar yung circumstances. No? So, yun yung sabi ko sa inyo na natatalo yung case pagdating sa court. Why? Because allegations lang na ito dapat ang uh, pag-split ng profit. But, walang independent parties na issue yung tax authorities na ito yung ginagawa ng independent party. And, meron naman akong uh, isang case, no? na nabasa sa transfer pricing. Uh, Nag-divide na sila ng profits. And then, ang uh, taxpayer was able to show uh, comparable transactions na ito ang ginagawa ng independent party transactions. So, ayaw paniwalaan ng, ano, ng company, ng tax authorities na yun ang ginagawa ng uh, independent party transactions kasi para sa kanila gawa-gawa lang yung independent party transactions no para lang magkaroon ng comparables but during the prosecution yun ang allegation ng tax authority they were not able to prove na gawa-gawa nga lang yun yung independent party na uh, comparables na yun so ano nangyari panalo yung taxpayers why kasi sa nakikita ko pagdating sa korte. Po. Kaya documentations are very important. Why? Kasi kahit gaano pa kaganda yung mga allegations mo, yung mga sinasabi mo, kung wala kang documents, talo ka pa rin. No? Okay. So, let's now go to the best method rule. Ano ba yung best method rule? So, gagawa tayo ng transfer pricing analysis. We apply all the methods. So, we start with the comparable and controlled price method. No? Ano yung comparable and control price method? We compare the price. No? Yung price. But of course, same product. We compare the price of the product to that same product sold by independent party. No? So, next na method is the resale price method. Anong gagawin natin? We uh, compare also the gross profit ng related party and with that of the independent party. No? So, yun yung resale price method. Yung isa pa is the uh, cost plus method. So, sa cost plus method, uh, ito yung sabi ko din sa inyo na may findings ako during my audit na sa cost plus, meron na silang agreement that the cost is plus 5%. Pero sa kanilang FS, 
3% lang yung gross profit. No, so ano ibig sabihin nun? 3% lang yung minark up nila, yung plus nila, which is already a violation of the contractual terms. No? So, sa cost plus method, we compare also the gross profit. And kanino gross profit yan? The gross profit of the related party transactions compare that with the gross profit of the independent transactions. So, dapat daw uh, walang material effect or kung meron man ang um, transactions na kinukompare mo that can be adjusted no? to make them similar. And then yung uh, next natin na method is the transactional net margin method. Kailan yan ginagawa at papaano mo i-compare, no? So, sa transactional net margin method, you compare the net margin of the related party with that of the net margin of the independent party. At kailan usually ginagamit ang transactional net margin method if there are no available information. No? At saka, uh, no available information to determine the gross profit rate. No? Kaya gagamitin mo ngayon yung transactional net margin method because you were able to determine the net margin. And, kailan pa? If, sa transactional net margin method, if the uh, company or the entity has a contribution no, na intangible or there is a contrib uh, intangibles involved in the transaction. So, gagamitin mo yung transactional net margin method. And uh, our last method is yung dalawa nga na profit split method, which is yun ang tinututukan din ng OECD because the profit split is widely used. Karamihan yun daw ang dapat. No? Instead of karamihan ang ina-apply nila is cost plus method, uh, should be profit split method. That's why nga noong June 2018, the uh, OECD has came up with another, uh, with a very specific, regulations about the profit split method and how and when to split the profits. No? So, kailan mo i-split yung profits? If the uh, uh, operation is highly integrated, kailan siya maging highly integrated? Cycle yung product, hindi siya natatapos sa isang company lang or isang entity lang. No? So, lahat may participation para mabuo nila yung complete na uh, transactions. No? So, anong gagawin mo dun sa profit split? You have to split the profits using some factors. Sa residual profit split, bigyan mo muna ng uh, share yung kanila mga contributions. No? And then, yung matera o yung residue ng income, saka ka mo palang split among the parties. No? Sa contribution profit split naman, wala ka ng first level na first stage na uh, division of profits. Diretso ka na kaagad doon sa uh, i-divide mo na yung profits based on their contribution. No? And that contribution, saan mo yan ma-analyze? Sa kanilang functions. No? So, iba-iba ang functions, iba-iba yung contributions nila to the uh, business. No? Kaya, iba-iba uh, yung percentage din na pupunta sa mga entities, the related parties. But what is most important is that, ang sabi dito, that uh, the profit split between related entities should be the profit split also how the independent parties divide their profits. Kasi kung wala ka din namang comparables na ipakita, might as well matatalo ka rin. No? Kasi ang sabi nga natin, pagdating sa korte, eh, dapat documents, documentation. No? At uh, ano yung mga requirements natin sa documentation? It should be um, sufficient and reliable. No? And it should be contemporaneous. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng contemporaneous? Existing at the time of the transaction. No? Uh, okay, so what we got today? Uh, kasi uh, pupunta na tayo sa question and answers natin, no, Hari? Okay. So, what we got today, in the morning we discussed about the related parties. Why very important? Kaya balik, balikan po ninyo ang related parties. Why? Because in your transfer pricing analysis, always po yan na makikita nyo dyan at ipapakita nyo kahit dito sa, sa transfer pricing methods, the difference between the related parties and the independent parties. No? 
So we study about what is the related parties under IS24 or the International Accounting Standards 24. And then we have the uh, definition of control. Paano ba uh, nagkaroon ng um, control and the importance na we have to determine uh, the control in uh, the company. And then, uh, ano pa yung napag-aralan natin kanina umaga? Yung uh, meaning ng transfer pricing. No? And then the uh, basis of this arms and principle na ano yung pinakita ko sa inyo, the sources. No? We have the model OECD uh, convention, Article 9. We have the uh, Article 9 also of the treaty model. We have the Section 50 in our uh, National Internal Revenue Code. And we also have the Section 482 of the U.S. Internal Revenue Code. That's why nga sabi ko nga sa inyo, and even the tax jurisprudence of the U.S. is applicable dito sa Pilipinas. No? Kasi pa, doon naka-pattern yung ating uh, uh, in IRC or the National Internal Revenue Code. No? So in the afternoon, ano yung, yung ginawa natin? We, we discuss about comparability analysis and also uh, the comparability adjustment and the transfer pricing methods. No? So although hindi natin nakocover lahat ng topics sa transfer pricing, to understand better, basahin ninyo yung, yung mga guida, guidance no, na uh, United Nations Manual at saka yung sa uh, OECD Transfer Pricing Manual na 2007 para mas naintindihan nyo. And then you have to read about the uh, intra-group services, cost contribution arrangement, business restructurings, and the most important intangibles. No? So, tingnan ninyo, ninyo, basahin ninyo yung mga indices, yung mga index at the, at the likod ng uh, libro, no? ng OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines. Basahin ninyo yung lahat yun. And then, we also have the... Um, may telepono. No? So, lahat yun. Uh, those are very important, no? You expand your knowledge. Uh, yung mga sinasabi ko, na the download po yan sa internet, no? So, meron pa sana akong video showing sa inyo na maiksi lang, pero bukas na. Bukas na kasi uh, after this, magkaroon pa tayo ng question and answer, no? So, I allotted uh, time to answer your question. So, reminder ko lang sa inyo that the BR Form 1709 is already an attachment po sa ating annual income tax return. So, by this time, dapat meron na kayong data on that sa related parties. At yung iba, ayaw na nila mapagawa ng transfer pricing analysis. Pwede din naman po yun. Why? Kasi ang BIR Form 1709 are also are only disclosures. no? Pero ano naman yung advantage pagka nagpagawa pa ng transfer pricing analysis ang... Uh, ang company ito yon no during the transfer pricing analysis just like ito na uh, gawa ko ha I, I call up the management kasi meron na po mga transfer pricing issues na nakita ko so ano ang maganda if nagpagawa na kayo ng transfer pricing analysis report before you file your income tax return at before you fill up your BIR form 1709 ano yung kagandahan ma-amend nyo pa yung inyong return o kaya makapag-adjust pa kayo to conform with the uh, uh, regulations. E gumawa na lang kayo, hindi nyo alam, may potential findings kayo pagdating sa examiner. No? So, yun yung magiging disadvantage. At sana hindi yun will cost you millions of pesos. No? Kasi ang transfer pricing, ang laki po ng findings dito. Millions, billions. No? Okay, so with that, I would like to say thank you po sa ating mga participants. Doon sa mga wala naman ng questions, then uh, pwede na kayo. Pero sa mga may questions, then stay pa po tayo, no? Kasi sagutin natin yung inyong mga questions. Sige. See? Uh, sige, sige. Sige. Live tayo eh. Ah, anong sabi? Akin na. Oh, 
bukas na lang. Okay. Sige. Uh, let's now go to bukas na lang. Okay. So, let's now go to the question and answer po, no? Kasi may mga client tayo na, no? At saka yung ating transfer pricing analysis. Uh, yung sa mga malalapit lang dito, no? Sa, sa Metro Manila, pag may mga problema kayo about transfer pricing analysis, you can call us. Bigay mo sa kanila yung ating telepono, Harry, ha? Para maka-help tayo sa inyo. And uh, you will be guided. Doon naman sa iba, siguro email na lang po kayo. You have our email already. O kaya chat. Pero mahirap kasi yung chat eh. Email na lang. No? Kasi mas mahirap yung chat. Sa email kasi pwede mong i-print pa. Ano? At saka mahaba sa chat. Limited lang. No? Okay. So let's now go to question and answer po. Question po kayo na. Merisa sa buko po. What are example of related parties? Thank you. Example po ng related parties? Doon pa sa una po dati na discussion noon, nandoon yung related parties. Anong example nila? Pag kayo ay uh, subsidiary ng isang parent company, related party po kayo. No? Ano pa yung example na sinasabi doon sa AYAS or Uh, past 24. Sino yung mga related parties doon? Even the members of the family ng, ng uh, uh, corporations, no? ng management are also considered as related party. Sino pa? Yung mga um, investor and the invested, they are considered as related parties. No? So marami po yung mga uh, sinasabi ng batas na related parties. Tsaka sino yung mga related parties na yon, no? Uh, kasi, masasabi mo na related parties sila pag meron silang mga link or meron silang relationship, no? That somehow influence the transaction. And what we are referring here are the transactions which are financial transaction or commercial transactions, no? It involves money or pera, no? So, related party transactions sila yung isa may influence over the other party. Sino pa yung uh, related parties? Yung sa joint venture. no Pareho kayo member ng joint venture. The other party to the joint venture and the other parties are called uh, also related parties. No? And saka yung group of companies, they are also related parties. Salibawa, yung may-ari group of people, nag-establish sila ng 40 group of companies na mga uh, uh, companies na uh, nag-ooperate doon sa halimbawa yung isa manufacturer, yung isa distributor, yung iba iba-iba uh, yung kanilang uh, participation sa company. So they are all related parties, no? Okay. Excuse me pala, Hari Halika. Si ano na lang, sandali lang po ah. Ano oh. uh, uh, go na tayo ano. Go tayo. You read the question ano. Question po. Kaya rin doon gamat. Wala Sino? Sino yun ang ask? Rindon po. Rindon. Sige. Rindon gamot po. Okay. Wala po naman pang kung ex exact yung paper for TPD, right? It will depend pa din sa structure ng group and how simple, complex yung mga transaction nila. Uh, ulitin po, hindi ko masyado maintindihan. <laughs> wala naman pong exact template for TPD, yes, right? Yes, wala po. It will depend uh -oh. pa din sa structure ng group and how Tama. simple and complex yung yes. mga transaction nila. Tama po, tama po. Tama po yung observation nyo. Wala talagang exact na template, no? Kasi, kaya nga ang transfer pricing, alam nyo, yung suggestion ko noon sa OECD, nasabi ko, why not make a template? 
or matrix for those uh, transfer pricing methods na applicable in the certain industry. So, ano po yung sagot sa akin ng OECD? Every transfer pricing case is unique, sabi niya, that you have to apply the, the methods uh, considering the uh, case to case, no? the uh, circumstances of the case. So, kaya tamang-tama po yung observation nyo at saka sinabi na uh, depending yan sa uh, company talaga kung how simple or how complex yung kanilang uh, transfer pricing. No? Although sa yung mga nakareads na sa court, no, ma-amaze ka how they were able to do it. How they were able to complicate no, the, the matters and then uh, transfer pricing lang din yung naka-cure sa kanila through the transfer pricing audit. Next. Uh, next question po, kay Fe Herrera. Ha, si Ma'am Fe. Ang sipag talaga ni Ma'am Fe, bilib ako. Sige. Taxpayer is importing balikbayan boxes from Korea. Okay. Business just started last December 2020. No transaction rate. Required na po ba ang mag-attach ng VAR 1709 sa ITR? Uh, actually po, hindi pa. Bakit? If you try to look at uh, Revenue Regulations 34-2020, may mga threshold na po na binigay ang uh, uh, BIR dyan at saka kung sino yung dapat na mandatory na mag-attach no, ng 1709. So, number one na mandatory itong mga large taxpayers. Number two, ito yung mga uh, entities or mga businesses na enjoying tax incentives or exemptions. So, number one na dyan, yung mga PESA in, uh, registered enterprises, yung mga BOI registered pioneer enterprise. No? So, since uh, exemption dyan, siguro kasama na rin yung mga uh, foundations at saka non-stock, non-profit organizations na may related parties at saka yung uh, co-op. No? Kasi enjoying tax in, uh, exemption sila or um, may mga ina-avail sila no na uh, tax incentives. Okay. So yung sinasabi mo na bago pa lang December pa lang. So ang ang i-file niyo ninyo diyan is yung December, no? So yung December siguro hindi pa naman yan aabot ng 150 million may threshold naman din po. No, 150 million na sales or uh, and 90 million of that sales is between related parties. Kaya palagay ko naman hindi pa umabot yan so hindi nyo pa po kailangan. Okay. Wala na? No more question po. Wala na? Wala na po ma'am. So tatlo lang. Okay. So. <laughs> Wala na? Okay. Kay Mineo R. R. Malab Jr. Ma'am, yung small business importing parts and selling locally po, need po ba kumuha ng accreditation sa importer regardless sa maliliit lang naman na items? Ay, via, yes po. Via DHL sa custom? Yes po. Kasi nga, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung libro ko na binili, isang peraso lang, no? Hinold pa sa customs. Why? Kasi 40,000 na siya. Itong sinabi ko sa inyo na... Uh, yung model OECD tax convention na worth 40,000 in-import ko sa Paris, France. Hinold ng customs. Why? Because yung mga hindi nakukuha ng importation is 10,000 lang worth. Pag sumobra ka na dyan, dapat kumuha ka na. No? So, may limit lang po sa customs. So, kailangan po ninyo kumuha. Otherwise, hindi i-release ng customs yung inyong importation. No? Okay. Next. Hey, Jos Budosko po. Budosko. Oh, so matin pala si Sir. Budosko. Pero sinama mo siya sa attendance. Okay, very good. Sige po, Sir. Who are not required to submit the RPT from... RPT form in this insurance are required to disclose in the note that they are not covered by requirements Ay, and tama. procedures tama. for related parties transactions. Very good po, sir. Very good na ni-remind mo ako. Although sinabi ko kanina, no? Pero thank you talaga for reminding na uh, 
pagka kayo ay may related party transactions pero hindi kayo uh, required no doon sa 34/2020 to attach the RPD or the uh, yung related party transactions na documentation or BIA form 1709 you have to disclose in your notes to financial statements kung bakit hindi kayo required no so kailan niyo pa rin i-disclose yung reason kung bakit hindi kayo required to attach the uh, 1709 po na form no so thank you talaga sir Jos nakaka-inspire yung participation mo ha okay wala na wala na okay so thank you very much and uh, bukas ano yung ating uh, mga topics bukas mas marami tayong topics actually bukas no uh we have our uh, transfer pricing documentation for so one to RR34 that's 2020 and BIA form 1709. Karamihan alam na nila yan. Pahapyaw na lang natin. At saka uh, we have the transfer pricing analysis report. No? Yun sabi nga nila, walang, walang template, walang formal na uh, format ang transfer pricing analysis report. But may guide na tayo o na paano natin gagawin. No? So, we'll discuss that tomorrow and we also have to uh, discuss the segmented financial statements and also the supply chain analysis no? ng uh, na example. And then, we will discuss the common issues in transfer pricing. Bakit po natin uh, i-discuss yung common issues in transfer pricing para maiwasan na? No? Kaya nga, sabi ko sa mga... Uh, ayaw magpagawa ng transfer pricing analysis report, pwede naman po yun. But, ang kagandahan lang kung gawa na, ma-cure nyo na sa financial statements nyo bago nyo pa i-file. No? Kagaya yung sabi kong example na they have uh, contractual terms with the parent company na cost plus 5% markup. Ang ginawa ng kanilang accountant 3% markup. So, that is an outright uh, uh, adjustment for the examiner. No? So, kung may analysis na sana kayo, nasabihan na naayos yung financial statement nyo. No? So, dati kasi hindi pa pansin yung transfer pricing audit. Eh, ngayon, mahigpit na. So, eh, medyo ingat-ingat na po tayo. No? So, let's call it a day. And thank you very much po sa mga nag-attend.